In the Varanasi Gyanwapi Mosque, the ASI survey started at 7.30 this morning. And uh, well, uh, the Allahabad courts go ahead. The top court is now going to be hearing the mosque uh, uh, committee's plea today who are challenging that court order. In Manipur, mobs ransacked two security posts in Bishnupur. The police has gone on to say that the mobs have looted a huge amount of arms and ammunition and there was an exchange of fire between the security forces and the armed mobs. Not India, call them Gamandia is what sources are saying that the Prime Minister said about the opposition alliance of the 26 opposition parties called India. And in Haryana's violence, uh, the SP of NU, Varun Singla, has been transferred and there's heavy security deployment across NU and other parts of Haryana as well. And the imam body has appealed for Friday press to be held at home in Gurugram. 25-year-old uh, Kashmiri uh, soldier who had gone missing on Saturday from JNK has now been found and after a medical examination, he's going to be questioned about his whereabouts. And former President of the United States, Donald Trump, pleads not guilty, says uh, he's not guilty to the four felony counts in the election case, calling it a very sad day for America, uh, is what Donald Trump had to say after he pleaded not guilty. Hello, good morning. You're watching NETV 24-7. I'm Divya Vadwa. Let's get your top story. And our top story is about the violence that erupted in Haryana on Monday. And now, four days after, the SP of NU, with the epicenter of the violence that took place in Haryana, the SP, Varun Singla, has been transferred. He's been transferred after four days of the communal violence that took place in the state of Haryana. And heavy security has been deployed across NU and other parts of Haryana as well. Those are police are saying that the situation is under control. But in Gurugram, the imam body is appealing for Friday press to be held at home. Now, the new SP of NU, Narendra Nijarnia, is uh, there in NU uh, taking charge as the new SP. Uh, this is after Varun Singla has been transferred. My colleague Vedant gets us all the details. Uh, Vedant uh, joining us on the phone line. Vedant, uh, you know, four days after the communal clashes, uh, the SP has finally been changed. There's been a change of uh, guard. Uh, get us a little background on the new SP of NU. Well, uh, Narendra Bijanya Divya uh, was already in NU because Varun Singla uh, was on leave, but now he is permanently taken charge as the, the SP. Now, he's a uh, 2015 batch IPS officer and uh, he's from Chanpura. In fact, uh, Haryana DGP PK Agarwal had uh, sent um, uh, Mr. Bijania to NU because he's well aware of the uh, aware of the district because Bijania was the SP of NU from uh, the February of 2020 to the October of 2021, after which he was sent to Bhivani. So he's well aware of the atmosphere of the district. Remember, NU is a uh, communally sensitive area, which is why uh, somebody who's well aware about uh, the district uh, needs to be at the helm of affairs as far as the police action is concerned, which is why Narendra Bajania has been sent to NU. And uh, Varun Singla has been posted as uh, the SP of Bhivani now. Um, Varun Singla, of course, is uh, Narendra Jania's junior. He's a 2017 batch IPS officer of the Haryana cadre. Uh, but uh, uh, the fact of the matter is that this is also an important message being sent across by the Haryana police that the you know heads have rolled in the Haryana police after communal clashes. Um, this also, as all the accused were presented before the court yesterday, 19 of them were sent to judicial custody of 14 days. And uh, going ahead now. Um, the police will be investigating all the accused and, uh, you know, how uh, their backgrounds and uh, their, their their involvement in the mob violence and the communal clashes that happened uh, subsequently. Um, now, as you also rightly mentioned, uh, the police continue to say that there has not been um, any, uh, you know, major incident of um, violence or uh, clashes reported in Haryana in the past uh, 48 hours. 
though isolated incidents of attempted vandalism and attempted violence were seen uh, in, um, uh, in in several parts of Nu, uh, in two parts to be precise, uh, in the Punjabi Mohalla part and uh, Kachi Bazar Mosque of uh, the Taudi, Taudu uh, village of um, Nu. Uh, but no major incident of violence or situation is under control. Even in Gurugram, a peace seems to be returning with educational institutions reopening and uh, most companies also shifting back to the hybrid mode and not just from work from home mode. Uh, the peace seems to be returning. In fact, today, as you also rightly mentioned, the Muslim body, the Imam body has appealed to people to actually pray um, inside their homes. Uh, it's the, the, the Friday prayers are very important. Um, so, you know, the police also are deployed uh, in Gurugram as well at various uh, checkpoints, particularly uh, where uh, immigrants were stay, uh, staying, though there has been, um, you know, a widespread, uh, you know, almost an exodus of uh, migrant uh, laborers uh, from um, Gurugram to their uh, hometowns. But uh, the situation right now is under control. And uh, this is an important message also being sent right. across by the Haryana police that, you know, uh, this also, I mean, as the, you know, the, the crackdown continues. Right. Uh, so the security has been beefed up, though there is calm, as uh, Vedant is reporting. Thank you so much for getting us those details. But the SP, Varun Singla, has been transferred after those communal clashes. Now, over 160 accused have been arrested for the communal violence in Haryana that broke out on Monday during that religious procession and that went on to spread to other cities of Haryana, including Gurugram. Some isolated incidents of violence were still reported on day four. That's Thursday. 19 of the accused, like Vedant was mentioning, have been sent to 14 days judicial custody but the violence there and these rioters created has ruined families of the six people who died in the violence and the different communities are united in grief grief transcends all differences at least in the aftermath of the communal violence that has gripped Haryana all that is left of the home of 36 year old Shakti Saini one of the six killed in the violence is a grieving wife and his four little children, helpless after the death of the family's sole breadwinner. Seni, reportedly a Bajrang Dal worker, was killed by a mob of over 300 in Nu, a day after the clashes over a right-wing yatra in the communally sensitive area. गलत है जी उसके साथ बाद कोई जो है कि कोई कट्टरवाद नहीं था वो कोई किसी प्रकार के कोई संगठन से नहीं जुड़ा हुआ था वो तो सीधा साधा स्वभाव का शांति प्रिय आदमी था सिमिलर सीन्स ऑफ डिस्पेयर एट द लास्ट राइट्स ऑफ होम गार्ड गुरसेवक सिंह हुज फोर इयर ओल्ड सन लेट हिज पायर एंड अ 26 इयर ओल्ड इमाम किल्ड आफ्टर अ मॉस्क वाज सेट ऑन फायर इन गुरुग्राम this as isolated incidents of violence continue to be reported. At this small village near Nu, the epicenter of the violence, there was attempted vandalism at two mosques by a mob of over 10 people. This was not just one religious structure that was uh, where there was attempted vandalism, but another uh, mosque, uh, the Punjabi Mohalla Mosque here in Taudu. A similar incident was reported there as well, but no damage to the religious structure, no injury or death. But police deployment continues and such isolated incidents of uh, attempted vandalism, uh, attempted um, violence are being witnessed still in parts of Haryana. The police, meanwhile, has finally begun to crack down on those spreading inflammatory videos on social media. Even though Monu Manesar, the cow vigilante who reportedly triggered the violence, is still at large. आज अगस्त तक जो है उसको शट डाउन किया गया है जो इंटरनेट सर्विसेज को उसके बाद उसमें दोबारा से जो है एनालाइज किया जाएगा उस सस्पेक्टेड लोगों को जो है डिटेन किया गया है और उनसे पूछताछ हमारी जारी है किसी भी तरह के रूमर्स को काटने के लिए एवं 
सौहार्द को बनाने के लिए पूरे प्रयास किए जा रहे हैं वन वी टॉक अबाउट सोशल मीडिया क्रैक डाउन वन क्वेश्चन इज दैट वाई हैज मोनू मानसर नॉट बिन अरेस्टेड येट बाय द हरियाणा पुलिस वी हैव कैप्ट स्ट्रिक्ट विजुअल ओवर इट एंड ऑल द कल्प्रेट्स हु हैव बीन इन्वॉल्व इन दीज इंसिडेंट्स दे हैव बीन टेकन टू द टास्क एफ आई आर सेव बिन रजिस्टर्ड एंड मोर देन ट्वेंटी पीपल हैव बिन रजिस्ट हैव बीन अरेस्टेड एंड यू नो वी वी आर इन अ प्रोसेस Uh, to identify some more culprits the over 160 people arrested by the police from across haryana for inciting communal tensions were produced before a local court today with sent 19 of them to judicial custody as the police gathers evidence against the accused in gurugram peace seems to be returning but the plight of migrant workers continues for people of all communities alike bangal ja raha hu apna पहले का जा रहा हूँ घर जा रहा हूँ क्यों यहाँ तो हमारे पास कोई है ही नहीं ऐसा कोई पुलिस वाला था ठीक है हाँ। लेकिन किस कितने टाइम तक रहेगा पुलिस जितना जित, जितने टाइम पुलिस वाला है तो उतने उम्मीद है कि वापस आ पाएंगे यहाँ पर कभी कुछ अभी सोचा है कि इतने तो डर हमारे अंदर है अभी तो उम्मीद नहीं है जो हम लोग आएंगे हम लोग बिहार से पंडित आदमी हूँ फिर भी इन लोग के साथ में रहने का डर लग रहा है मैं भी रूम खोल करके भागू एन साइलेंस इन हरियाणा the epicenter of the violence that has gripped the state in the past couple of days one thing that is clear is that whether it's the six victims who died in the communal violence or the hundreds of thousands of people whose livelihoods have been affected this communal violence has not proven advantageous to any person of any community in no with camera person manoj thakur vedant for indi tv Switching tracks now. A mob have a ransacked at least two security posts in Manipur's Bishnupur district and looted a large amount of arms and ammunition. And the Manipur police has gone on to say that the looted arms included automatic rifles and ammunition. Now this took place uh, late on Thursday night, and an unruly mob that stormed the check posts. Uh, this is uh, of the police. Uh, these are two check posts uh, in different locations in Bishnupur and took away a huge cache of arms and ammunition. The mob comprising of men and women also attempted to snatch arms and ammunition uh, from other areas as well but the security forces uh, managed to repel them one personnel of the manipur police has come to his injuries after being shot by a sniper rifle in his head while a village volunteer was left with injuries in a fresh gun battle which took place in the western part of imphal we have my colleague ratnadeep joining us ratnadeep take us through the incidents uh, the violence that continues in manipur even on a thursday night when uh, uh, a police personnel uh, lost his life due to the clashes that's right in fact uh, uh, you know as you rightly pointed out that it has been more than 90 days more than 3 months that manipur has been witnessing the spell of violence since may 3 and in fact yesterday we did report from uh, with visuals from ground zero how a mob of 600 people actually from bisnupur district were walking towards churachandpur district uh, where uh, the you know the kuki jomi groups had planned to uh, organize a mass burial of uh, their victims who have died in the uh, violence and uh, there has been a uh, you know the land chosen was contentious and therefore a mob was running uh, walking towards churachandpur protesting and the security forces had to disperse that mob using tear gas shells firing uh, in air in that incident about 25 people got injuries many of them uh, were minor injuries were well, uh, you know given fast aid and about a dozen are admitted in hospital but uh, all of them are stable but uh, uh, last night police came out with a uh, press statement saying that uh, many of uh, its outposts uh, particularly in bishnupur district has been looted uh, uh, huge cache of uh, automatic weapon arms uh, and this includes uh, uh, very modern uh, uh, weapons uh, uh, and uh, their uh, live ammunitions have been looted Uh, there were similar uh, attempts were also made at the second uh, india uh, uh, second uh, battalion and the uh, 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 second battalion manipur rifles and the seventh battalion manipur rifles these are all par, uh, you know state uh, paramilitary forces and uh, at the hengang police station and sinjemai police station now hengang and sinjemai hengang is on, in the outskirts of the city but sinjemai police station is in, in very much inside uh, you know the imphal uh, uh, city and uh, there were attempts made in these four places also to loot arms and ammunition but uh, was foiled by the security forces so therefore there is a renewed attempt uh, to loot uh, arms and ammunition which has been a major challenge for the security forces remember right from the beginning of uh, the uh, uh, you know the spell of violence uh, uh, that 
uh, Manipur police, police stations, armories, outposts have been looted, thousands of uh, ammunition uh, uh, and hundreds of uh, automatic weapons have been looted. In fact, there was a drive taken out, uh, taken by police uh, and our security forces to recover. Uh, they have been able to recover a lot of uh, arms and ammunition. And also one police personnel have succumbed to his injuries uh, in, uh, that he sustained in the gun battle. Two civilians are injured. So there are reports in the last 24 hours of gun battle between miscreants of both sides as well as mis miscreants militant and suspected militants with the security forces in uh, several areas, fringe areas between the valley and the hill region. Right. Uh, thank you so much, Ratnati, for joining us with all those uh, details. With that, we're slipping into a very short break. On the other side, we'll get you the latest from the Gyanwapi Mosque. The mosque committee is uh, likely to challenge uh, that uh, top court's order in the Supreme Court today. The Amity BBA has been ranked India's number one BBA in the Times of India B-School 2020. The NDTV News Network that informs, inspires and illuminates. Watch every side of the story here on NDTV because the only side we're on is yours. It was fast, right? But tech is evolving even quicker than our abilities to adapt. And that's how I like to roll. Technology to aap sabhi ke paas hai. But what you need is everything else. Mera naam hai Gaurav. Aur ab mein aagaya hu NDTV Network pe. Har roz, har hafte. Ab aapke aur paas. Go beyond the now. When there's too much talking but very little being said. Too many voices but hardly any being heard. You turn to a show that puts you front and center. A show that headlines the stories of the people, by the people, for the people. From breaking news to in-depth analysis, Covering the latest developments across politics, business and technology. Bringing you stories that shape our nation and the world. Twenty-three years of the big fight. This show is not just an ordinary debate show, but it is a responsibility in service of our viewers. TV for news you can trust. No sensationalism, no ugly debates, no agenda. We strive to be transparent and unbiased in our reporting so you can get news. This is Hellonix, India's most hated bulb. This is Rahul, I don't like it, 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 I don't like it. In a world filled with noise, we bring you news that you can rely on with accuracy and integrity. Because at NDTV, trust is everything. A debate has many facets. Perhaps no one right answer. Left, right and center. Conversations that get to the core of the debate. We're facing the crisis of the generation, climate change. And it's happening, not in some far off distant land or some millions of years away, it's happening now. 
and it affects everything we know and love. Information around climate change can often feel too distant, too jargony, too scary, too anxiety-filled, too technical, or too political. I'm here to change that, the Climate Explainers. Part of NDTV's six-month-long campaign, building a blueprint for climate action. The climate clock is ticking, but we're just in time. My name is Captain Raghu Raman, and I've been fortunate to have had a career that has spanned three different domains. Whether it was the authoritarian style of leadership in the armed forces or the mostly incentive-driven environment of the corporates or the process-driven style of the government, I found that there were some principles of leadership that are present in all the environments. And these valuable lessons of leadership can be learned from literally thousands of leaders who are all around us. And we will meet them all on Wisdom of Leaders. We have a surprise for you. We're going to ask a bunch of you some special questions and every correct answer is going to reveal what our surprise is. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Satya Nadella. Jeff is a Bill Gates probably. Nehru Place. Sake. Sake. Mumbai. Technical Guruji. Technical Guruji. Technical Guruji. Welcome back. A survey about the government body ASI at the landmark Gyanwapi Mosque in Varanasi restarted at 7.30 this morning after the Allahabad High Court dismissed a petition by the Mosque Committee which said that the order for the survey passed by the Varanasi District Court on the 24th of last month should be stayed. The Mosque Committee has approached the Supreme Court again in the matter and the plea is likely to be heard in the top court today. In its order, the Allahabad High Court said a scientific survey is necessary in the interest of justice and will aid a just decision from the trial court. The court also said there's no substance in the argument that the structure would be damaged during the survey and the Mosque Committee had argued that the structure is over a thousand years old and any digging might destabilize it and lead to its collapse. Well, yes, so in terms of updates from the ground, what I can tell you is that the survey uh, at the Kyanwapi Mosque in Varanasi restarted at about 7.30 in the morning. A team of about 40 officials from the Archaeological Survey of India are inside the Kyanwapi Mosque complex and so are uh, representatives uh, of the women petitioners on whose petition the Varanasi court had actually ordered the survey. Uh, the Mosque Committee has boycotted the survey like they did the first time the survey started. They are saying uh, that they have approached the Supreme Court, which they have obviously. Uh, the last time also they had gone to the Supreme Court and managed to obtain a temporary stay. This time they say that they are aggrieved uh, by the Allahabad High Court order that basically allowed uh, the survey to go ahead. Uh, before the Allahabad High Court, the Mosque Committee had argued that any kind of ASI survey at the mosque could cause damage uh, to the centuries-old structure and even lead uh, lead to a situation where the structure could fall. Uh, but the ASI then filed an affidavit saying that they were not planning any excavation uh, at the Gyanwa Pia Mosque and that their survey would both mostly right now include uh, radar uh, imaging and photography, etc. And the Allahabad High Court said that uh, the survey has to happen within the contours of that affidavit. Uh, in Varanasi itself, there is heavy security around the Kashi Vishwanath and Gyanwapi Mosque area. We do know that both are landmark structures and both uh, are located next to each other in the most congested part of Varanasi. So uh, that uh, certainly goes on. And uh, I have to say, I have to point out that otherwise life in Varanasi is totally normal. Uh, like we all know, it's one of uh, India's and the world's most high profile city, the very holy city, uh, buzzing with tourists. So all of that situation remains unchanged. That's something that I have to point out. But yes, the survey is certainly beginning, but all eyes will be on what the Supreme Court does and whether it passes an order today on the challenge uh, by the Mass Committee. NDTV News Network that informs, inspires and illuminates. Watch every side of the story here on NDTV because the only side we are on is yours. It was fast, right? But tech is evolving even quicker than our abilities to adapt. 
एंड दैट्स हाउ आई लाइक टू रोल टेक्नोलॉजी तो आप सभी के पास है बट वॉट यू नीड इज एवरीथिंग एल्स मेरा नाम है गौरव और अब मैं आ गया हूँ एन डी टीवी नेटवर्क पे हर रोज हर हफ्ते अब आपके और पास Go beyond the now. When there's too much talking but very little being said, too many voices but hardly any being heard, you turn to a show that puts you front and center. A show that headlines the stories of the people, by the people, for the people. breaking news to in depth analysis covering the latest developments across politics business and technology bringing you stories that shape our nation and the world twenty three years of the big fight this show is not just an ordinary debate show but it is a responsibility in service of our viewers TV for news you can trust no sensationalism no ugly debate no agenda we strive to be transparent and unbiased in our reporting so you can get news that you can rely on in a world filled with noise we bring you news that you can rely on with accuracy and integrity because at ndtv trust is everything a debate has many facets perhaps no one right answer left right and center conversations that get to the core of the debate facing the crisis of the generation climate change and it's happening not in some far off distant land or some millions of years away it's happening now and it affects everything we know and love information around climate change can often feel too distant too jargony too scary too anxiety filled too technical or too political i'm here to change that the climate explainers part of ndtv's six month long campaign building a blueprint for climate action the climate clock is ticking but we are just in time my name is captain ragu raman and i have been fortunate to have had a career that has spanned three different domains whether it was the authoritarian style of leadership in the armed forces or the mostly incentive driven environment of the corporates or the process driven style of the government i found that there were some principles of leadership that are present in all the environments and these valuable lessons of leadership can be learned from literally thousands of leaders who are all around us and we will meet them all on wisdom of leaders for you we're going to ask a bunch of you some special questions and every correct answer is going to reveal what our surprise is uh, i don't know uh satyan idla jeff bezos bill gates for me nehru place saket saket mumbai technical guru ji tech guru ji technical guru ji technical guru ji चलिए शुरू करते हैं दी एन डी टीवी न्यूज नेटवर्क दैट इन्फॉर्म इंस्पायर एंड इलूमिनेट वॉच एवरी साइड ऑफ द स्टोरी हियर ऑन एनडी Welcome back. Now the Prime Minister suggested a new strategy to tackle the opposition alliance as he met with his allies from Bihar on Thursday calling them not India 
but Gamandia, the word for arrogant. In recent weeks, the Prime Minister has frequently attacked the opposition bloc for calling themselves India, accusing the parties, particularly the Congress, of attending, uh, attempting a rebrand of whitewash in as far as their past is concerned. As the former UPA or the United Progressive Alliance, they changed their name from UPA to India to hide how many they have schemed against the poor. And the name India is not to show their patriotism, but an intention to rob the country, is what the Prime Minister said at a recent event. My colleague Akhilesh has the details. So last night, uh, PM Modi had a meeting with uh, ND MPs from Bihar. And this is a uh, part of the series of meetings which have been taking place uh, during this uh, monsoon session, where he has been meeting all the ND MPs uh, across the country. And this was uh, a third or uh, fourth meeting uh, with, uh, with the Bihar MPs uh, of, of NDA. And uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi made it very clear that this uh, alliance, which has been formed by the opposition parties, it is basically uh, the need was arise because uh, uh, there were allegations, there were tents uh, on the UPA, that's why there were, was a need to change the name to uh, uh, India. But Prime Minister says that instead of calling it India, it should be called Mamandia because it's a combination of the people who are arrogant, who are dynastic, and the PM says they are also tainted with the corruption charges. He also talked about the caste politics in Bihar. He says that we should not do uh, caste politics, but we should take all the sections of the society with us. And he also attacked uh, Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar, said that he, uh, on Three occasions the BJP made him CM. On the last occasion, he had less number of seats than the BJP, but still uh, BJP had made him a uh, chief minister. And this is the strength of the NDA because NDA gives stability. He also mentioned about the Akali Dal. As he told uh, the MPs that you know, Akali Dal was part of the NDA, but Akali Dal left NDA because of its own self-interest. And that's why he says that you know we should be together. He also advised the MPs that when they go among the people to seek votes, they should mention that all the work has been done by the NDA government, not by the BGP or by them themselves. So it's a very much focus of the Prime Minister on the NDA and on the alliance and telling, telling the people that, you know, that we are, when we are together, we give stability, we give progress to the country. He mentioned about Ratal Bihari Vajpayee that how he had run a, a coalition government for six years and the Modi government at the center has been, you know, doing, expanding his work. And he says that we have uplifted 12 crore people uh, from the poverty line. And he also advised the MPs that, you know, that they should maintain, mention, uh, maintain a restriction uh, in speaking. He says that you know uh, people should not uh, speak out of turn. He gave example of Sushma Swaraj. Uh, uh, he said that uh, Sushma was a very big orator, but she spoke only when she was asked to speak. So he also asked MPs to uh, be active on social media. He uh, advised them to uh, post at least 20 to 25 videos on social media every day. So in a in a sense, you know. Prime Minister Modi has been meeting with all these MPs to give them tips uh, for the upcoming Lok Sabha election. Switching tracks now is day 12 for the parliament and after what seems to be the government's proposal to the opposition on the date for the discussion as far as the Manipur issue is concerned, it needs to be seen if the lockdown will end or worsen. The opposition did a strategic clampdown on Thursday saying that they were now willing for a discussion under any rule but they want the Prime Minister's statement and the government has offered them the date of the 11th of August which happens to be the last day of the parliament. So will the opposition accept this date or would the ruckus and the lockdown on the Manipur issue resume again? today. Meanwhile, TMC's Derek O'Brien has hit out at the Prime Minister saying there's been two weeks and the Prime Minister is still missing from the Parliament. And the Union Minister of Information and Technology, Ashwini Vaishnav, has tabled the new data protection bill in the Parliament on Thursday. The new law claims to strengthen the digital rights of Indians but has sparked concerns about allowing the central government and the agency's unfettered access to citizens' data and the opposition members have demanded it be referred to a parliamentary panel for further scrutiny. Now, opposition MPs, privacy activists and various stakeholders have criticised the bill's exemptions for the central government and its agencies and my colleague Priyanshi has more on this. All these devices that you feed your data in makes it open to risks. The government says that to protect this personal data, it has introduced the Digital Personal Data Protection Bill in the Lok Sabha. So let's understand how the bill that has been tabled changes how our data will be used and what are the concerns with the bill. First, this bill will apply to the processing of our digital personal data within and outside India as well under certain conditions. Processing means collection, storage, use and sharing of data. Personal data here is defined as any data that identifies you. It also includes financial and ID details as well. 
A key provision in this bill is of consent. It says that personal data may be processed by anybody only after getting consent and only for a lawful purpose. But this consent will be considered given in some cases, such as performance of any function under a law, employment purposes, specified public interest purposes such as national security, fraud prevention, prosecution of an offence, investigation and provision of a service or benefit by the government. So government companies such as SBI, BSNL also don't need to take consent from you for processing your data. Next. It gives the power to the government to be exempt from any data protection provisions on the grounds of national security, maintenance of public order, among other conditions. So this raises the concern about right to privacy, as some of these grounds can be ambiguous and critics say that personal data could be used for surveillance in the name of national security. Next, who has the responsibility to keep data safe under this bill? data fiduciaries these are individuals or groups that determine the purpose and means of processing any personal data for example google is one such entity so such entities are obligated to keep your data secure and delete data once its purpose has been met according to this bill next the bill gives us all the right to information to know what personal data of ours is being processed for what activities and where all has it been shared so you can ask data fiduciaries for this information it's important at a time when several companies such as Facebook have been fined for mishandling and sharing data without consent it also gives you the right to seek correction and erasure of personal data which is no longer necessary for the mentioned purposes but who will ensure that all of this is followed and who will address the grievances that will be the data protection board the center will establish this board which raises a concern about the independent functioning of this board. The board can also impose penalties of up to 500 crore rupees for non-compliance of provisions or for failure to protect data by fiduciaries. Now another important point, the center gets the power to notify countries or territories on outside India to which these data fiduciaries can transfer our data. Lastly, a concern for the Right to Information Act. The Data Protection Bill gives public authorities a blanket exemption from disclosing any personal information by omitting a section. Now this has raised a concern on whether this provision can be used by officials to not share crucial information in the name of privacy. Now with all these highlights, the bill has been tabled after being in the works for five years. Moving on, an army jawan who went missing on Saturday has been found in Jammu and Kashmir on Thursday. The police said rifleman Javed Ahmed will now be questioned after he's through with his medical checkup to try to ascertain the circumstances behind his disappearance. The police had launched a massive search operation to find the 25-year-old. It was suspected that terrorists may be behind his abduction. My colleague Nazir has the details. Well, the uh, soldier has been found safely, but the mystery still remains. And he is being interrogated by the police and other security ag agencies. And police have made it clear that it will be a joint interrogation of the uh, soldier who has been found after five days of a he was he was reportedly missing. So clearly, he is being treated as a suspect. Uh, so. Uh, from day one, police was a bit circumspect about what the, about the circumstances which led to the missing of this soldier. Family was suspecting that militants may be behind this, and they had even to put up the video, appealed uh, to the captors, uh, appealing them to release him safely. Because in the past, several soldiers who were on, off duty, who had come home on leave, were kidnapped, and some of them were unfortunately killed. And, and 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 for five days nobody knew where this man was so uh, we are waiting for the more information from the police where this man was this, this soldier was he was posted in Ladakh he was on leave at his home in Kulgam uh, on July 29 in the evening he had gone to buy some stuff in from the market in preparation to go back to join back his duties in Ladakh so he went missing and where he was all these days and if he was a, it was a involuntary disappearance or the voluntary you know disappearance where if, if he was in some how uh, involved in his own disappearance all these things are being you know looked into by the police but since last night after his medical checkup was done so he's being questioned 
by the police and other security agencies to know all that what has happened over the last five days during which he was missing but finally the soldier has been you know found safely but it's very unclear who had abducted him if at all he was you know kidnapped by some man now, former President of the United States, Donald Trump, has pleaded not guilty on Thursday to historic charges of leading a criminal conspiracy that sought to defraud the American people by overturning the 2020 elections. Trump, the frontrunner for the 2024 Republican presidential nomination, entered his plea during a brief hearing at the same Washington courthouse where hundreds of his supporters have been convicted and sentenced for their role in the January 6, 2021 attack on the Capitol Hill. Now, uh, we have a voice of America's correspondent, Catherine Gibson, joining us from Washington, G.C. Uh, Catherine, uh, Donald Trump calls it a sad day for America, saying he was a victim of prosecution of a political opponent after he pleaded not guilty. The U.S. Capitol was attacked on January 6, 2021, by protesters attempting to overturn the 2020 presidential election. Prosecutors allege they were inspired by claims of election fraud that former President Donald Trump now faces an indictment for. Four charges of criminal conspiracy for promoting those claims of election fraud that President Trump pleaded not guilty to in the courthouse behind me. He's arguing that he was merely exercising his right to free speech. Now, the process that happened today is just the start. Trump will undergo a trial, and if he's found guilty, he may go to prison. At the E. Barrett Prettyman Federal Courthouse, Catherine Gibson. Thank you, Captain Gibson, for joining us with all those details. Moving on now, China's cyber says has a regulated uh, and, and the regulatory has announced a proposal to curb smartphone use amongst children by requiring providers of the smartphone device to have a minor mode that would limit the usage of those under the age group of 18 and at the most of to about two hours. A very ambitious project there. My colleague Nayantara takes us through the details. China is now looking to curb smartphone time for all children uh, for everyone below the age of 18 to two hours or less than two hours a day. So the Chinese cyberspace regulator has said that it wants smartphone companies to introduce a new feature called the minor mode function that would govern how much time kids are able to spend on their phones. And this would differ according to different age brackets. So two hours a day for kids aged 16 to 18, uh, one hour for kids aged 8, 8 to 16, and only eight minutes for kids below the age of eight. So they've also said they want to ban internet for kids between 10 p.m. at night and 6 a.m. in the morning as well. They've passed on the responsibility to enforce all these rules to the tech giants, uh, to the companies who are making the smartphones, uh, but they've also given parents the leeway under this proposal to override these time limit rules for their kids, uh, making it a, a sort of optional case-by-case -case basis depending on the parents' discretion. Uh, this, of course, is just a proposal for now, and it's open to public feedback. But interestingly, it's coming very soon after they imposed a ban on children from video gaming, from online gaming, for more than three hours a week back in 2021. This news has, of course, had a major impact on Chinese tech firms such as Alibaba and Bilibili, whose shares have fallen drastically after the news. Nantara Singh for NDTV. Thank you, Nayatara, for getting us all those details. Uh, with that, we're slipping to a very short break. On the other side, we'll get you entertainment news with my colleague, Arun. Arun, Akshay Kumar's Oh My God 2 is set for release. And just a week prior to that, many changes have been made to the film. Yes, we'll take you through those changes. And we'll also talk about Rock Your Rani Ki Prem Kahani uh, collections. So stay with us. It was fast, right? But tech is evolving even quicker than our abilities to adapt. And that's how I like to roll. Technology to aap sabhi ke paas hai. But what you need is everything else. Mera naam hai Gaurav aur ab mein aagaya hu NDTV Network pe. Har roz, har hafte. Ab aapke aur paas. Go beyond the now. When there's too much talking but very little being said. Too many voices but hardly any being heard. You turn to a show that puts you front 
and center. A show that headlines the stories of the people, by the people, for the people. From breaking news to in-depth analysis, Covering the latest developments across politics, business and technology. Bringing you stories that shape our nation and the world. Twenty-three years of the big fight. This show is not just an ordinary debate show, but it is a responsibility in service of our viewers. TV for news you can trust. No sensationalism, no ugly debates, no agenda. We strive to be transparent and unbiased in our reporting so you can get news that you can rely on. In a world filled with noise, we bring you news that you can rely on with accuracy and integrity. Because at NDTV, trust is everything. A debate has many facets. Perhaps no one right answer. Left, right and center. Conversations that get to the core of the debate. We're facing the crisis of the generation, climate change. And it's happening, not in some far off distant land or some millions of years away, it's happening now. And it affects everything we know and love. Information around climate change can often feel too distant, too jargony, too scary, too anxiety filled, too technical or too political. I'm here to change that, the climate explainers. Part of NDTV's six-month-long campaign, building a blueprint for climate action. The climate clock is ticking, but we're just in time. My name is Captain Raghu Raman, and I've been fortunate to have had a career that has spanned three different domains. Whether it was the authoritarian style of leadership in the armed forces or the mostly incentive-driven environment of the corporates or the process-driven style of the government, I found that there were some principles of leadership that are present in all the environments. And these valuable lessons of leadership can be learned from literally thousands of leaders who are all around us. And we will meet them all on Wisdom of Leaders. for you. We're going to ask a bunch of you some special questions and every correct answer is going to reveal what our surprise is. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Satya Nadella. Jeff is a Bill Gates probably. Nehru Place. Saket. Saket. Mumbai. Technical Guruji. Tech Guruji. Technical Guruji. Technical Guruji. Akshay Kumar's film's OMG 2 was passed by the censor board this week with an A certificate. The film will release with 27 changes. And let us take you through those changes. The character Akshay Kumar plays has been changed from Lord Shiva to his dooth or messenger. Scenes showing Akshay's character drunk, bathing and meditating have been modified. Visuals of frontal nudity have been replaced with appropriate footage of Naga Sadhus. Dialogues related to alcohol have been changed as has a reference to the High Court. The setting of the film has been changed from Ujjain to a fictional location. A billboard showing a condom ad has been removed as has the word rat from the label of a bottle of poison. References to certain religious offices like Mahant have been changed. The makers of OMG2 were also asked to submit evidence for statistics and facts quoted in the film. OMG2 will release next Friday, clashing with Gadar 2, starring Sunny Deol and Amisha Patel. Uh, now, I also spoke to film critic Mayank Shekhar about this entire controversy. Have a look at the conversation. 
Uh, we've beaten uh, China when it comes to population, and I, I don't know, I mean, what do you think, uh, I mean, the reason behind that, why are we hiding a condom ad? There's, there's no end to this, right? There's absolutely no end to this. The moment you go down this route of this is not allowed, that's not allowed, because this will offend that person, or a condom ad, as you rightly put it, will offend someone else. There's no end to this. The point is this. Someone's gone ahead, made something. There's a censor board in this country, so far as theatrical releases of films are concerned. They have said, okay, fine, 27 cuts. After 27 cuts, if somebody else who says something is probably above this government and should not be allowed. And that's where we need to draw a line. We need to draw a line somewhere. And I'm okay with the fact that um, it's drawn at 27 cuts. It's unfair, but I've not seen the film know what those cuts were. But that's it. It needs to stop here. If some rando gets up in this country and says, you know what, I'm going to go after this film or a theater or a person or whatever in a, in a violent sort of way, I think everyone's allowed to express their opinions. But and my, that my, should why never I, stop. Why I say this is the Adipurush effect is we had OMG, the first part as well, where Akshay plays... Uh, a Bhagwan, he plays Bhagwan Krishna, and then of course there were all kind of godmen also shown in that film. That was okay. It was loved by the audience. But what just changed? What happened? Um, I don't know. Like what has changed is hard to define, but for sure, it was easier to say a lot of things at some point in our lives, and it's not that easy anymore. Now, I also asked Delhi Janta if Censor Board is playing it too safe after Adi Purush. I think uh, maybe yes, people are now trying to play safe because of uh, different dimensions coming to the art and creativity to it. People have to take care of the sentiments of public too, I think. I mean, what is your tip that when you see the movie of Bhagawan in movies? You can also see the movie of Bhagawan. जो मेरा मेरे ही thought है कि अगर हम किसी को pray कर रहे हैं तो काफी different person है आप किसी person एक person कितने सारे sins करता है guess आप उसी को भगवान बना रहे हो तो पूरा I have my demons you have yours but we also have parts of God so if I I am absolutely pure guys please talk about yourself if, if I <laughs> if I'm channeling the energy that God's giving me then why not इंसानों का जो portrayal है भगवान को दिखाने में I don't think sir कि इसपे कोई पाबंदी लगनी चाहिए ऐसा च क्योंकि पहला तो आर्टिस्टिक लाइसेंस आ जाता है यू कैन पोर्ट्रेट व्हाट एवर यू वांट इज एन एक्टर इज लाइक क्रिएटिविटी विद स्टक टू क्रिएटिविटी नॉट टू पीपल फैंटेसाइजिंग देम इज गॉड दे आर टॉकिंग अबाउट सेक्स एजुकेशन इन द फिल्म अपेरेंटली विल यू बी ओके इफ दैट मैसेज इज डिलीवर्ड वी हैव अ हिस्ट्री जहां पे हम कामा सूत्र और ऐसी चीजों की बात करते हैं एट लीस्ट इन इंडियन कॉन्टेक्स्ट पीपल नीड टू हैव मोर इंफॉर्मेशन एंड इट्स नथिंग रिलेटेड टू रिलीजन दे वास्ट टू चेंज अ कंडम ऐड बाय द वे देयर इज अ बिलबोर्ड इन द फिल्म दैट विल बी चेंज्ड so i don't think that's no relevance moving on let's talk about rocky rani ki prem kahani the hangover is real a week after it released word of mouth is still strong for the film ranveer singh's performance as rocky has struck a special chord here's what his director and costume designer said ranveer singh's portrayal of rocky randhawa in karan johar's rocky or rani ki prem kahani has been winning hearts with his west delhi swag flashy wardrobe and broken english Ranveer transformed into the ultimate Karol Bagh ka munda. Costume designer Ekta Lakhani revealed this week that Rocky was her team's favorite character. Everyone wanted to be a part of deciding his looks. Everyone wanted to be assigned to style him, she wrote on Instagram. Director Karan Johar told film critic Anupama Chopra how Ranveer Singh spent time in Delhi becoming Rocky. When we were on a recce, you know, for three weeks in Delhi, Ranveer was with me right through those three weeks. On a recce. On a recce. We he had nothing to do. Yeah. He would go. He would meet those Instagrammers that we had a whole long list of people, including Yuvraj, who's also a content creator and has was with us on set right through. Um, he would speak to them. He would pick up lingo. He would like absorb. He would go everywhere. He would. Ratko. He would even be driving around 
Delhi and just getting the flavor. I don't know what he was doing, but he had a process. He was there in Delhi right through my recce. Like he never came on the locations, but he was in the hotel working with the team, meeting Instagrammers, content creators, influencers, getting the line. He worked it. He created the Rocky Randhawa you see is is a lot on paper, but it's a lot to do with him. Alia Bhatt played Rani Chatterjee in the hit film, which is expected to cross the 100 crore mark next week. That's all we could pack in this entertainment segment. This is Arun Singh signing off. Brought to you by the NDTV News Network that informs, inspires, and illuminates. Watch every side of the story here on NDTV because the only side we're on is yours. It was fast, right? But tech is evolving even quicker than our abilities to adapt. And that's how I like to roll. Technology to aap sabhi ke paas hai. But what you need is everything else. Mera naam hai Gaurav. Aur ab mein a gaya hoon NDTV Network pe. Har roz, har hafte. Ab aapke aur paas. Go beyond the now. When there's too much talking but very little being said. Too many voices but hardly any being heard. You turn to a show that puts you front and center. A show that headlines the stories of the people, by the people, for the people. From breaking news to in-depth analysis, Covering the latest developments across politics, business and technology. Bringing you stories that shape our nation and the world. Twenty-three years of the big fight. This show is not just an ordinary debate show, but it is a responsibility in service of our viewers. TV for news you can trust. No sensationalism, no ugly debates, no agenda. We strive to be transparent and unbiased in our reporting so you can get news that you can rely on. In a world filled with noise, we bring you news that you can rely on with accuracy and integrity. Because at NDTV, trust is everything. A debate has many facets. Perhaps no one right answer. Left, right and center. Conversations that get to the core of the debate. Undeniable, we're facing the crisis of the generation, climate change, and it's happening, not in some far off distant land or some millions of years away, it's happening now. And it affects everything we know and love. Information around climate change can often feel too distant, too jargony, too scary, too anxiety filled, too technical, or too political. I'm here to change that. The Climate Explainers, part of NDTV's six-month-long campaign, building a blueprint for climate action. The climate clock is ticking, but we're just in time. My name is Captain Raghu Raman, and I have been fortunate to have had a career that has spanned three different domains. Whether it was the authoritarian style of leadership in the armed forces or the mostly incentive-driven environment of the corporates or the process-driven style of the government, I found that there were some principles of leadership that are present in all the environments 
and these valuable lessons of leadership can be learned from literally thousands of leaders who are all around us. And we will meet them all on Wisdom of Leaders. We have a surprise for you. We're going to ask a bunch of you some special questions and every correct answer is going to reveal what our surprise is. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Satya Nadella? Jeff is a Bill Gates probably. Place. In the Varanasi Gyanwapi Mosque, the survey has resumed this morning from 7.30 and this is resumed after Allahabad Court's go-ahead. As far as the top court is concerned, that will be hearing the mosque committee's plea today. In Manipur, mobs ransack two security posts in Bishnupur. The police have said that the mobs loot a huge amount of arms and ammunition and there was an exchange of fire between the security forces and the armed mob. Not India, but Gamandia is what the Prime Minister said in a fresh attack on the opposition alliance parties. And in Haryana's violence, the SP, the top cop of Nu Varun Singla, has now been transferred. And this is amid heavy security deployment that has been deployed across Nu and various parts of Haryana. In Gurugram, the imam body has appealed for Friday prayers to be held at home. And former President of the United States, Donald Trump, has uh, pleaded not guilty to four felony counts in the election case. He calls it a sad day for America, saying he was a victim of persecution of a political opponent. Well, good morning, you're watching NETV 24-7. I'm Divya Vagha. Let's get your top story and that's the top police official in Haryana's NU where communal clashes broke out on Monday during a Vishwa Hindu Parishad rally has now been transferred to Bhivani which is about 160 kilometers away from NU. IPS officer Narendra Birjania who was acting as the SP since the violence started and earlier headed the police force in NU district from February of 2020 to October of 2021 has now replaced Varun Singla, the SP of Nu, who has now been transferred. Uh, this is uh, that uh, he was on leave when the clashes broke out and Narendra Bijarnia uh, was rushed from Bhimani to Nu to, at the start of the clashes which took place on Monday. In the absence of Varun Singla, the permanent orders have now been issued for his appointment as the SP amid intense communal tension in the area. Switching tracks now, a survey by the government body ASI at the landmark Gyanwapi Mosque in Varanasi restarted this morning at about 7.30. This is after the Allahabad High Court dismissed a petition by the Mosque Committee which said that the order for the survey passed by the Varanasi District Court last month should be stayed. The Mosque Committee has approached the Supreme Court again in the matter and the plea is likely to be heard in the top court this morning. In its order, the Allahabad High Court said a scientific survey is necessary in the interest of the justice as well as this would be aided as far as a just decision from the trial court is concerned. The court also went on to say there's no substance in the argument that the structure would be damaged during the survey. The Moss Committee has now argued that the structure is very old. It's about a thousand years old and any digging might destabilize it. In fact, it might just lead to its collapse. My colleague uh, Alok joins us with more on this. Alok, what are the updates from the ground? Well, yes, so in terms of updates from the ground, what I can tell you is that the survey uh, at the Kyanwapi Mosque in Varanasi restarted at about 7.30 in the morning. A team of about 40 officials from the Archaeological Survey of India are inside the Kyanwapi Mosque complex and so are uh, representatives uh, of the women petitioners on whose petition the Varanasi court had actually ordered the survey. Uh, the mosque committee has boycotted the survey like they did the first time the survey started. They are saying uh, that they have approached the Supreme Court, which they have obviously. Uh, the last time also they had gone to the Supreme Court and managed to obtain a temporary stay. This time they say that they are aggrieved uh, by the Allahabad High Court order that basically allowed uh, the survey to go ahead. 
Uh, before the Allahabad High Court, the mosque committee had argued that any kind of ASI survey at the mosque could cause damage uh, to the centuries-old structure and even lead uh, lead to a situation where the structure could fall. Uh, but the ASI then filed an affidavit saying that they were not planning any excavation uh, at the Gyanwar Pima Mosque and that their survey would most, mostly right now include uh, radar, uh, imaging and photography, etc. And the Allahabad High Court said that uh, the survey has to happen within the contours of that affidavit. Uh, in Varanasi itself, there is heavy security around the Kashi Vishwanath and Gyanwapi Mosque area. We do know that both are landmark structures and both uh, are located next to each other in the most congested part of Varanasi. So uh, that uh, certainly goes on and uh, I have to say, I have to point out that otherwise life in Varanasi is totally normal. Uh, like we all know, it's one of uh, India's and the world's most high profile cities, a very holy city, uh, buzzing with tourists. So all of that situation remains unchanged. That's something that I have to point out. But yes, the survey is certainly beginning, but all eyes will be on what the Supreme Court does and whether it passes an order today on the challenge uh, by the Mosque Committee. Switching tracks now, an army jawan who went missing on Saturday from Jammu and Kashmir has now been found on Thursday. The police uh, said rifleman uh, Javed Ahmed will now be questioned after his medical checkup is through in order to ascertain the circumstances behind his disappearance. Now, uh, we have uh, more details coming our way. Uh, my colleague Nazir sent us this report. Well, the uh, soldier has been found safely, but the mystery still remains. And he is being interrogated by the police and other security ag agencies. And police have made it clear that it will be a joint interrogation of the uh, soldier who has been found after five days of he was, he was reportedly missing. So clearly he is being treated as a suspect. Uh, so uh, from day one, police was a bit circumspect about, what the, about the circumstances which led to the missing of this soldier. Family was suspecting that militants may be behind this, and they had even to put up the video, appeal uh, to the captors, uh, appealing them to release him safely. Because in the past, several soldiers who were on, off duty, who had come home on leave, were kidnapped, and some of them were unfortunately killed. And 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 for five days, nobody knew where this man was. So uh, we are waiting for the more information from the police where this man was, this, this soldier was, he was posted in Ladakh, he was on leave at his home in Kulgam uh, on July 29 in the evening, he had gone to buy some stuff in from the market in preparation to go back to join back his duties in Ladakh, so he went missing and where he was all these days and if he was, a, it was a involuntary disappearance or the voluntary, you know, disappearance where if, if he was in some how involved in his own disappearance, all these things are being, you know, looked into by the police. But since last night after his medical checkup was done, so he's being questioned by the police and other security agencies to know all that, what has happened over the last five days during which he was missing. But finally, the soldier has been, you know, found safely, but it's very unclear who had abducted him, if at all he was, you know, kidnapped by some men. And switching tracks now, it's day 12 for the parliament and after what seems to be the government's proposal to the opposition on the date for the Manipur discussion, it needs to be seen if the lockdown will end or worsen. The opposition did a strategic clampdown on Thursday, saying that they were now willing for a discussion under any rule, but they want the Prime Minister's statement. The government has offered them the date of the 11th of this month. Meanwhile, TMC's Derek O'Brien has hit out at the Prime Minister, saying two weeks and the Prime Minister is still missing from the parliament. Now, to get more on this, we have my colleague Mega joining us. Uh, Mega, the government has offered the date of the 11th of August, but that's also the last day of the parliament. So will the opposition accept this date or would the ruckus and the lockjam on the issue of Manipur resume again today? And that is the, really the big question, isn't it, Mega? Absolutely, Divya, and uh, it'll be interesting to see, you know, what is uh, the behavior of the opposition uh, today, especially in the upper house, because, you know, all of this is about the upper house. As far as Lok Sabha is concerned, you know that uh, next Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, three days have been kept for the no-confidence uh, motion uh, discussion debate on that, uh, as a part of which you will have, uh, you know, a chance being given to uh, almost every political party to make their uh, views known, and of course they will be speaking about Manipur, including Manipur, because the whole 
whole idea was to, to get this no confidence motion was to secure the presence of the prime minister on the issue of manipur so uh, i think as far as lo you know lok sabha is concerned you will have a whole lot of discussion on the violence uh, in manipur and prime minister himself will be replying on 10th we also have been told that there will be an intervention by the home minister mr amit shah on day 2 that is on wednesday uh, that would be 9th of august and he would then be speaking on manipur in lok sabha so that uh, lok sabha seems to be quite sorted and uh, there this problem isn't there about uh, you know why the prime minister is not going to be there and why don't we have a discussion in manipur but in the upper house the problem still continues and it is about the upper house that you had uh, the opposition leaders especially the india formation leaders uh, who uh, gave this proposal yesterday to the government they came up they they say that we we are the ones who uh, you know do not really want uh, a situation where the session gets over without a discussion on manipur we are the ones who have gone and offered a middle path to the government and their middle path is to have a discussion because they were earlier really really adamant about having a discussion under rule 267 now they have climbed down and they are saying that all right let's have a discussion under rule 167 uh, which I, i if i'm not mistaken it does sort of entail voting as well um, and that's a proposal that has gone to the government the government accepted it late last night we were told that uh, they are ready the government side is ready for a discussion in manipur under the rule that the opposition is asking for um, but the date which has been given is 11th of august now 11th happens to be the last day of the monsoon session will there be enough time on that day to have a discussion on that uh, on the issue of manipur because like opposition has been saying in the upper house that they want a free wheeling uh, long discussion on manipur whether they'll be able to contain it in a day or not with that something the opposition has to now uh, respond upon problem is that really there isn't uh, many days you know, now it's friday today next week you have five days in which monday in the upper house and we are specifically talking about rajya sabha monday you have uh, the delhi ordinance bill being brought in into rajya sabha for debate and for voting so that's extremely important now another three days tuesday wednesday and thursday are going to be uh, you know as far as lok sabha is concerned it'd be busy in the no confidence motion and you, the entire of the government machinery would be you know busy there so you would not have their participation in the upper house so that takes away time till thursday and the only day that is left is friday so next friday so, uh, now uh, the opposition sources if you were to believe them now they are saying that you know this just goes on to show the kind of importance that the government is attaching to the issue of manipur to be you know giving us a date which is the last day of the session uh, it just tells you where on priority manipur lies for them in all probability they will be refusing it but let us let's let's wait for that to happen because today they are uh, likely to respond they'll have this strategy meeting in the morning in some time and then respond to the government's offer so this back and forth as far as manipur is concerned in the upper house uh, is go going to continue to remain right and uh, tmc's derek o'brien they're also hitting out at the prime minister saying it's been two weeks and the prime minister is still missing from the parliament thank you so much mega we'll have to see how d12 pans out as far as the parliament is concerned for now we're slipping into a very short break दुनिया में कुछ लोग एन डी टी वी न्यूज नेटवर्क दैट इनफॉर्म इंस्पायर एंड इलूमिनेट वॉच एवरी साइड ऑफ द स्टोरी हियर ऑन एन डी टी वी बिकॉज द ओनली साइड हियर ऑन इज योर्स It was fast, right? But tech is evolving even quicker than our abilities to adapt, and that's how I like to roll. Technology तो आप सभी के पास है, but what you need is everything else. मेरा नाम है गौरव और अब मैं आ गया हूँ NDTV Network पे हर रोज हर हफ्ते अब आपके और पास. Go beyond the now. When there's too much talking but very little being said, too many voices but hardly any being heard. You turn to a show that puts you front and center. A show that headlines the stories of the people, by the people, for the people.
breaking news to in-depth analysis. Covering the latest developments across politics, business and technology. Bringing you stories that shape our nation and the world. Twenty-three years of the big fight. This show is not just an ordinary debate show, but it is a responsibility in service of our viewers. NDTV for news you can trust. No sensationalism, no ugly debates, no agenda. We strive to be transparent and unbiased in our reporting so you can get news that you can rely on. In a world filled with noise, we bring you news that you can rely on with accuracy and integrity. Because at NDTV, trust is everything. A debate has many facets. Perhaps no one right answer. Left, right and center. Conversations that get to the core of the debate. facing the crisis of the generation climate change. Chhattisgarh government, a trustworthy government. C-Mart, revolutionizing markets for local products, shaping the dream of Gram Swaraj. C-Marts form the distribution network and facilitate sale of products made by hundreds of self-help groups. Some of these locally made products are pickles, spices, papars, soaps, utensils and many others. The success of CMAR. My name is Captain Raghu Raman and I have been fortunate to have had a career that has spanned three different domains. Whether it was the authoritarian style of leadership in the armed forces or the mostly incentive driven environment of the corporates or the process driven style of the government, I found that there were some principles of leadership that are present in all the environments. And these valuable lessons of leadership can be learned from literally thousands of leaders who are all around us. And we will meet them all on Wisdom of Leaders. We have a surprise for you. We're going to ask a bunch of you some special questions and every correct answer is going to reveal what our surprise is. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Satya Nadella. Jeff Bezos. Bill Gates probably. Nehru place, Sake. Sake. Mumbai? Technical Guruji. Tech Guruji. Technical Guruji. Technical Guruji. Chaliye shuru karte hai. The NDTV News Network that informs, inspires, and illuminates. Watch every side of the story here on NDTV because the only side we're on is yours. Welcome back to the Union Minister of Information and Technology, Ashwini Vaishnav Table, the new data protection bill in Parliament, the new law claims to strengthen the digital rights of Indians, but has sparked concerns about allowing the central government and the agencies unfettered access to citizens' data. The opposition members have demanded it be referred to a parliamentary panel for further scrutiny. Now, the opposition MPs, privacy activists and various stakeholders have criticised the bill's exemption for the central government and its agencies. IT Minister Rajiv Chandrasekhar speaks to NDTV. Let's listen in.
And joining us right now is uh, Minister of State for Information and Technology, Rajiv Chandrasekhar. Rajiv, thanks so much for taking time out to speak to us on this. While it's been a much delayed uh, bill, something that's been waiting on and something that could become the core pillar or foundation on which uh, digital laws and digital frameworks are evolved in this country, there are serious concerns that have been raised about the bill. Did it require more scrutiny before it was brought into Parliament? No, I, 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 I certainly don't think uh, 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 that uh, that characterization is, uh, is appropriate. I think the bill, as you know, uh, it has a long history. There has been a lot of discussion and debate about the Digital Personal Data Protection Bill in its earlier avatar in the JCP, the Joint Committee of Parliament. Uh, and when that bill became very unwieldy and very, uh, uh, very complex, the bill was withdrawn and we went back to the drawing board to create a much more modern, much more nimble uh, and a future-ready framework, a legislation that would protect the citizens' rights very adequately and emphatically. And uh, we went through extensive, very, very deep consultations, which is the, uh, a signature for most legislations and rulemaking that we do in the cyberspace. And uh, there have been hundreds and thousands of people who have been involved in the uh, process of developing this legislation. So I think these characterizations of requiring scrutiny, uh, not having enough inputs, etc., are uh, unfortunately misfounded uh, and are, are okay. uh, not uh, fully clear about the facts and the history of how this legislation has been developed. As you point out, it has gone on for many years now. Give us exact details of the final changes that have been brought in the bill that has been tabled in Parliament because uh, there have been several drafts and there have been concerns over whether the final changes that have been added to it, uh, whether there has been enough discussion on it. What are the final changes that have been brought, Rajiv? No, we don't know. I don't think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, easy for me to, in a, in a five-minute... 10 minute interview describe a legislation that is so important. Uh, I can certainly give you and share with you the basic principles around which this legislation has been built. Uh, the goals of the legislation are very, very clearly uh, articulated in the, in the preamble of the legislation. It aims to protect uh, very clearly the fundamental right of privacy that has been uh, declared a fundamental right by the Supreme Court in 2017. As you know, I was one of the petitioners who fought for that fundamental right uh, finding of the Supreme Court. So it protects the rights of the Indian citizens as far as digital personal data is concerned. It casts pretty significant serious obligations on all companies that deal with the personal data of Indian citizens in terms of what their obligations are vis-a-vis -vis data minimization, purpose limitation. Uh, they cannot use it for anything right. other than what it is being sought. It can, they cannot store it for much longer than it has been, it has to be used. Uh, so there is a whole series of principles there that make this legislation very, very modern and future ready and addressing both the ability for our startups to continue to innovate on one hand and at the other, on the other hand, giving the Indian citizen the fundamental right to protection of his or her data that uh, he or she deserves. Right. Uh, I'm just going to take specific concerns that have been raised, Rajiv, and you can respond to them. The first concern has been regarding the RTI Act. It's been widely discussed and written about. Uh, what is your response to those who say that it limits the, it actually, uh, you know, uh, uh, it restricts the scope of the RTI Act and expands the scope of bringing all data, all personal data uh, exempt from revelation? No, Viragab, I, I think uh, I, I would not want to go into a clause by clause discussion today, excepting to say uh, again what I said uh, outside the parliament uh, is that, look, I think this is an important bill. It is it is something that, if enacted, will protect the citizens from the misuse and exploitation of the personal data. And there should be a nice, proper, robust discourse and debate in Parliament about all of the imaginary or real concerns that the opposition parties, or indeed any MP has, 
because this is an important legislation. I would prefer that this debate happens. Mm. No, no, one second, Virav. I, I would prefer that the debate happens on the floor of the House rather than doing it on a TV studio. There are certainly many concerns that were raised at the introduction stage itself, which is mystifying to me because I think the right way to do this is to introduce the bill and then get into a debate and lay out all of the concerns or the infirmities or weaknesses as you see it or, or as an opposition MP sees it. Uh, the, most of them, I can assure you, once we get an opportunity to respond to these concerns, will be shown to be non-concerns because including uh, the RTI, the right to information is certainly not the right to personal information. So therefore, there has been absolutely no dilution of the right to information. All it does is uh, uh, reinforce that the personal data of every Indian citizen is subject to his or her consent uh, and cannot be used or misused uh, by anyone without his or her consent. So that is the limited purpose of any uh, change in the RTI formulation, if any. Uh, but the uh, power of the RTI, the law of the RTI, the scope of the RTI remains unchanged. Okay, I take the point that you'd like this to be discussed point by point in Parliament and not in a television channel, but yet I'm just going to raise two other concerns and you can respond or clarify on this. One is as far as the Data Protection Board is concerned, the, the powers that the centre has in terms of constituting it, and the other is in terms of the powers in the hands of the centre to just issue a notification which can exempt a government or a private entity. These are two concerning aspects that tends to weigh the balance in favour of the centre and that's been raised again. What is your response to it? No, they're, they're absolutely, uh, I think uh, it's uh, not fair to characterise the formulation and the design of the Data Protection Board as anything but an independent uh, adjudication body that will adjudicate the consequences of data breaches or indeed breaches under the law. Uh, we have to give it uh, a full detailed reading to understand the thought behind it and I, I, and I hope this is part of the debate in Parliament. On the issue of um, okay. the, uh, uh, the second point you raise again, uh, excuse me? In terms of notifications to exempt private entities and yeah, yeah. So, so I think I think yeah, yeah no I got that I, I I think again the exemptions to government or any entity uh, are exemptions that have been very carefully uh, uh, carved out and designed as you know this is a privacy and data protection data protection is a fundamental right every fundamental right has reasonable restrictions to it the right to free speech is not an absolute right the right to uh, privacy is also not an absolute right and so therefore there are reasonable exceptions in the event of national security, in the event of terrorism, in the event of a pandemic, right. in the event of an earthquake, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So I think people are, uh, I think e either it's deliberate or it is unwittingly, uh, wittingly or unwittingly, people are deliberately reading maybe a sentence and trying to create a narrative around that. And the best way, in my opinion, to really have this understood is a full and robust debate on the floor of the house where uh, every concern and indeed every issue can be raised and uh, answered by the government in a responsible manner. Right. Important point that you make there, Rajiv. Given the atmosphere in Parliament right now, do you believe that something of this nature, which is very close to you, personal to you, something you've worked on for many years, will get the time of debate and go beyond political partisanship to have uh, a, you know, a, an evolved digital regulatory framework? No, absolutely. I think the, 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 the rate at which our digital economy is growing, our uh, technology and innovation ecosystem is growing, it is clear that our citizens deserve, uh, all Indian citizens deserve this type of uh, digital personal data protection bill. And I'm hopeful that uh, we will uh, have the opposition and the government participate in a debate and, uh, and uh, conclude and enact this law, which is so important for the orderly growth of our digital economy and the technology and innovation ecosystem with the consumers and digital nagriks at the heart of it. 
In terms of the foundation that this lays, Rajiv, you've pointed this out in social media as well, platforms. Uh, this is really the foundation in terms of which you're building the economy. Maybe it doesn't take the news or the media focus as, you know, a Delhi ordinance bill gets at the moment. But in terms of building the digital economy, this could be an essential step forward, right? Oh, absolutely. I, I, I absolutely believe this and uh, the uh, other legislations that uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji has conceived as global standard cyber laws that will in a sense be the envelope, will be the guardrails, will be the catalyst of our trillion dollar digital economy, of opportunities, of jobs, investments, uh, always keeping consumer and citizen rights at the heart of it. Uh, this is certainly a very important piece of the overall framework of legislation that are being developed. And uh, the consumer rights and citizen rights have always been at the heart of what the, our government does, that regardless of how we expand the economy and which direction the economy expands, the citizen's rights to his, his or her fundamental rights and other rights in the ecosystem must always be protected. Right. Thank you so much, Rajiv. I, we, we hope that debate in Parliament will bring about, perhaps Thank evolve. You. And last word, before I let you go, do you believe that there should be concessions in the interest of consensus? Concessions in the interest of? Consensus in Parliament on this issue? Concessions in the interest of consensus in Parliament in this issue? Or? On the issue of DPDP? That's right. No, no, look, I, I, this is not an issue of concessions. This is not an issue of uh, give and take. This is about creating a legislation that's the best legislation for our people. There are 1.2 billion Indians okay. that are going to be on the Indian Internet by the year 2025. And they certainly deserve a world-class piece of legislation. And certainly we are prepared to sit with uh, all of the opposition MPs and uh, sit together and build this world-class piece of legislation if we haven't done it already. I certainly think that we've already done a fantastic job in this legislation, but if there is more to add, we are certainly will open to listening to it. was fast, right? But tech is evolving even quicker than our abilities to adapt. And that's how I like to roll. Technology to aap sabhi ke paas hai. But what you need is everything else. Mera naam hai Gaurav aur ab mein aagaya hu NDTV Network pe. Har roz, har afte. Ab aapke aur paas. Go beyond the now. When there's too much talking but very little being said. Too many voices but hardly any being heard. You turn to a show that puts you front and center. A show that headlines the stories of the people, by the people, for the people. From breaking news to in-depth analysis, Covering the latest developments across politics, business and technology. Bringing you stories that shape our nation and the world. Twenty-three years of the big fight. This show is not just an ordinary debate show, but it is a responsibility in service of our viewers. TV for news you can trust. No sensationalism, no ugly debates, no agenda. We strive to be transparent and unbiased in our reporting so you can get news that you can rely on. In a world filled with noise, we bring you news that you can rely on with accuracy and integrity, because at NDTV, trust is everything. A 
Debate has many facets, perhaps no one right answer. Left, right and centre, conversations that get to the core of the debate. It's undeniable. We're facing the crisis of the generation, climate change. And it's happening, not in some far off distant land or some millions of years away. It's happening now. And it affects everything we know and love. Information around climate change can often feel too distant, too jargony, too scary, too anxiety filled, too technical, or too political. I'm here to change that. The Climate Explainers part of NDTV's six-month-long campaign, building a blueprint for climate action. The climate clock is ticking, but we're just in time. My name is Captain Raghu Raman, and I've been fortunate to have had a career that has spanned three different domains. Whether it was the authoritarian style of leadership in the armed forces or the mostly incentive-driven environment of the corporates or the process-driven style of the government, I found that there were some principles of leadership that are present in all the environments. And these valuable lessons of leadership can be learned from literally thousands of leaders who are all around us. And we will meet them all on Wisdom of Leaders. for you. We're going to ask a bunch of you some special questions and every correct answer is going to reveal what our surprise is. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Satya Nadella. Jeff Bezos. Bill Gates probably. Nehru Place. Saket. Saket. Mumbai. Technical Guruji. Tech Guruji. Technical Guruji. Technical Guruji. चलिए शुरू करते हैं। The NDTV News Network that informs, inspires, and illuminates. Watch every side of the story here on NDTV because the only side we are on is yours. Welcome back. Now the Prime Minister has given a new name to the alliance of opposition parties in a meeting with Bihar's NDA MPs. The Prime Minister went on to say, don't call them Alliance India, but give a new name calling them Gamandi or Arrogant is what the Prime Minister had to say in that meeting that was held yesterday. So last night, uh, PM Modi had a meeting with uh, NDA MPs from Bihar. And this is a uh, part of the series of meetings which have been taking place uh, during this uh, monsoon session where he has been meeting all the NDMPs uh, across the country. And this was the uh, third or uh, fourth meeting uh, with, uh, with the Bihar MPs uh, of, of NDA. And uh, Prime Minister Modi made it very clear that this uh, alliance which has been formed by the opposition parties, it is basically uh, the need was arise because uh, uh, there were allegations, there were tents uh, on the UPA. That's why there was there a need to change the name to uh, uh, India. But Prime Minister says that instead of calling it India, it should be called Mamandia because it's a combination of the people who are arrogant, who are dynastic, and the PM says they are also tainted with the corruption charges. He also talked about the caste politics in Bihar. He says that we should not do a caste politics, but we should take all the sections of the society with us. And he also attacked uh, Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar, said that he, uh, on three occasions the BJP made him CM. On the last occasion, he had less number of seats than the BJP, but still uh, BJP had made him uh, Chief Minister. And this is the strength of the NDA, because NDA gives Stability. He also mentioned about the Akali Dal. Uh, he told uh, the MPs that you know, Akali Dal was part of the NDA, but Akali Dal left NDA because of its own self-interest. And that's why he says that you know we should be together. He also advised the MPs that when they go among the people to seek votes, they should mention that all the work has been done by the NDA government, not by the BGP or by them themselves. So it's a very much focus of the Prime Minister on the NDA and on the alliance and telling, telling the people that, you know, that we are, when we are together, we give stability, we give progress to the country. He mentioned about Ratal Bihari Vajpayee that how he had run a, a coalition government for six years and the Modi government at the center has been, you know, doing, expanding his work. He says that we have uplifted 12 crore people uh, from the poverty line. 
and he also advised the MPs they knew that they should maintain, mention, uh, maintain a restriction uh, in speaking. He says that you know uh, people should not uh, speak out of turn. He gave example of Sushma Swaraj. Uh, uh, he said that uh, Sushma was a very big orator, but she spoke only when she was asked to speak. So he also asked MPs to uh, be active on social media. He uh, advised them to uh, post at least 20 to 25 videos on social media every day. So in a in a sense, you know. Prime Minister Modi has been meeting with all these MPs to give them tips uh, for the upcoming Lok Sabha election. Moving on now uh, to Manipur and a mob ransacked at least two security posts in Manipur's Bishnupur district and looted a large cache of arms and ammunition, according to the police there. An official statement has been made by the police on Thursday night saying that the unruly mob stormed the check post as far as the police is concerned in uh, the 2nd Battalion in Bishnupur district and took away uh, all the arms and ammunition. And now uh, a mob that comprised of men and women also attempted to snatch arms and ammunition from other areas as well but were unsuccessful one personnel of the manipur police has come to his injuries after being shot by a sniper rifle in the head while a village volunteer was left injured in a fresh gun battle which took place in the western part of imphal Moving on to more news now, and uh, this is a horrific killing of a 14-year-old girl that sent a shockwaves through Rajasthan. The young girl's burnt remains were found in a furnace in Bilwara, and the police suspect that she was raped and killed. Three people have now been held. Hours after she went missing while out grazing goats, the body of a 14-year-old girl in Rajasthan's Bilwara was found in a brick kiln. Her shoes and a silver anklet evidence that she had been pushed into the kiln and burnt. The police suspect the girl was killed to destroy evidence, probably of rape. Five people living in huts close to the brick kiln have been detained for questioning. The horrific crime has sparked off a blame game with the BJP accusing the Congress on the rising graph of crimes against women in Rajasthan. Administrative officials who reached the spot have offered compensation as per norms and a fast tracking of the case. The but with the BJP determined to raise the issue of safety of women in an election year, this crime will reverberate beyond Rajasthan. With Naveen Joshi in Bilwara and Harsha Kumari Singh, Anusya Mathur for NDTV. In other news now, uh, former President of the United States, Donald Trump, pleaded not guilty on Thursday to historic charges of leading a criminal conspiracy that sought to defraud the American people by overturning the 2020 election. Trump, the frontrunner for the 2024 Republican presidential nomination, entered his plea during a brief hearing at the same Washington courthouse where hundreds of his supporters have been convicted and sentenced for their roles in the Jan 26th, uh, this is the Jan 6, 2021 attack on the U.S. Capitol Hill. Catherine uh, Gibson of The Voice of America has sent us this report from Washington, D.C. about what it means for Donald Trump. The U.S. Capitol was attacked on January 6, 2021 by protesters attempting to overturn the 2020 presidential election. Prosecutors allege they were inspired by claims of election fraud that former President Donald Trump now faces an indictment for. Four charges of criminal conspiracy for promoting those claims of election fraud that President Trump pleaded not guilty to in the courthouse behind me. He's arguing that he was merely exercising his right to free speech. Now, the process that happened today is just the start. Trump will undergo a trial, and if he's found guilty, he may go to prison. At the E. Barrett Prettyman Federal Courthouse, Catherine Gibson. Donald Trump there pleading not guilty. With that, we're slipping into a very short break. On the other side, my colleague Arun will be here with the very latest from the world of entertainment. Stay with us. दुनिया में कुछ लोग
was fast, right? But tech is evolving even quicker than our abilities to adapt. And that's how I like to roll. Technology is all you have, but what you need is everything else. My name is Gaurav and now I am on NDTV Network. Every day, every day. Now you are more than you. Go beyond the now. When there is too much talking but very little being said, too many voices but hardly any being heard, you turn to a show that puts you front and center. A show that headlines the stories of the people, by the people, for the people. From breaking news to in-depth analysis, Covering the latest developments across politics, business and technology. Bringing you stories that shape our nation and the world. Twenty-three years of the big fight. This show is not just an ordinary debate show, but it is a responsibility in service of our viewers. TV for news you can trust. No sensationalism, no ugly debates, no agenda. We strive to be transparent and unbiased in our reporting so you can get news that you can rely on. In a world filled with noise, we bring you news that you can rely on with accuracy and integrity. Because at NDTV, trust is everything. A debate has many facets. Perhaps no one right answer. Left, right and center. Conversations that get to the core of the debate. Undeniable, we're facing the crisis of the generation, climate change, and it's happening, not in some far off distant land or some millions of years away, it's happening now. And it affects everything we know and love. Information around climate change can often feel too distant, too jargony, too scary, too anxiety filled, too technical or too political. I'm here to change that. The Climate Explainers, part of NDTV's six-month-long campaign, building a blueprint for climate action. The climate clock is ticking, but we're just in time. My name is Captain Raghu Raman, and I've been fortunate to have had a career that has spanned three different domains. Whether it was the authoritarian style of leadership in the armed forces or the mostly incentive-driven environment of the corporates or the process-driven style of the government, I found that there were some principles of leadership that are present in all the environments. And these valuable lessons of leadership can be learned from literally thousands of leaders who are all around us. And we will meet them all on Wisdom of Leaders. bunch of you some special questions and every correct answer is going to reveal what our surprise is. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Satya Nadella. Jeff Bezos. Bill Gates probably. Nehru Place. Saket. Saket. Mumbai. Akshay Kumar's film's OMG 2 was passed by the censor board this week with an A certificate. The film will release with 27 changes. And let us take you through those changes. The character Akshay Kumar plays has been changed from Lord Shiva to his dooth or messenger. Scenes showing Akshay's character drunk, bathing and meditating have been modified. Visuals of frontal nudity have been replaced with appropriate footage of Naga Sadhus. Dialogues related to alcohol have been changed as has a reference to the High Court. 
The setting of the film has been changed from a gen to a fictional location. A billboard showing a condom ad has been removed as has the word rat from the label of a bottle of poison. References to certain religious offices like Mahant have been changed. The makers of OMG2 were also asked to submit evidence for statistics and facts quoted in the film. OMG2 will release next Friday, clashing with Gadar 2, starring Sunny Deol and Amisha Patel. Uh, now, I also spoke to film critic Mayank Shekhar about this entire controversy. Have a look at the conversation. Uh, we've beaten uh, China when it comes to population and I, I don't know, I mean, what do you think, uh, I mean, the reason behind that, why are we hiding a condom ad? There's, there's no end to this, right? There's absolutely no end to this. The moment you go down this route of this is not allowed, that's not allowed because this will offend that person or a condom ad, as you rightly put it, will offend someone else. There's no end to this. The point is this. Someone's gone ahead, made something. There's a censor board in this country, so far as theatrical releases of films are concerned. They have said, okay, fine, 27 cuts. After 27 cuts, if somebody else who says something is probably above this government and should not be allowed. And that's where we need to draw a line. We need to draw a line somewhere. And I'm okay with the fact that um, it's drawn at 27 cuts. It's unfair, but I've not seen the film know what those cuts were. But that's it. It needs to stop here. If some rando gets up in this country and says, you know what, I'm going to go after this film or a theater or a person or whatever in a, in a violent sort of way, I think everyone's allowed to express their opinions. But and my, that my, should never I... stop. Why I say this is the Adipurush effect is we had OMG, the first part as well, where Akshay plays... Uh, a Bhagwan, he plays Bhagwan Krishna and then of course there were all kind of godmen also shown in that film that was okay, it was loved by the audience but what just changed, what happened? Um, I don't know, like what has changed is hard to define but for sure it was easier to say a lot of things at some point in our lives and it's not that easy anymore now, I also asked Delhi Janta if Censor Board is playing it too safe after Adi Purush. I think uh, maybe yes, people are now trying to play safe because of uh, different dimensions coming to the art and creativity to it. People have to take care of the sentiments of public view, I think. I mean, what is your tip that you have to take care of the people who are in the movie? In the movie, you have to take care of the जो मेरा मेरे ही thought है कि अगर हम किसी को pray कर रहे हैं तो काफी different person है आप किसी person एक person कितने सारे sins करता है कैसे आप उसी को भगवान बना रहे हो तो वो पूरा है I have my demons you have yours but we also have parts of God so if I I am absolutely pure guys please talk about yourself if, if I <laughs> if I'm channeling the energy that God's giving me then why not इंसानों का जो portrayal है भगवान को दिखाने में I don't think sir कि इसपे कोई पाबंदी लगनी चाहि� First of all, you get an artistic license, you can portray whatever you want. He's an actor, let creativity be stuck to creativity, not to people. Fantasizing them is God. They're talking about sex education in the film, apparently. Will you be okay if that message is delivered? We have a history where we talk about Kama Sutra and such things. At least in Indian context, people need to have more information. And it's nothing related to religion. They've asked to change a condom ad, by the way. There's a billboard in the film that will be changed. So I don't think that's no relevance. Moving on, let's talk about Rocky or Rani Ki Prem Kahani. The Hangover is real a week after it released. Word of mouth is still strong for the film. Ranveer Singh's performance as Rocky has struck a special chord. Here's what his director and costume designer said. Ranveer Singh's portrayal of Rocky Randhawa in Karan Johar's Rocky or Rani Ki Prem Kahani has been winning hearts. With his West Delhi swag, flashy wardrobe and broken English, Ranveer transformed into the ultimate Karol Bagh Kamunda. Costume designer Eka Lakhani revealed this week that Rocky was her team's favorite character. Everyone wanted to be a part of deciding his looks. Everyone wanted to be assigned to style him, she wrote on Instagram. Director Karan Johar told film critic Anupama Chopra how Ranveer Singh spent time in Delhi becoming Rocky. When we were on a recce, I know, for three weeks in Delhi, Ranveer was with me right through those three weeks. On a recce? On a recce. He had nothing to do. Yeah. He would go, 
he would meet those Instagrammers that we had a whole long list of people, including Yuvraj, who's also a content creator and has was with us on set right through. Um, he would speak to them. He would pick up lingo. He would like absorb. He would go everywhere. He would Ratko. He would even be driving around Delhi and just getting the flavor. I don't know what he was doing, but he had a process. He was there in Delhi right through my recce. Like he never came on the locations, but he was in the hotel working with the team, meeting Instagrammers, content creators, influencers, getting the line. He worked it. He created the Rocky Randhawa you see is. is a lot on paper but it's a lot to do with him Alia Bhatt played Rani Chatterjee in the hit film which is expected to cross the 100 crore mark next week That's all we could pack in this entertainment segment this is Arun Singh signing off The NDTV News Network that informs, inspires and illuminates. Watch every side of the story here on NDTV because the only side we are on is yours. It was fast, right? But tech is evolving even quicker than our abilities to adapt, and that's how I like to roll. Technology तो आप सभी के पास है, but what you need is everything else. मेरा नाम है गौरव, और अब मैं आ गया हूँ NDTV Network पे, हर रोज, हर हफ्ते, अब आपके और पास. Go beyond the now. When there's too much talking but very little being said, too many voices but hardly any being heard. You turn to a show that puts you front and center. A show that headlines the stories of the people, by the people, for the people. From breaking news to in-depth analysis. Covering the latest developments across politics, business, and technology, bringing you stories that shape our nation and the world. Twenty-three years of the big fight. This show is not just an ordinary debate show, but it is a responsibility in service of our viewers. TV for news you can trust. No sensationalism, no ugly debates, no agenda. We strive to be transparent and unbiased in our reporting so you can get news that you can rely on. In a world filled with noise, we bring you news that you can rely on. With accuracy and integrity, because at NDTV, trust is everything. A debate has many facets. Perhaps no one right answer. Left, right, and centre. Conversations that get to the core of the debate. undeniable we're facing the crisis of the generation climate change and it's happening not in some far off distant land or some millions of years away it's happening now and it affects everything we know and love information around climate change can often feel too distant too jargony too scary too anxiety filled too technical or too political i'm here to change that the climate explainers part of ndtv's 6 month long campaign building a blueprint for climate action the climate clock is ticking but we're just in time 
My name is Captain Raghu Raman, and I have been fortunate to have had a career that has spanned three different domains. Whether it was the authoritarian style of leadership in the armed forces or the mostly incentive-driven environment of the corporates or the process-driven style of the government, I found that there were some principles of leadership that are present in all the environments. And these valuable lessons of leadership can be learned from literally thousands of leaders who are all around us. And we will meet them all on Wisdom of Leaders. We have a surprise for you. We're going to ask a bunch of you some special questions and every correct answer is going to reveal what our surprise is. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Satya Nadella. Jeff Rizas. Bill Gates probably. Place. Okay, good morning. You're watching NDTV 24 7. I'm Divya Vadwa. We have breaking news coming in at the hour, and that is bulldozers in Nu. Uh, this is after 250 shanties now have been raised. They were built illegally, so and therefore they have been raised according to the police. This is in a uh, right after the violence that erupted on Monday. So, visuals on your screen coming in from yesterday when uh, bulldozers uh, were used uh, in order to raise these 250 shanties. Uh, bulldozers have been used by the officials in Nu. Uh, the shanties were built illegally is what the government is saying on the land of the government. Now, the, Supreme, uh, this, uh, the SP of uh, uh, Nu is saying uh, that this is uh, in connection with the violence that erupted on Monday and shanties that have been bulldozed amid heavy security presence that has uh, been put in place and the action is taken on the orders of the Chief Minister of Haryana. Do remember that the uh, SP of NU has also been uh, changed uh, this morning. There's been a change of guard. Uh, well, uh, the uh, uh, Supreme, uh, Supreme uh, the SP of uh, uh, Haryana's uh, NU has now been uh, changed. Uh, we have a new SP of NU. The previous uh, SP has been transferred to Bhimani about 160 kilometers away. So visuals coming on your screen now of uh, the violence uh, that erupted. And of course, we have spoken uh, of uh, the change of guard as far as NU is concerned. There's a new SP, uh, Narendra Bij uh, Bijarnia, uh, who will be the superintendent from today and from now. Uh, this is after uh, the superintendent of uh, police uh, who has now been transferred. He has been transferred 160 kilometers away to the district of Bhivani. Uh, this is uh, the violence that erupted, the flashes that erupted in Nu after an attempt to stop a Vishwa Hindu Parishad procession and that spread to adjoining areas as well of Haryana including uh, uh, areas of uh, Gurugram and several vehicles and food joints and shops were set on fire by unruly mobs. So these 250 shanties have uh, been raised and this is uh, because they were on the land that belonged to the government, they were illegally built and on the direction of the Chief Minister of the state of Haryana. Uh, these shanties have now been raised using bulldozers. Uh, there is calm as far as Nu and uh, other adjoining areas of Haryana, including Gurugram, is concerned. Uh, there were several shops and shanties which were set on fire, especially in the sector 70 of Gurugram on a Tuesday night. Uh, in the violence that erupted from Monday, that uh, the epicenter was Nu. Six people have died, including two home guards were shot. And this is after clashes that broke out on Monday. Uh, we have Saurabh joining us to get us more. Saurabh, after the violence that we saw since Monday, now uh, in the last 24 hours, we've seen that 250 shanties have been raised using bulldozers. Uh, and this was on the direction of the Chief Minister of Haryana. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, in fact, uh, as spoken with the uh, new uh, SP of NU, uh, he's saying that uh, this is an action and it was uh, long pending. Uh, they have uh, bulldozed almost 250 shanties in Tavdu of, uh, of NU district. Uh, Tavdu is near to Sohna 
and uh, there is mixed population of Hindus and of Muslims as well. Uh, according to administration, they have uh, demolished these shanties because uh, uh, the people have illegally occupied uh, government's land. And uh, they were uh, given warnings also, but they have not moved. Uh, but uh, most of them and uh, who live in these shanties are uh, are from minority community and uh, uh, I've spoken, I've categorically asked uh, SP that uh, uh, these people were involved in the violence which occurred uh, in Nu on 31st or not. So uh, SP said that uh, they are still investigating their role. They may have some role in uh, the violence which erupted on uh, 31st, but uh, uh, they are still investigating the matter. I've asked them that uh, you have uh, d d uh, bulldozed these shanties. Uh, uh, are these people being uh, uh, named in FIR? Are these people officially accused on that? He said that we are investigating their role. But absolutely, uh, we know that uh, two days back when uh, CM of Haryana, Manohar Lal, held a press conference in Chandigarh, he said that uh, action will be taken and bulldozer action will be taken who are responsible for the violence uh, and uh, against the righteous as well. And then uh, the, their houses will be raised and, uh, uh, and they will be penalized and uh, recovery done from these, rec recovery will be done from these right ears only. So 250 shanties were demolished, bulldozed uh, yesterday evening in Tavdu of uh, Mewad. And remember, uh, Tavdu is the same place where uh, the day before yesterday, uh, uh, miscurrents tried to, uh, uh, to torch two mosques, but later administration to control and pacified the whole situation there. So as if now things are peaceful in Nu and in Gurugram as well, but uh, uh, definitely uh, we can say some bulldozer action up, uh, after the violence in Nu and in Gurugram. Right, uh, in uh, Gurugram, uh, Imam uh, Bori has appealed, in fact, uh, to people to perform uh, the Friday prayers uh, from uh, their homes. Uh, thank you so much, Saurabh, for joining us with all those details. Moving on now, it's day 12 for the parliament, and after what seems to be the government's proposal to the opposition on the date for the Manipur discussion, it needs to be seen if the lockdown will end or worse. And there you can see the Lok Sabha uh, has uh, convened, and this is uh, the 12th day of the parliament. Uh, let's just listen in. Stabilization you need. जो कि जो बच्चा पैदा होता है और उसमें जब कोई प्रॉब्लम्स दिखाई देते हैं स्वास्थ्य तो बड़े मुश्किल से वो बच्चे को बचाने के लिए इस यूनिट का उपयोग होता है और हम देख रहे हैं कि देश में इस यूनिट की संख्या जो है वो संख्या थोड़ा कम है ऐसा मुझे लगता है जैसा जवाब में माननीय मंत्री जी ने बताया है कि महाराष्ट्र में पूरे महाराष्ट्र में एक सौ निन्यानवे मीन्स वन नाइन्टी नाइन यूनिट्स है तो मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि आदिवासी एरिया में इसका बहुत ज़्यादा हमारे छोटे बच्चों को सामना करना पड़ता है तो ये संख्या स्पेशली ट्राइबल एरिया में बढ़ना चाहिए मेरा एक सवाल है कि बच्चों के लिए इम्यूनाइजेशन में क्या व्यवस्था सरकार द्वारा की गई है और क्या व्यवस्था की जाने वाली है धन्यवाद आदरणीय अध्यक्ष महोदय माननीय सदस्य तुम्हारे जी ने बहुत ही अच्छा सवाल उठाया है कि बच्चों के बारे में और जो बच्चे खास करके ट्राइबल एरिया में आते हैं उनके लिए क्या सरकार व्यवस्था कर रही है और इम्यूनाइजेशन पर खास करके माननीय सांसद महोदय ने सवाल दिया है आपके माध्यम से मैं यह अवगत कराना चाहती हूँ कि आदरणीय प्रधानमंत्री जी के नेतृत्व में हमारी सरकार बहुत ही अच्छे से इम्यूनाइजेशन पर फोकस कर रही है अगर इम्यूनाइजेशन के बारे में मैं कहूँगी तो वैक्सीनेशन हमारे बच्चों को जो कि लाइफ थ्रेटनिंग डिसीज से बचाने के लिए जैसे कि ट्यूबरकुलसिस का वैक्सीन हो डिप्टेरिया का हो पेटोसिस का हो पोलियो का हो टिटानस हेपेटाइटिस बी मीजल्स रूबेला न्यूमोनिया और मेनेंजाइटिस के माध्यम से जो डिसीज होते हैं उनको रोकने के लिए ये बहुत ही अच्छी इम्यूनाइजेशन की व्यवस्था सरकार ने की है उसके स्केड्यूल भी रहते हैं पी एच सी लेवल तक उनकी व्यवस्था भी की जाती है और रोटा वायरस वैक्सीनेशन जो कि प्रिवेंशन करता है रोटा वायरल डायरिया से वो भी वैक्सीन प्रोवाइड किया जाता है और उसके साथ ही जो हमारी सरकार की पहल है कि बच्चों को सुरक्षित रखें तो न्यूमोकोकल कॉन्जुमेट वैक्सीन भी इंट्रोड्यूस किया गया है उसके लिए बजट भी दिया गया है और ये पहली बार हुआ है 
कि हमारी सरकार ने बच्चों के लिए इस तरीके का वैक्सीन फ्री में अवेलेबल कर दिया है और ये हमारे सब डिस्ट्रिक्ट डिस्ट्रिक्ट डीएससी लेवल तक इसका प्रावधान है कि सभी क्षेत्रों को ये कवर करें और जैसे आदरणीय सांसद महोदय ने कहा है कि ये संख्या जो है एन बी एस यूज़ की वो कम है सर लेकिन मैं ये कहूँगी कि जैसे जैसे स्टेट गवर्नमेंट से हमें प्रपोजल्स आते हैं तो प्रपोजल के माध्यम से हम केंद्र सरकार उस डिमांड को पूरा करने के लिए बजट देते हैं आदरणीय तुम्हारे जी को मैं यही कहूँगी कि सर इसके साथ आप भी अगर स्टेट गवर्नमेंट से कुछ प्रपोजल्स देते हैं तो ज़रूर महाराष्ट्र लिए महाराष्ट्र के लिए भी केंद्र सरकार ये बजट देने के लिए उस पर विचार करेगी और हमारा आ, हमारा एम भी है कि बच्चों के लिए ये सुविधा बने और खास करके ये फैसिलिटी बेस्ड न्यू बॉर्न केयर है जो कि हमारे बच्चों के लिए डिस्ट्रिक्ट मेडिकल कॉलेजेस में वो उपलब्ध होता है तो मैं आदरणीय सांसद महोदय को आपके माध्यम से ये अनुरोध करती हूँ कि ये प्रपोजल्स जल्दी दें पति भावना धन्यवाद माननीय मंत्री जी ने बहुत अच्छी तरह से इस प्रश्न का उत्तर हमें दिया है जैसा कि माननीय मंत्री महोदय ने कहा है कि ये यूनिट की संख्या कम है और काफ़ी जगह पे ये खराब भी हो चुके हैं तो ऐसे में उनको दूसरे गांव में जाना पड़ता है दूसरे गांव में उसकी सुविधा लेनी पड़ती है ऐसे समय में सरकार ने वो न्यूबॉर्न बच्चों के लिए कुछ व्यवस्था करना चाहिए ऐसा मुझे लगता है और विशेष करके मैं सवाल पूछना चाहता हूँ जनजाति क्षेत्र में बच्चों को यदि किसी ऑपरेशन की जरूरत हो तो सरकार के द्वारा इसका क्या प्रावधान किया गया है आदरणीय अध्यक्ष महोदय मैं धन्यवाद देती हूँ आदरणीय सांसद महोदय का कि जनजाति क्षेत्र की चिंता के चिंता बताते हुए उन्होंने ये भी मांग की है कि बच्चों की खास करके छोटे बच्चों जो कि जीरो से एटीन ईयर्स के आते हैं उनके लिए क्या सुविधा रखी है अनिल अग्रवाल धन्यवाद सर मान्य सभापति महोदय में स्वास्थ्य और परिवार कल्याण विभाग संबंधित संसदीय समिति के निम्नलिखित प्रतिवेदनों की एक एक प्रति हिंदी और अंग्रेजी में प्रस्तुत करता हूँ नंबर एक चिकित्सा प्रकरण विनिमय और नियंत्रण संबंधी एक सौ प्रतिवेदन में निहित सिफारशों और समुक्तियों पर सरकार द्वारा अलग अलग हेल्थ कंडीशंस के लिए जो कि लगभग 30 बत्तीस हेल्थ कंडीशंस है और जिसके लिए वो डिसीज हो कोई डेफिशिएंसी हो कोई डिफेक्ट हो या डेवलपमेंटल डिले हो जिसके लिए हम उनको स्क्रीन करते हैं अंडर दिस आर बी एस की स्कीम और बच्चों की सर्वाइवल के लिए जो जो आवश्यकताएं हैं वो स्क्रीनिंग में सभी स्क्रीनिंग व्यवस्था में होती है सर डिस्ट्रिक्ट अर्ली इंटरवेंशन सेंटर जो होते हैं ये डिस्ट्रिक्ट हेल्थ फैसिलिटी लेवल के माध्यम से हम एस्टेब्लिश करते हैं कि जो कंफर्म होते हैं ये जो डी से ये सेंटर से जो कंफर्म करते हैं और मैनेजमेंट के लिए काम करते हैं और इस तरीके के अगर बच्चों को आवश्यकता है अगर ऑपरेशन कीजिए माननीय सदस्य ने चिंता जताई है कि अगर ट्राइबल जनजाति क्षेत्र में बच्चों को ऑपरेशन की ज़रूरत होती है सर तब ये डी कमेटी के माध्यम से ये सेंटर के माध्यम से हम बच्चों को चिन्हित करते हैं और उनकी ऑपरेशन की व्यवस्था भी की जाती है सर ये बहुत अच्छी तरह से कुछ जिलों में काम भी हो रहा है और कुछ जगह तो कैंप भी आयोजित किए जाते हैं माननीय सदस्य को आपके माध्यम से मैं अवगत कराना चाहती हूँ कि आप भी आपके क्षेत्र में एक ऐसा कैंप लगाइए और आर के माध्यम से बच्चों का स्क्रीनिंग भी हो और उनको ट्रीटमेंट भी मिले और ये बहुत बड़ी उपलब्धि है सर कि हमारी सरकार ने आदरणीय प्रधानमंत्री जी के नेतृत्व में चलाई गई एक पहल है कि जिसके माध्यम से हम बच्चों को उनकी हेल्थ के हेल्थ को लेके हम बहुत ही चिंतित हैं और उनकी सुविधा देने के लिए हम कटिबद्ध हैं श्रीमती भावना गौली क्वेश्चन नंबर टू टू थ्री सी नामा नागेश्वर राव थैंक यू स्पीकर साहब स्पीकर साहब ये तो एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर का यूरिया का बारे में हम क्वेश्चन पूछा था और उसमें मंत्री जी ने अपना जो रिप्लाई देने का टाइम में मान्य मेंबर जो क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन नंबर पहले क्वेश्चन नंबर क्वेश्चन नंबर टू टू थ्री सर अध्यक्ष महोदय जो आप सवा सवा पटल पर रखा गया सब जो क्वेश्चन का जो आंसर वो जो हम पूछे उसका आंसर जो है ना आंसर हमको नहीं मिला है 
हमारा क्वेश्चन ये था अभी तक जो है ना देश में पूरा रिक्वायरमेंट क्या है यूरिया का सबसे ज्यादा जो सब्सिडी जो प्रोवाइड कर रहा है वो सब्सिडी जो है स्टेट वाइज यूटी वाइज लास्ट फाइव इयर्स का सब्सिडी क्या है बोल के पूछा है उसका नहीं दे पाया सिंपली जो है ना ये एक लमसम फिगर दिया है टू लैख फिफ्टी फोर थाउजेंड सेवन हंड्रेड नाइन्टी एट का और हमारा जो इम्पोर्टेंट क्या है आज का दिन में देश में फार्मर्स के लिए यूरिया नहीं मिल रहा है इन पर्टिकुलर हमारा तेलंगाना में तो यूरिया का वजह से बहुत दिक्कत हो रहा है हम लोग को जितना रिक्वायरमेंट था वो रिक्वायरमेंट में कमी खनी कम से कम जो है ना फिफ्टी परसेंट भी जो है ना नहीं दे रहा है बहुत दफा हम लोग अप्रोच किया है अभी नॉट ओनली तेलंगाना एंटायर इंडिया का यूरिया का यूरिया को सप्लाई फुल फ्लैज करने के लिए कब तक जो है ना आपका प्रणाली का है और आपका जो है न्यू यूरिया न्यू यूरिया पॉलिसी जो लगाया न्यू यूरिया पॉलिसी सब एक मिनट सुन लीजिए मंत्री जी मंत्री साहब एक एक मिनट तो सुन लीजिए मंत्री साहब किसानों के ऊपर और खत के ऊपर राजनीति न करे तेलंगाना गवर्नमेंट देश के सारे गवर्नमेंट वो बीजेपी का हो या गैर बीजेपी का हो मोदी सरकार के लिए देश के किसान है और किसान को खत की उपलब्धि करने का जिम्मेदारी मोदी सरकार की है और पिछला नौ साल में लगातार देश के किसानों को जितना उर्वरक चाहिए उतना पूरा उर्वरक हम देश के किसानों को दे चुका है और मान्य सदस्य को मैं ये कहना चाहता हूँ कि हमारा व्यवस्था आईएफएमएस सिस्टम के जरिए से देश के हर जिले के अंदर राज्य सरकारों के साथ जितना मांग है उस मांग के तहत हम सप्लाई करने का हमारा व्यवस्था है इतना ही नहीं जहां पर प्रोडक्शन होता है जिस पोर्ट्स में आता है वहां से लेकर के रेलवे डिपार्टमेंट को हम सशक्त करके और रेलवे डिपार्टमेंट के माध्यम से करीब 90 प्रतिशत हम पूरा करते हैं कृपा मान्य सदस्य को इस इस तरह का गलत न सूचित करे मैं विश्वास करता हूं और आज देश के अंदर किसानों को प्रति वर्ष 350 लाख मेट्रिक टन की जरूरत है और उसके हिसाब से तेलंगाना को तेलंगाना को अब तक सात लाख चौबीस सात लाख सेवन पॉइंट टू फोर लाख मेट्रिक टन हमने अभी तक अवेलेबल कर दिया और आज के दिन में आठ लाख नाइन्टी टू लाख मेट्रिक टन अवेलेबल है वहाँ पर आज भी क्लोजिंग स्टॉक मान्य सदस्यों को मैं याद दिलाना चाहता हूँ कि फाइव पॉइंट जीरो थ्री लाख मेट्रिक टन टूडे इज अवेलेबल इन तेलंगाना कृपा इतना ही नहीं है अध्यक्ष महोदय प्रधानमंत्री जी का विशेष करके किसानों के ऊपर Breaking news coming in. Uh, well, uh, as far as Manish Sisodia is concerned, uh, no interim bail uh, for Manish Sisodia. The top court has adjourned uh, the Sisodia bail uh, plea hearing. Uh, this was in connection with the corruption and money laundering cases related to the now scrapped excise policy in the national capital. The court on the 14th of July had issued notice and sought responses of the CBI and the ED on the two petitions filed by the senior Aam Aadmi Party leader challenging the orders of the Delhi High Court denying him bail in the CBI and ED case. Cases. Now, senior advocate uh, Abhishek Manu Singhvi had appeared uh, for Shishoria and had urged the apex court to grant Shishoria interim bail in order to meet his ailing wife. We have my colleague Arvind uh, joining us to get us more on this. Uh, Arvind, on what grounds is the bail for Manish Shishoria rejected? Divya, the uh, interim bail or the bail plea of Manish Shishoria has not been rejected. In fact, the court has posted this matter for September uh, today when the matter was taken up for hearing. Uh, uh, 
Supreme Court asked some questions to counsels appearing on behalf of uh, uh, former Delhi Deputy Chief Minister Manish Sisodia because Manish Sisodia had sought for interim bail to meet his ailing wife in connection with this Delhi liquor policy case, and that's why Supreme Court sought for some uh, sought for some information from Manish Sisodia about the illness uh, of his wife, and that's why his counsel said that they would file a, a rejoinder to this particular uh, application because the enforcement director has filed an account of debate saying that this particular illness of his wife, which is being cited by Manish Sisodia, has been uh, for almost 23 years. And that's where uh, Abhishek Manasingh will be appearing for uh, Manish Sisodia said that he would be filing a rejoinder of debate in this particular case. And that's where Supreme Court said that both the interim application uh, for interim bail and also the regular bail plea, both the applications or both the petitions will be taken up for hearing together uh, uh, in the in the fourth in the uh, first week of September, and the court has not given any specific date, but the court has said that the matter, both applications, will be taken up for hearing together in September. Right. Uh, so that bail plea to come up in the month of September, a month from now, Arvind. Uh, so uh, we will keep tracking the story. Uh, no bail uh, for Manish Sisodia. Uh, well, uh, we uh, did hear Arvind uh, talk about how Abhishek Manusingh has appeared uh, for uh, Sisodia in the month of July, urging the Apex Court to grant uh, Sisodia interim bail in order to meet his ailing wife. But uh, that uh, bail plea will now be heard in the month of September. With that, we're sipping in a short break. Lots more coming up on the other side. The NDTV News Network that informs, inspires and illuminates. Watch every side of the story here on NDTV because the only side we are on is yours. It was fast, right? But tech is evolving even quicker than our abilities to adapt. And that's how I like to roll. Technology to aap sabhi ke paas hai. But what you need is everything else. Mera naam hai Gaurav aur ab mein aagaya hu NDTV Network pe. Har roz, har hafte. Ab aapke aur paas. Go beyond the now. When there's too much talking but very little being said. Too many voices but hardly any being heard. You turn to a show that puts you front and center. A show that headlines the stories of the people, by the people, for the people. From breaking news to in-depth analysis, Covering the latest developments across politics, business and technology. Bringing you stories that shape our nation and the world. Twenty-three years of the big fight. This show is not just an ordinary debate show, but it is a responsibility in service of our viewers. TV for news you can trust. No sensationalism, no ugly debates, no agenda. We strive to be transparent and unbiased in our reporting so you can get news that you can rely on. In a world filled with noise, we bring you news that you can rely on with accuracy and integrity. Because at NDTV, trust is everything. A debate has many facets. Perhaps no one right answer. Left, right and center. Conversations that get to the core of the debate. We're facing the crisis of the generation, climate change. And it's happening, not in some far off distant land or some millions of years away, it's happening now. 
and it affects everything we know and love. Information around climate change can often feel too distant, too jargony, too scary, too anxiety-filled, too technical, or too political. I'm here to change that, the Climate Explainers. Part of NDTV's six-month-long campaign, building a blueprint for climate action. The climate clock is ticking, but we're just in time. My name is Captain Raghu Raman, and I've been fortunate to have had a career that has spanned three different domains. Whether it was the authoritarian style of leadership in the armed forces or the mostly incentive-driven environment of the corporates or the process-driven style of the government, I found that there were some principles of leadership that are present in all the environments. And these valuable lessons of leadership can be learned from literally thousands of leaders who are all around us. And we will meet them all on Wisdom of Leaders. We have a surprise for you. We're going to ask a bunch of you some special questions and every correct answer is going to reveal what our surprise is. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Satya Nadella. Jeff Bezos. Bill Gates probably. Nehru Place. Sake. Sake. Mumbai. Technical Guruji. Tech Guruji. Technical Guruji. Technical Guruji. Chaliye shuru karte hai. Welcome back. A survey by the government body ASI at the landmark Gyanwapi Mosque in Varanasi started today at 7.30 this morning after the Allahabad High Court dismissed a petition by the Mosque Committee which said that the order for the survey passed by the Varanasi District Court last month should be stayed. The Mosque Committee has approached the Supreme Court again in the matter and the plea is likely to be heard in the top court today. In its order, the Allahabad High Court said a scientific survey is necessary in the interest of the justice as well as this will aid a more just decision from the trial court. The court has also said that there's no substance in the argument that the structure would be damaged during the survey. The Mosque Committee had argued that the structure is over a thousand years old and any sort of digging might destabilize the structure. It might also lead to its collapse. We have my colleague Aloka joining us. Aloka, the uh, plea by the Mosque Committee to be heard uh, very soon, uh, shortly from now. Uh, well, you're absolutely right. Uh, in fact, our colleague Arvind uh, Gunashekar will be giving us all the details about the plea itself. Uh, but yes, like you said, it's likely to start in a bit is what we are hearing. Uh, beyond that, I think uh, the new thing that I can talk about, because you see uh, the survey is in happening inside the mosque and we really aren't privy to the exact details of what's happening inside. Uh, so uh, I don't think uh, it, it's, it, I mean, we are qualified enough to do that discussion, but we can certainly talk about what the ASI is mandated to do. And uh, I believe that that is something that will be of interest to everyone who's uh, who's been following or tracking this story. So uh, basically uh, what the brief uh, for the ASI as per the order of the Varanasi District Court, and I'm going to read out uh, point by point is basically uh, to look at number one whether the mosque was constructed over a pre-existing Hindu structure which would be a temple probably uh, then the ASI also has to look at the age of the western wall of the mosque now why is the western wall uh, important uh, the western wall is important because that is where a lot of these uh, petitioners have said that there are shrines to Hindu deities uh, that is what they have said in their earlier uh, petition. So that's why uh, the court has asked them to determine the age of the western wall of the mosque. Uh, they're also saying that the ASI has to conduct a radar survey just below the three domes of the mosque. The ASI will conduct a radar survey of all the cellars inside the mosque complex. Uh, the ASI will prepare a list of all artifacts found in the building and will also carry out a dating of the mosque pillars for age. Uh, so that is, uh, in a sense, the brief of what the ASI is going to do. Now, of course, we know that they have filed an affidavit before the Allahabad High Court basically saying that we are not going to carry out any excavation or digging works. We are going to use radar, photography, imaging to basically get to uh, the goals of our survey. Uh, the mosque committee, as we know, had said in the Labad High Court that if there was any digging, that would harm the structure. But the ASI affidavit says that no, that will not happen. And the Labad High Court's order basis is that affidavit. And it says very clearly right. that the contours of the survey have to be worked out using that affidavit. Right. Alok, uh, we will come back to you for more on that. Let's just listen in to Malika Arjun Kharge, who's speaking in the Rajya Sabha. One second, sir. One second. One second. One second. 
सदन में मेरे अलावा कोई नहीं बोल रहा है मान्य मान्य सदस्य गण मैंने एक पॉइंट ऑफ ऑर्डर पर अपना निर्णय दिया था और उस पॉइंट ऑफ ऑर्डर का मेन मुद्दा था इस हाउस की डिस्कशन करने की क्या ताकत है क्या कुछ ऐसे मुद्दे हैं जिन पर यह हाउस डिस्कस नहीं कर सकता और मेरी रूलिंग बहुत क्लियर थी आई एड हेल्ड इन कैटेगोरिकल टर्म्स दैट कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन परमिट दिस हाउस टू डिस्कस एवरीथिंग एंड देर इज वन क्वालिफाइड डिस्कशन एंड दैट इज विद रेस्पेक्ट टू जजेस दैट डिस्कशन इज ऑल्सो प्रोवाइडेड बट अंडर डिफरेंट मैकेजम so i held in firm terms that there is no issue or individual which can't be discussed debated in this house whether it is manipur whether it is rajasthan whether chatisgarh one second one second can be discussed i had i had i had allowed myself discussion on manipur i had allowed discussion on manipur for as much time as the house wants to discuss the house will meet at 12 noon And uh, you can see Rajya Sabha is uh, being adjourned. Uh, the Rajya Sabha. This is day 12 of uh, the Parliament, and among uh, mid uh, sloganering uh, there, uh, the Rajya Sabha has again been adjourned. With that, we're slipping into a short break. Lots more coming up on the other side. The NDTV News Network that informs. inspires and illuminates watch every side of the story here on ndtv because the only side we are on is yours that was fast right but tech is evolving even quicker than our ability is to adapt and that's how i like to roll technology to aap sabhi ke paas hai but what you need is everything else mera naam hai gaurav aur ab main aa gaya hu ndtv network pe har roz har hafte ab aapke aur paas go beyond the now when there's too much talking but very little being said too many voices but hardly any being heard You turn to a show that puts you front and center. A show that headlines the stories of the people, by the people, for the people. From breaking news to in-depth analysis. covering the latest developments across politics business and technology bringing you stories that shape our nation and the world the 23 years of the big fight this show is not just an ordinary debate show 
but it is a responsibility in service of our viewers. TV for news you can trust. No sensationalism, no ugly debates, no agenda. We strive to be transparent and unbiased in our reporting so you can get news that you can rely on. In a world filled with noise, we bring you news that you can rely on with accuracy and integrity. Because at NDTV, trust is everything. A debate has many facets. Perhaps no one right answer. Left, right and center. Conversations that get to the core of the debate. undeniable. We're facing the crisis of the generation, climate change. And it's happening, not in some far off distant land or some millions of years away. It's happening now. And it affects everything we know and love. Information around climate change can often feel too distant, too jargony, too scary, too anxiety filled, too technical or too political. I'm here to change that. The Climate Explainers, part of NDTV's six-month-long campaign, building a blueprint for climate action. The climate clock is ticking, but we're just in time. Welcome back to get you the latest uh, from uh, Nu, uh, where uh, the uh, epicenter lies as far as the violence in Haryana is concerned, which started on Monday. Now, four days in, the uh, top official, the top police official has now been uh, transferred. Uh, this is where the communal clashes broke out on Monday during a Vishwa Hindu Parishad rally and has now been transferred to the state's Bhivani district, which is about 160 kilometers away. Narendra Bijarnia will now be uh, the new superintendent of police since the violence that started and has now uh, in fact uh, been uh, he was uh, the uh, the police uh, official earlier as well that had headed the police force in Nu from February of 2020 to October of 2021 has replaced Varun Singla who was on leave when the clashes broke out. Narendra Bijarania uh, uh, was rushed to Bhivani to Nu at uh, the start of the clashes in the absence of uh, Varun Singla. Now permanent orders have been issued for his appointment as the superintendent of police amid intense uh, communal tension in the area. Muslims in Gurugram have been urged today to offer for Friday prayers at home only amid the ongoing communal uh, clashes in Haryana. And this is as uh, we are seeing a change of guard in Nu. People have been advised to offer prayers at home. Uh, many shops have been looted in Nu as far as the violence is concerned uh, on Thursday as well. And people have been advised not to gather in large numbers. My colleague Saurabh Shukla sends us this report from the ground. Right now we are standing outside Jama Masjid of Sadar, Old Gurugram very sensitive mosque today is juma and uh, friday prayers will be offered before that administration has deployed additional forces outside the mosque of gurugram nuh palwal and several other sensitive places but the shops in and around jama masjids are totally closed from last four days you can see the shut shutters Locks are there and forces are there. The cops are sitting right outside these shops and these shops are not going to be open for a few more days because people who work in these shops or they, who own these shops, they have migrated to their hometowns or to their relatives. They think that they are not safe here because there are several shops which were attacked vandalized, looted, burnt by these right ears on Monday and Tuesday after the violence of, uh, uh, of new, new. So, so far, according to the administration, they are giving full protection to the namazis who will come to offer Friday prayers. But uh, several 
uh, groups, Muslim groups, they have urged people not to come to the mosque for, to offer prayers. They have advised people, Muslims of Gurgram, to offer prayer in their respective houses in groups. They have also advised that people should not gather in, in uh, huge numbers. Section 144 is imposed, curfew is imposed in Nu. But the big question is that trust, which takes years and years to build, that trust is not there. How administration is going to make sure that these sh shops should get open and then they are fully protected. These people, these shopkeepers, are still not able to trust local administration, cops, and the system. They think that they are not safe here. So it will take some time, but normalcy will come back. But people have been advised on Gurugram not to come to the mosque, offer namaz in their respective houses. In Gurugram, with Sanjay Kaushik, Saurabh Shukla for NDTV. Thank you, Saurabh, for getting us all those details. And uh, people have been advised to uh, pray at home as far as the Friday prayers are concerned in the city of Gurugram. Moving on, the horrific killing of a 14-year-old girl has sent shockwaves throughout uh, Rajasthan. The young girl's burnt remains were found in a furnace in Bilwada of Rajasthan, and the police suspect that she was raped and killed. Now, three people have been held. Hours after she went missing while out grazing goats, the body of a 14-year-old girl in Rajasthan's Bilwara was found in a brick kiln. Her shoes and a silver anklet evidence that she had been pushed into the kiln and burnt. The police suspect the girl was killed to destroy evidence, probably of rape. Five people living in huts close to the brick kiln have been detained for questioning. <laughs> ये घटनाक्रम रहा है कि गैंगरेप की घटना का जो फाइनल डिसीजन है वो एफएसएल और हमारे जो डॉक्टर भी मौजूद हैं उसके बाद ही हम फाइनल कंक्लुजन दे पाएंगे लेकिन इस गैंगरेप की घटना को नगारा भी नहीं जा सकता चार लोगों को जो राउंडअप किया है और उनसे इन्वेस्टिगेशन जारी है The horrific crime has sparked off a blame game with the BJP accusing the Congress on the rising graph of crimes against women in Rajasthan. Administrative officials who reached the spot have offered compensation as per norms and a fast tracking of the case. Rajya Sarkar ke dwara pravdhan kiye gaye hain. Usko wo kuch rashi yahan par distribute karne ki koshna ki gayi hai. Ye iski sunwai fast track karne ke liye iske saath ko nirdesh kiya gaya hai aur police iski karwai expedite karegi. But with the BJP determined to raise the issue of safety of women in an election year, this crime will reverberate beyond Rajasthan. With Naveen Joshi in Bhilwara and Harsha Kumari Singh, Anusya Mathur for NDTV. Switching tracks now, an army jawan who went missing on Saturday has been found in Jammu and Kashmir on Thursday. The police say that the rifleman will now be questioned after he's through with his medical checkup in order to ascertain the circumstances behind his disappearance. My colleague Nazi sent us this report. Well, Diva Soldier has been found safely, but the mystery still remains. And he is being interrogated by the police and other security ag agencies. And police have made it clear that it will be a joint interrogation of the uh, soldier who has been found after five days of he was he was reportedly missing. So clearly, he is being treated as a suspect. Uh, so. Uh, from day one, police was a bit circumspect about what the, about the circumstances which led to the missing of this soldier. Family was suspecting that militants may be behind this, and they had even to put up the video, appeal uh, to the captors, uh, appealing them to release him safely. Because in the past, several soldiers who were on, off duty, who had come home on leave, were kidnapped, and some of them were unfortunately killed. And, and 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 for five days nobody knew where this man was so uh, we are waiting for the more information from the police where this man was this, this soldier was he was posted in Ladakh he was on leave at his home in Kulgam uh, on July 29 in the evening he had gone to buy some stuff in from the market in preparation to go back to join back his duties in Ladakh 
so he went missing and where he was all these days and if he was a, it was a involuntary disappearance or the voluntary you know disappearance by if, if he was in some how uh, involved in his own disappearance all these things are being you know looked into by the police but since last night after his medical checkup was done so he is being questioned by the police and other security agencies to know all that what has happened over the last five days during which he was missing but finally the soldier has been you know found safely but it's very unclear who had abducted him if at all he was you know kidnapped by some man and with that was having a very short break on the other side my colleague arun will be here to get you the very latest from the world of entertainment My name is Captain Raghu Raman and I have been fortunate to have had a career that has spanned three different domains. Whether it was the authoritarian style of leadership in the armed forces or the mostly incentive driven environment of the corporates or the process driven style of the government, I found that there were some principles of leadership that are present in all the environments and these valuable lessons of leadership can be learned from literally thousands of leaders who are all around us and we will meet them all on wisdom of leaders We have a surprise for you. We're going to ask a bunch of you some special questions and every correct answer is going to reveal what our surprise is. Uh, I don't know. Uh Satya Nadella? Jeff is a Bill Gates probably. Nehru place. Saket. Saket. Mumbai. technical guruji tech guruji technical guruji technical guruji chaliye shuru karte hain the ntv news network that informs inspires and illuminates watch every side of the story here on ntv because the only side we are on is yours It was fast, right? But tech is evolving even quicker than our abilities to adapt, and that's how I like to roll. Technology to ab sabhi ke paas hai, but what you need is everything else. Mera naam hai Gaurav, aur ab main aa gaya hu NDTV Network pe. Har roz, har hafte. Ab aapke aur paas. Go beyond the now. When there's too much talking but very little being said, too many voices but hardly any being heard. You turn to a show that puts you front and center. A show that headlines the stories of the people, by the people, for the people. From breaking news to in-depth analysis. covering the latest developments across politics business and technology bringing you stories that shape our nation and the world for 23 years of the big fight this show is not just an ordinary debate show but it is a responsibility in service of our viewers TV for news you can trust no sensationalism no ugly debates no agenda we strive to be transparent and unbiased in our reporting so you can get news that you can rely on in a world filled with noise we bring you news that you can rely on with accuracy and integrity because at NDTV trust is everything a debate has many facets perhaps no one right answer left right and center 
conversations that get to the core of the debate. It's undeniable. We're facing the crisis of the generation, climate change, and it's happening not in some far-off distant land or some millions of years away. It's happening now. And it affects everything we know and love. Information around climate change can often feel too distant, too jargony, too scary, too anxiety. Akshay Kumar's film's OMG 2 was passed by the censor board this week with an A certificate. The film will release with 27 changes and let us take you through those changes the character akshay kumar plays has been changed from lord shiva to his dooth or messenger scenes showing akshay's character drunk bathing and meditating have been modified visuals of frontal nudity have been replaced with appropriate footage of naga sadhus dialogues related to alcohol have been changed as has a reference to the high court the setting of the film has been changed from Ujjain to a fictional location. A billboard showing a condom ad has been removed as has the word rat from the label of a bottle of poison. References to certain religious offices like Mahant have been changed. The makers of OMG2 were also asked to submit evidence for statistics and facts quoted in the film. OMG2 will release next Friday, clashing with Gadar 2, starring Sunny Deol and Amisha Patel. Uh, now, I also spoke to film critic Mayank Shekhar about this entire controversy. Have a look at the conversation. Uh, we've beaten uh, China when it comes to population. And I, I don't know, I mean, what do you think, uh, I mean, the reason behind that, why are we hiding a condom ad? There's, there's no end to this, right? There's absolutely no end to this the moment you go down this route of this is not allowed, that's not allowed because this will offend that person or condom as you rightly put it will offend someone else. There's no end to this. The point is this. Someone's gone ahead, made something. There's a sense of this country so far as theatrical releases of films are concerned. They have said, okay, fine, 27 cuts. After 27 cuts, there's somebody else who says something is probably above this government and should not be allowed. And that's where we need to draw a line. We need to draw a line somewhere. And I'm okay with the fact that um, it's drawn at 27 cards. It's unfair. <laughs> but I've not seen the film know what those cards were. But that's it. It needs to stop here. If some rando gets up in this country and says, you know what, I'm going to go after this film or a theater or a person or whatever, in a, in a violent sort of way, I think everyone's allowed to express their opinions but and my, that my, should why never I, stop. Why I say this is the Adipurush effect is we had OMG, the first part as well, where Akshay plays a, a Bhagwan, he plays Bhagwan Krishna. And then of course there were all kind of godmen also shown in that film. That was okay, it was loved by the audience, but what just changed, what happened? Um, I don't know, like what has changed? is hard to define but for sure it was easy to say a lot of things at some point in our lives and it's not that easy anymore now i also asked delhi janta if sensor board is playing it too safe after adi purush i think uh, maybe yes people are now trying to play safe because of uh, different dimensions coming to the art and creativity to it. People have to take care of the sentiments of public too, I think. I mean, what is your tipping that when people show the movie in the form of God? They can't take the form of God. My thought is that if we are praying for someone, then we are a lot of different person. How many person do you have to do with one person? If you are making God, then it's bad. I have my demons, you have yours, but we also have parts of God. So if I... I am absolutely pure, guys. Please talk about yourself. If, if I... <laughs> I am channeling the energy that God's giving me, then why not? I don't think, sir, that there is no need to be able to do this. Because you can portray whatever you want. He's an actor. It's like creativity. We stuck to creativity, not to people. Fantasizing them as God. So they're talking about sex education in the film, apparently. Uh, will you be okay if that message is delivered? We have a history where we talk about Kama Sutra and such things. 
at least in Indian context, people need to have more information. <laughs> and it's nothing related to religion. They have asked to change a condom ad, by the way. There's a billboard in the film that will be changed. Yeah. So I don't think that's no relevance. Moving on, let's talk about Rocky or Rani Ki Prem Kahani. The Hangover is real a week after it released. Word of mouth is still strong for the film. Ranveer Singh's performance as Rocky has struck a special chord. Here's what his director and costume designer said. Ranveer Singh's portrayal of Rocky Randhawa in Karan Johar's Rocky or Rani Ki Prem Kahani has been winning hearts. With his West Delhi swag, slashy wardrobe and broken English, Ranveer transformed into the ultimate Karol Bagh Kamunda. Costume designer Eka Lakhani revealed this week that Rocky was her team's favorite character. Everyone wanted to be a part of deciding his looks. Everyone wanted to be assigned to style him, she wrote on Instagram. Director Karan Johar told film critic Anupama Chopra how Ranveer Singh spent time in Delhi becoming Rocky. When we were on a recce, I know, for three weeks in Delhi, Ranveer was with me right through those three weeks. On a recce? On a recce. We, he had nothing to do. Yeah. He would go, he would meet those Instagrammers that we had a whole long list of people, including Yuvraj, who's also a content creator and has was with us on set right through. Um, he would speak to them, he would pick up lingo, he would like absorb, he would go everywhere. He would, Ratko, he would even be driving around Delhi and just getting the flavor. I don't know what he was doing, but he had a process. He was there in Delhi right through my recce. Like, he never came on the locations, but he was in the hotel working with the team, meeting Instagrammers, content creators, influencers, getting the line. He worked it. He created the Rocky Randhawa you see is is a lot on paper, but it's a lot to do with him. Alia Bhatt played Rani Chatterjee in the hit film, which is expected to cross the 100 crore mark next week. That's all we could pack in this entertainment segment. This is Arun Singh signing off. My name is Captain Raghu Raman and I have been fortunate to have had a career that has spanned three different domains. Whether it was the authoritarian style of leadership in the armed forces or the mostly incentive-driven environment of the corporates or the process-driven style of the government, I found that there were some principles of leadership that are present in all the environments. And these valuable lessons of leadership can be learned from literally thousands of leaders who are all around us. And we will meet them all on Wisdom of Leaders. We have a surprise for you. We're going to ask a bunch of you some special questions and every correct answer is going to reveal what our surprise is. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Satya Nadella. Jeff Bezos. Bill Gates probably. Nehru Place. Sake. Sake. Mumbai. Technical Guruji. Tech Guruji. Technical Guruji. Technical Guruji. चलिए शुरू करते हैं। The NTTV News Network that informs, inspires, and illuminates. Watch every side of the story here on NTTV because the only side we're on is yours. It was fast, right? But tech is evolving even quicker than our abilities to adapt. And that's how I like to roll. Technology to aap sabhi ke paas hai. But what you need is everything else. Mera naam hai Gaurav. Aur ab mein aagaya hu NDTV Network pe. Har roz, har afte. Ab aapke aur paas. Go beyond the now. When there's too much talking but very little being said. Too many voices but hardly any being heard. You turn to a show that puts you front and center. A show that headlines the stories of the people, by the people, for the people. From 
breaking news to in-depth analysis. Covering the latest developments across politics, business and technology. Bringing you stories that shape our nation and the world. Twenty-three years of the big fight. This show is not just an ordinary debate show, but it is a responsibility in service of our viewers. NDTV for news you can trust. No sensationalism, no ugly debate, no agenda. We strive to be transparent and unbiased in our reporting so you can get news that you can rely on. In a world filled with noise, we bring you news that you can rely on with accuracy and integrity. Because at NDTV, trust is everything. A debate has many facets, perhaps no one right answer. Left, right and center. Conversations that get to the core of the debate. facing the crisis of the generation, climate change. And it's happening, not in some far off distant land or some millions of years away, it's happening now. And it affects everything we know and love. Information around climate change can often feel too distant, too jargony, too... shanties have been bulldozed in Haryana. That's just one of the stories that we will be bringing to you apart from all the latest developments in the parliament. I'm Sneha Koshi, but first, the headlines. Two hundred and fifty shanties bulldozed in Haryana's Nu. Shanties were bulldozed amid heavy police presence. The new police, the top police official in Nu, has said shanties were built illegally on government land. The ASI survey at Gyanbapi Mosque in Varanasi has resumed. The survey has resumed after Allahabad court's go-ahead. The top court is to hear the mosque committee's appeal in a short while from now. Manipur tense, one cop has been killed. Mobs ransacked two security posts in Bishnupur. Exchange of fire between security forces and armed mobs. Not India, but Ghamandia. Prime Minister Modi's fresh attack on the opposition. U.S. Ex-President Trump pleads not guilty. Trump's not guilty is to four felony counts in election case. And it's day 12 of the parliament. Political stalemate continues. Both the houses, the Rajya Sabha as well as the Lok Sabha, have resumed. They were adjourned earlier amid ruckus. In Rajya Sabha, there was ruckus over the issue of Rule 267. The chairman has said um, that there, they, he has received 48 notices under this. The chairman also saying, I should get at least one day in my life where I'm allowed to speak without anybody interrupting. Massive ruckus in Rajya Sabha as well. Uh, opposition has been raising several issues. So basically, it's day 12 of the parliament. And... Uh, the logjam continues. Let's listen to what Minister Piyush Goel is saying. Rajasthan <laughs> 
पूरी तरीके से फेल हो गई है माँ बहनों की इज्जत बचाने में और माँ बहनों के खातिर राजस्थान के विषय पे सर विद योर काइंड परमिशन आई विश टू ले ऑन द टेबल द स्टेटमेंट हिंदी एंड इंग्लिश वर्जन showing action taken by the government on the observations recommendation contained in the 21st report of the committee on external affairs 17 lok sabha on action taken by the government on the observations recommendations contained in the 15th report on the subject welfare of the indian diaspora police scheme listed against my name at serial number 8 in today's order paper sri satish kumar gautam ji अध्यक्ष महोदय महोदय में आज की कार्य सूची में अपने नाम के सामने क्रम संख्या नौ पर यथा सूचीबद्ध समस्त और कौशल विकास एंड राज्यसभा हैज बीन एडजर्ड टिल मंडे अब दिस इज अ सेकेंड टाइम इट वाज एडजर्ड अर्लियर इट वाज एडजर्ड टिल नून इट बिगेन जस्ट बेली फॉर फ्यू मिनट्स एंड इट वाज एडजर्ड अगेन अगेन द ऑपोजिशन रेजिंग द इशू ऑफ रूल 267 whereas the treasury bench you heard piyush goyal minister also raised the issue of rajasthan where a minor was found burnt in a brick kiln i'm being joined by my colleague himanshu right now who's in the parliament for more details on this himanshu uh, the rajya sabha being adjourned again this time till monday ruckus inside the rajya sabha not only the opposition but also the treasury bench for that matter the uh, minister raising rajasthan issue when the when the opposition was raising uh, the discussion around rule 267 That's right. Many BJP MPs had, in fact, submitted a notice today under Rule 176, demanding a discussion on the rise in of crime against women in Rajasthan, and they were insisting that first a short duration discussion should be held because there is a breakdown of law and order in Rajasthan. The crime against women are rising, and this is one important national issue that should be raised. Then Malika Jun Kharge, who is the leader of opposition, he got up to. question the uh, the treasury bench's demand and he said that these are local issues this can be taken up in rajasthan assembly the rajya sabha is not the right forum to discuss uh, the rise uh, of crime against women in rajasthan that created more ruckus and led to disruptions and now we know that the house has been adjourned till monday uh, the second important thing is that in next week in rajya sabha's agenda two very important contentious bills have been listed v mulidharan who is minister of state for parliament has announced this in rajya sabha today the delhi services bill and the digital personal data protection bill now we do know that these are two bills that most of the opposition parties are strongly against and so even next week when these important contentious legislative business is taken up in rajya sabha the political stalemate that we have seen in last 12 days could further intensify and uh, it's very difficult now to see how uh, how the government actually will manage to push these uh, bills through because at the moment with the kind of noises and scenes and ruckus we have seen in rajya sabha a discussion on any legislative uh, agenda any important bill uh, seems to be very difficult as of today sneha right 
Um, Himanshu, in fact, can you tell us, now the opposition seem to have made a strategic clamp down or a step back, saying that they are willing to discuss it on in, uh, discuss the Manipur issue under any other rule, but they want a Prime Minister's statement. The government seems to say that they have given the date as August 11th for the discussion. How is this going to pan out in the Rajya Sabha? Well, uh, there was, uh, it appeared that there is, there will be a breakthrough when after lunch yesterday, uh, many opposition parties actually offered a middle part to the government. Uh, the, the basic premise was that the government is insisting for a debate on Manipur under Rule 176, which there is a provision for a short duration discussion, whereas opposition is insisting for a discussion under Rule 267. So opposition put up a new proposal and said that why not have a discussion under Rule 167 uh, and that could be a middle ground on which both government and opposition can work. And under Rule 167 also, there is a provision for a very long discussion. And two, at least two important opposition leaders told me personally that we, for us, voting is not very important. Let's have a long discussion on Manipur. So that proposal was sent to the Raj Sabha chairman. A motion was drafted censoring the role of the government and there were indications that chairman will then discuss with the government and then come back to the house today and announce uh, what is the outcome of this proposal from the opposition parties. But what we have seen today, Sneha, it's very clear that 48 notices, if opposition MPs have again submitted today under Rule 267, that essentially means that the middle path which seemed to be emerging uh, in the second half yesterday, that uh, option, that uh, hope that we had of a resolution of this uh, stalemate, the logjam in Raj Sabha seems to have disappeared today. And it's again back to square one, the same scenes we saw on July 20th with opposition MPs insisting for a demand on Manipur under Rule 267 and government now insisting for a discussion first on Rajasthan. And this could cast a shadow on the government's plan to have a detailed discussion, as I said earlier, on two very important contentious bills which have been listed in Raj Sabha's agenda next week, the Personal Digital Tata Protection Bill and the Delhi Services Bill. And both are these bills could further intensify uh, this ruckus and this stalemate uh, that we have seen in Raj Sabha in the first 12 days. Sneha. Right. Thank you very much, Himanshu, for all of those details. So the Treasury bench in the Rajya Sabha, that's the ruling party, MPs, have been raising the issue of the miner's burnt body that was found in a brick kiln. But what really is this case? Harsha Kumari has this report. Hours after she went missing while out grazing goats, the body of a 14-year-old girl in Rajasthan's Bulwara was found in a brick kiln. Her shoes and a silver anklet evidence that she had been pushed into the kiln and burnt. The police suspect the girl was killed to destroy evidence, probably of rape. Five people living in huts close to the brick kiln have been detained for questioning. <laughs> ये घटनाक्रम रहा है कि गैंगरेप की घटना का जो फाइनल डिसीजन है वो एफएसएल और हमारे जो डॉक्टर भी मौजूद हैं उसके बाद ही हम फाइनल कंक्लुजन दे पाएंगे लेकिन इस गैंगरेप की घटना को नगारा भी नहीं जा सकता चार लोगों को जो राउंडअप किया है और उनसे इन्वेस्टिगेशन जारी है The horrific crime has sparked off a blame game with the BJP accusing the Congress on the rising graph of crimes against women in Rajasthan. Administrative officials who reached the spot have offered compensation as per norms and a fast tracking of the case. Rajya Sarkar ke dwara pravdhan kiye gaye hain. Usko wo kuch rashi yahan par distribute karne ki koshna ki gayi hai. Ye iski sunwai fast track karne ke liye iske saath ko nirdesh kiya gaya hai aur police iski karwai expedite kare. But with the BJP determined to raise the issue of safety of women in an election year, this crime will reverberate beyond Rajasthan. With Naveen Joshi in Bilwara and Harsha Kumari Singh, Anusya Mathur for NDTV. And now let's just listen to what Piyush Goyal, Minister, spoke in the House, in the Parliament, while raising this issue of a miner's burnt body being found in the brick kiln. All of this while the opposition in the Parliament was raising other issues, particularly around the discussion on Manipur under Rule 267. पहले भी राजस्थान की गंभीर स्थिति पे 176 का नोटिस हमने आप मेंबर्स ने मूव किया था सरकार तैयार है उस चर्चा के लिए 
और हम चाहते हैं कि राजस्थान की एक गंभीर समस्या और राजस्थान में जो टोटल ब्रेकडाउन ऑफ लॉ एंड ऑर्डर हुआ है हमारी बेटियों के साथ जिस प्रकार से राइट एंड लेट्स क्विकली टेक यू टू लोक्स अबाउट वेयर राजनाथ सिंह इज स्पीकिंग सर्विसेज ऑर्गेनाइजेशन कमांड एंड कंट्रोल एंड डिसिप्लिन बिल 2023 पर विचार किए जाने का मैं प्रस्ताव करता हूं इसी के साथ ही माननीय सभापति महोदय मैं अपने कुछ विचार भी इस संबंध में व्यक्त करना चाहता हूं कि हमारे प्रधानमंत्री से नरेंद्र मोदी जी के नेतृत्व में सरकार लगातार नए नए रिफॉर्म्स के माध्यम से राष्ट्र को सशक्त बनाने की कोशिश कर रही है और सारा देश जानता है कि पिछले कुछ वर्षों में सरकार ने लगभग हर क्षेत्र में नई नई पहले की हैं पुराने अनेक कानूनों को जहां हमने समाप्त किया है वहीं पर जहां जरूरत पड़ी है पुराने जो नियम और कानून रहे हैं उन नियम और कानूनों में हमने संशोधन भी किया है लोकसभा में पेश किया गया इंटर सर्विसेज ऑर्गेनाइजेशन कमांड एंड कंट्रोल एंड डिसिप्लिन बिल 2023 भी उसी कड़ी में एक यह बहुत ही इम्पॉर्टेंट बिल है सभापति महोदय यह बिल दो महत्वपूर्ण मकसदों को एक साथ पूरा करता है यह हमारी आर्म फोर्सेस के तीनों अंगों के बीच इंटीग्रेशन तथा ज्वाइंटनेस की दिशा में बढ़ाया गया एक बहुत ही महत्वपूर्ण कदम है जिससे वे भविष्य की चुनौतियों का एकजुट और एकीकृत तरीके से मुकाबला कर सकें यह एक ऐसा वातावरण बनाने में निश्चित रूप से हमारी यह मदद करेगा जो हमारे इंटर सर्विसेज ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में अनुशासन को मजबूत करेगा मैं इन दोनों महत्वपूर्ण पहलुओं पर माननीय सदस्यों का ध्यान आकर्षित करना चाहूँगा सभापति महोदय यह सर्वविदित है अनुशासन यह सेना की आत्मा होती है यह अनेक यह उनके चरित्र और संकल्प को भी मजबूत करता है यह आत्मविश्वास को बढ़ावा देने के साथ साथ एक यूनिट या इस्टेब्लिशमेंट के सैनिकों को एकजुट करने में भी मदद करता है सभापति महोदय इसलिए कभी किसी परिस्थिति में अनुशासनहीनता का कोई मामला सामने आता है तो उसके बारे में निर्णय जल्द से जल्द यह आवश्यक हो जाता है इंटर सर्विसेज ऑर्गेनाइजेशन कमांड कंट्रोल एंड डिसिप्लिन बिल 2023 किसी इंटर सर्विसेज ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में डिसिप्लिन बनाए रखने के लिए त्वरित कार्रवाई किए जाने का एक प्राविधान करता है अध्यक्ष महोदय वर्तमान में भारतीय सेना नौसेना और हमारी वायुसेना के पर्सनल अपने रेस्पेक्टिव एक्ट अर्थात आर्मी एक्ट 1950, नेवी एक्ट 1957 leaders We have a surprise for you. We're going to ask a bunch of you some special questions and every correct answer is going to reveal what our surprise is. Uh, I don't know. Uh Satya Nadella, Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates probably. Nehru place, Saket. Saket. Mumbai. टेक्निकल गुरु जी टेक्निकल गुरु जी टेक्निकल गुरु जी चलिए शुरू करते हैं डी एन डी टीवी न्यूज नेटवर्क दट इन्फॉर्म इंस्पायर एंड इलूमिनेट वॉच एवरी साइड ऑफ द स्टोरी हियर ऑन एनडी टीवी बिकॉज द ओनली साइड हियर ऑन इज योर्स
was fast, right? But tech is evolving even quicker than our abilities to adapt, and that's how I like to roll. Technology तो आप सभी के पास है, but what you need is everything else. मेरा नाम है गौरव और अब मैं आ गया हूँ NDTV Network पे हर रोज हर हफ्ते अब आपके और पास Go beyond the now. When there's too much talking but very little being said, too many voices but hardly any being heard, you turn to a show that puts you front and center. A show that headlines the stories of the people, by the people, for the people. From breaking news to in-depth analysis. Covering the latest developments across politics, business and technology. Bringing you stories that shape our nation and the world. Twenty-three years of the big fight. This show is not just an ordinary debate show, but it is a responsibility in service of our viewers. TV for news you can trust. No sensationalism, no ugly debates, no agenda. We strive to be transparent and unbiased in our reporting so you can get news that you can rely on. In a world filled with noise, we bring you news that you can rely on with accuracy and integrity because at NDTV, trust is everything. A debate has many facets, perhaps no one right answer. Left, right and center, conversations that get to the core of the debate. facing the crisis of the generation, climate change. And it's happening, not in some far off distant land or some millions of years away, it's happening now. And it affects everything we know and love. Information around climate change can often feel too distant, too jargony, too scary, too anxiety filled, too technical or too political. I'm here to change that, the Climate Explainers part of NDTV's six-month-long campaign, building a blueprint for climate action. The climate clock is ticking, but we're just in time. My name is Captain Raghu Raman, and I've been fortunate to have had a career that has spanned three different domains. Whether it was the authoritarian style of leadership in the armed forces, Welcome back. Now, 250 shanties have been bulldozed in News Tauru. Why has this happened? According to top police official of NU, that is in Haryana, these shanties were built illegally on government land. The police official has also said their link to NU violence is being probed. And these are the images that you can see. According to what our reporters have sent us, these shanties were being bulldozed in Nu amid massive security presence. There's, there, was, there were several security forces that were on the ground present, including teams of police officials, when the shanties were being bulldozed. Why has this happened? As I mentioned, the government sources have said this was built on illegal land. Sources have also told us that the action was taken after orders by the Haryana Chief Minister. And Nu was a place where, of course, the violence was triggered in Haryana. That is, on Monday, the first instance of violence, the initial instances of violence was reported from Nu. Now, what has the police done? Police has cracked down on certain provocative social media posts. Social media has been under 
the scanner. Heavy security deployment in NU, uh, uh, across NU for that matter. So seven FIRs for inflammatory posts on social media have been uh, made till now. Police is investigating around 2,300 videos that have been posted in and around those days of violence. Three accounts with provocative posts on the day of no violence has also is also under the scan. A case has been booked against Kao Vigilante Bittu Bajrangi in Faridabad, who was booked for a provocative post. This is the crackdown by police, particularly on social media. But there are so many aspects to what's been happening in NU and other areas of Haryana, including Gurugram as well as uh, Faridabad. In Gurugram, Imams have appealed to people to have their Friday prayers at their homes instead of mosques. This comes just days after there have been reports of violence in parts of Gurugram as well, soon after the violence began in NU. My colleague, Saurabh Shukla sends us this report. Standing outside Jama Masjid of Sadar, Old Gurugram. Very sensitive mosque. Today is Juma and uh, Friday prayers will be offered. Before that, administration has deployed additional forces outside the mosque of Gurugram, Nuh, Palwal and several other sensitive places. But the shops in and around Jama Masjids are totally closed from last four days. You can see the shut shutters, locks are there and forces are there. The cops are sitting right outside these shops and these shops are not going to be open for a few more days because people who work in these shops or they who own these shops, they have migrated to their hometowns or to their relatives they think that they are not safe here because there are several shops which were attacked vandalized looted burnt by these right ears on monday and tuesday after the violence of uh, uh, of new new so so far according to the administration they are giving full protection to the namazis who will come to offer friday prayers but uh, several uh, groups, Muslim groups, they have urged people not to come to the mosque for to offer prayers. They have advised people, Muslims of Gurgram, to offer prayer in their respective houses in groups. They have also advised that people should not gather in in uh, huge numbers. Section 144 is imposed, curfew is imposed in Nu. But the big question is that trust which takes years and years to build, that trust is not there. How administration is going to make sure that these sh shops should get open and then they are fully protected. These people, these shopkeepers are still not able to trust local administration, cops and the system. They think that they are not safe here. So it will take some time, but normalcy will come back. But people have been advised on Gujar Gurugram not to come to the mosque, offer namaz in their respective houses. In Gurugram, Vasanjay Kaushik, Saurabh Shukla for NDTV. My name is Haji Ahmed Khan. Hai. Uh, Khadim, Khadim Sahib, will namaz in this mosque? No, it will not be a namaz. What is the reason, Khadim Sahib? The reason you all know is what is happening, and what is the reason it is not happening. But it has also come to the news that it will not be a namaz. तो आप लोगों से क्या अपील कर रहे हैं जो मुसलमान भाई हैं उनसे क्या अपने घरों में नमाज पढ़ो अच्छा अपने घरों में नमाज पढ़ो मस्जिद में आज इस जुमा में इस शुक्रवार में आने की जरूरत नहीं अच्छा खादिम साहब प्रशासन ने तो ऐसा नहीं कहा ये लोग आप लोग अपने आप कह रहे हैं ये बात खादिम नहीं अखबार में अखबार में लिखा है पंजाब केसरी में है अमर उजाला में है कि भाई जुमा की नमाज अपने घरों में पढ़ो तो ये हालात ऐसे हो गए हैं इस हालात की वजह से किसी को छेड़छाड़ हो जाए इसलिए हमारे बड़ों ने भी और प्रशासन ने भी सबने कह दिया नमाज पढ़ अपने घरों जुमा में भीड़ मत करो and now moving back to a political focus where prime minister narendra modi seems to have a new name coined for 
India, that's the Opposition Alliance Front. Prime Minister Modi has suggested Gamandia instead of Modia, instead of India. How did this happen? He was talking to a group of MPs from the NDA. That's the group of MPs from Bihar, from the India Alliance. And he said, you should not be calling them India. You should be calling them Ghamandia because they are arrogant. They have changed the name of their alliance because they knew how, uh, how defamed the UPA coinage as such was. And he's also asked them uh, to go ahead beyond caste politics and to ensure they serve people across all boards. This is just one of the recent attacks by the Prime Minister Modi against the opposition. He's has He has made some very strong statements of late against the opposition, particularly after the coinage India by the opposition front. So last night, uh, PM Modi had a meeting with uh, NDA MPs from Bihar. And this is a part of the series of meetings which have been taking place uh, during this uh, monsoon session where he has been meeting all the NDA MPs uh, across the country. And this was uh, a third or uh, fourth meeting uh, with, uh, with the Bihar MPs uh, of, of NDA. And uh, Prime Minister Modi made it very clear that this uh, alliance which has been formed by the opposition parties, it is basically uh, the need was arised because uh, uh, there were allegations, there were sent uh, on the UPA. That's why there was there a need to change the name to uh, uh, India. But Prime Minister says that instead of calling it India, it should be called Mamandia because it's a combination of the people who are arrogant, who are dynastic, and the PM says they are also tainted with the corruption charges. He also talked about the caste politics in Bihar. He says that we should not do a caste politics, but we should take all the sections of the society with us. And he also attacked uh, Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar, said that he, uh, on three occasions the BJP made him CM. On the last occasion, he had less number of seats than the BJP, but still uh, BJP had made him uh, Chief Minister. And this is the strength of the NDA, because NDA gives Stability. He also mentioned about the Akali Dal. Uh, he told uh, the MPs that you know, Akali Dal was part of the NDA, but Akali Dal left NDA because of its own self-interest. And that's why he says that you know we should be together. He also advised the MPs that when they go among the people to seek votes, they should mention that all the work has been done by the NDA government, not by the BGP or by them themselves. So it's a very much focus of the Prime Minister is on the NDA and on the alliance and telling, telling the people that, you know, that we are, when we are together, we give stability, we give progress to the country. He mentioned about Ratal Bihari Vajpayee that how he had run a, a coalition government for six years and the Modi government at the center has been, you know, doing, expanding his work. He says that we have uplifted 12 crore people uh, from the poverty line. And he also advised the MPs that, you know, that they should maintain, mention, uh, maintain a restriction uh, in speaking. He says that, you know, uh, people should not uh, speak out of turn. He gave example of Sushma Swaraj. Uh, uh, he said that uh, Sushma was a very big orator, but she spoke only when she was asked to speak. So he also asked MPs to uh, be active on social media. He uh, advised them to uh, post at least 20 to 25 videos on social media every day. So in a in a sense, you know, Prime Minister Modi has been meeting with all these MPs to give them tips uh, for the upcoming Lok Sabha election. Well, we have lots more for you, but first, a short break. for you. We're going to ask a bunch of you some special questions and every correct answer is going to reveal what our surprise is. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Satya Nadella. Jeff Bezos. Bill Gates probably. Nehru Place. Saket. Saket. Mumbai. Technical Guruji. Tech Guruji. Technical Guruji. Technical Guruji. चलिए शुरू करते हैं The NDTV News Network that informs, inspires and illuminates. Watch every side of the story here on NDTV because the only side we are on is yours.
that was fast, right? But tech is evolving even quicker than our abilities to adapt. And that's how I like to roll. Technology to aap sabhi ke paas hai. But what you need is everything else. Mera naam hai Gaurav aur ab mein aagaya hoon NDTV Network pe. Har roz, har hafte. Ab aapke aur paas. Go beyond the now. When there's too much talking but very little being said. Too many voices but hardly any being heard. You turn to a show that puts you front and center. A show that headlines the stories of the people, by the people, for the people. From breaking news to in-depth analysis, Covering the latest developments across politics, business and technology. Bringing you stories that shape our nation and the world. Twenty-three years of the big fight. This show is not just an ordinary debate show, but it is a responsibility in service of our viewers. TV for news you can trust. No sensationalism, no ugly debates, no agenda. We strive to be transparent and unbiased in our reporting so you can get news that you can rely on. In a world filled with noise, we bring you news that you can rely on with accuracy and integrity, because at NDTV, trust is everything. A debate has many facets, perhaps no one right answer. Left, right and center, conversations that get to the core of the debate. We're facing the crisis of the generation, climate change. And it's happening, not in some far off distant land or some millions of years away, it's happening now. And it affects everything we know and love. Information around climate change can often feel too distant, too jargony, too scary, too anxiety filled, too technical or too political. I'm here to change that, the Climate Explainers part of NDTV's six-month-long campaign, building a blueprint for climate action. The climate clock is ticking, but we're just... Welcome back. And a survey by the government body, that's the Archaeological Survey of India, the landmark Gyanwapi Mosque in Varanasi, resumed earlier today in the morning at around 7.30 after the Allahabad Kai Court dismissed a petition by the Mosque Committee which said the order for the survey passed by the Varanasi District Court on July 24th should be stayed. The court, in fact, gave a go-ahead for the uh, survey by the Archaeological Survey of India. Now, the Supreme Court is hearing the petition filed by the Mosque Committee challenging this particular order. Now, according to the order or according to the survey that has been conducted, what is the ambit of the Archaeological Survey of India's survey? Well, is mosque constructed under the pre-existing Hindu structure? That's one of the issues that the, uh, the, the ASI is supposed to look into. The ASI is supposed to determine the age of western wall of the mosque and is supposed to conduct a radar survey just below three domes of the mosque. The ASI is supposed to conduct a radar survey of all cellars, including inside the mosque complex, and will prepare a list of all artifacts found in building, and is to carry out the dating of mosque pillars for age. Now, why is all of this being done? According to the court, why did it say or give a go-ahead to this survey by ASI? The court said this would enable or facilitate 
right judgment would enable justice. And that's why this, uh, the ASI has been told to go ahead with this survey. And my colleague Alok Pandey has more on this. Uh, beyond that, I think uh, the new thing that I can talk about, because you see uh, the survey is in, happening inside the mosque and we really aren't privy to the exact details of what's happening inside. Uh, so uh, I don't think uh, it, it's, it, I mean, we are qualified enough to do that discussion, but we can certainly talk about what the ASI is mandated to do. And uh, I believe that that is something that will be of interest to everyone who's, uh, who's been following or tracking this story. So uh, basically uh, what the brief uh, for the ASI as per the order of the Varanasi District Court, and I'm going to read out uh, point by point, is basically uh, to look at number one, whether the mosque was constructed over a pre-existing Hindu structure, which would be a temple probably. Uh, then the ASI also has to look at the age of the western wall of the mosque. Now, why is the western wall uh, important? Uh, the western wall is important because that is where a lot of these uh, petitioners have said that there are shrines to Hindu deities. Uh, that is what they have said in their earlier uh, petition. So that's why uh, the court has asked them to determine the age of the western wall of the mosque. Uh, they're also saying that the ASI has to conduct a radar survey just below the three domes of the mosque. The ASI will conduct a radar survey of all the cellars inside the mosque complex. Uh, the ASI will prepare a list of all artifacts found in the building and will also carry out a dating of the mosque pillars for age. Uh, so that is, uh, in a sense, the brief of what the ASI is going to do. Now, of course, we know that they have filed an affidavit before the Allahabad High Court basically saying that we are not going to carry out any excavation or digging works. We are going to use radar, photography, imaging to basically get to uh, the goals of our survey. Uh, the mosque committee, as we know, had said in the Labad High Court that if there was any digging, that would harm the structure. But the ASI affidavit says that no, that will not happen. And the Labad High Court's order basis is that affidavit. And it says very clearly that the contours of the survey have to be worked out using that affidavit. Right. And the Supreme Court has adjourned the bail applications to former Deputy Chief Minister Manish Sisodia. The hearing on this till September 4th. Mani Sisodia is facing charges of money laundering and corruption for alleged irregularities in framing and implementation of a now scrapped liquor policy in the national capital. The Aam Aadmi Party leader has been in custody since February of this year and is being investigated by both Central Bureau of Investigation and the Directorate of Enforcement. And there were protests earlier this morning in Kolkata's Behala area after his son died and his father was grievously injured in a road accident. Both of them were hit by a truck as they were on their way to school to drop the child off at the school. Angry protests erupted soon in the area after the accident. Vehicles were damaged in the protest. These are the visuals of where the accident happened, you can see a bus toppled, it seems to be set on fire. You protest around and the security forces as well trying to control the law and order situation. You have tear gas shells uh, which have been thrown at the people uh, to disperse the crowd or the mob that has gathered. Angry protests on the streets of Kolkata as a father and a son met with a terrible accident while trying to drop the son off at the school. Unfortunate incident in Kolkata, but time for a short break. My name is Captain Raghu Raman, and I have been fortunate to have had a career that has spanned three different domains. Whether it was the authoritarian style of leadership in the armed forces or the mostly incentive-driven environment of the corporates or the process-driven style of the government, I found that there were some principles of leadership that are present in all the environments. And these valuable lessons of leadership can be learned from literally thousands of leaders who are all around us. And we will meet them all on Wisdom of Leaders. for you. We're going to ask a bunch of you some special questions and every correct answer is going to reveal what our surprise is. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Satya Nadella? Jeff is a Bill Gates probably. Nehru Place. Saket. Saket. Mumbai? Mm -hmm. 
टेक्निकल गुरु जी टेक गुरु जी टेक्निकल गुरु जी टेक्निकल गुरु जी चलिए शुरू करते हैं The NDTV News Network that informs, inspires, and illuminates. Watch every side of the story here on NDTV because the only side we are on is yours. It was fast, right? But tech is evolving even quicker than our abilities to adapt, and that's how I like to roll. Technology to aap sabhi ke paas hai, but what you need is everything else. Mera naam hai Gaurav, aur ab main aa gaya hu NDTV Network pe. Har roz, har hafte. Ab aapke aur paas. Go beyond the now. When there's too much talking but very little being said, too many voices but hardly any being heard. You turn to a show that puts you front and center. A show that headlines the stories of the people, by the people, for the people. From breaking news to in-depth analysis. Covering the latest developments across politics, business, and technology, bringing you stories that shape our nation and the world. Twenty-three years of the big fight. This show is not just an ordinary debate show, but it is a responsibility in service of our viewers. TV for news you can trust. No sensationalism, no ugly debates, no agenda. We strive to be transparent and unbiased in our reporting, so you can get news that you can rely on. In a world filled with noise, we bring you news that you can rely on. With accuracy and integrity, because at NDTV, trust is everything. A debate has many facets. Perhaps no one right answer. Left, right, and center. Conversations that get to the core of the debate. We're facing the crisis of the generation, climate change. And it's happening, not in some far off distant land or some millions of years away, it's happening now. And it affects everything we know and love. Information around climate change can often feel too distant, too jargony, too scary, too anxiety filled. Welcome back. Now, the new version of the Digital Personal Data Protection Bill has been tabled in the Lok Sabha. It is set to be introduced in the Rajya Sabha uh, just about next week, according to the minister, V. Murli Dharan, who spoke in the House. But what does this really mean? What is this bill? What is the entire controversy around the right of privacy? And what happens in case of uh, data breach? My colleague Priyanshi breaks this down for us. All these devices that you feed your data in makes it open to risks. The government says that to protect this personal data, it has introduced the Digital Personal Data Protection Bill in the Lok Sabha. So let's understand how the bill that has been tabled changes how our data will be used and what are the concerns with the bill. First, this bill will apply to the processing of our digital personal data within and outside India as well under certain conditions. Processing means 
collection, storage, use and sharing of data. Personal data here is defined as any data that identifies you. It also includes financial and ID details as well. A key provision in this bill is of consent. It says that personal data may be processed by anybody only after getting consent and only for a lawful purpose. But this consent will be considered given in some cases, such as performance of any function under a law, employment purposes, specified public interest purposes such as national security, fraud prevention, prosecution of an offence, investigation and provision of a service or benefit by the government. So government companies such as SBI, BSNL also don't need to take consent from you for processing your data. Next. It gives the power to the government to be exempt from any data protection provisions on the grounds of national security, maintenance of public order, among other conditions. So this raises the concern about right to privacy, as some of these grounds can be ambiguous and critics say that personal data could be used for surveillance in the name of national security. Next, who has the responsibility to keep data safe under this bill? data fiduciaries these are individuals or groups that determine the purpose and means of processing any personal data for example google is one such entity so such entities are obligated to keep your data secure and delete data once its purpose has been met according to this bill next the bill gives us all the right to information to know what personal data of ours is being processed for what activities and where all has it been shared so you can ask data fiduciaries for this information it's important at a time when several companies such as facebook have been fined for mishandling and sharing data without consent it also gives you the right to seek correction and erasure of personal data which is no longer necessary for the mentioned purposes but who will ensure that all of this is followed and who will address the grievances that will be the data protection board the center will establish this board which raises a concern about the independent functioning of this board. The board can also impose penalties of up to 500 crore rupees for non-compliance of provisions or for failure to protect data by fiduciaries. Now another important point, the center gets the power to notify countries or territories on outside India to which these data fiduciaries can transfer our data. Lastly, a concern for the Right to Information Act. The Data Protection Bill gives public authorities a blanket exemption from disclosing any personal information by omitting a section. Now this has raised a concern on whether this provision can be used by officials to not share crucial information in the name of privacy. Now with all these highlights, the bill has been tabled after being in the works for five years. And my colleague Himanshu spoke to the minister who has been looking at this entire bill. Let's listen in. Bharat Sarkar ne digital personal data protection bill Lok Sabha mein pesh kar diya hai. Mere saath IT Raji Mantri Rajiv Chand Shekhar hai. Aapne is naye bill per stakeholders ke saath bohat lambi charcha ki hai. Aur iske pehle bhi ek personal data protection bill aap le kar aay thai. Joint committee set up ki gai. Usne karib एक साल से ज़्यादा समय तक डेलीब्रेशन किया रिपोर्ट सबमिट किया फिर आपने बिल वापस लिया अब इस बिल में जो डिजिटल पर्सनल डाटा प्रोटेक्शन बिल है ये पर्सनल डाटा प्रोटेक्शन बिल से कैसे अलग है नहीं ये आपको याद ही होगा जब हमने जो पुराना बिल था ड्राफ्ट बिल था जो जॉइंट कमेटी ऑफ पार्लियामेंट ने उस पर निर्णय लिया था या उन, उन पर उनका डिस्कशन हुआ था और उस कमेटी में मैं भी एक मेम्बर था Uh, उस बिल जो कमेटी से निकला वो बिल बहुत ही कॉम्प्लिकेटेड हो गया था और वो पर्सनल डेटा प्रोटेक्शन से काफ़ी दूर निकलकर काफ़ी सारे अलग अलग चीज़ों में उसका एक तरह से स्कोप बन गया था और हमारा तब जब हमने रिपील किया था जब हमने विड्रॉ किया था उस बिल हमने एक्सप्लेन भी किया था कि हम चाहते हैं कि एक ऐसा बिल हो जहाँ पर हमारे नागरिक के जो फंडामेंटल राइट्स हैं उनका भी प्रोटेक्शन हो और हमारे इनोवेशन इकोनॉमी में जो स्टार्टअप्स काम करते हैं उनको भी तेज़ी उनका जो रफ्तार है कम ना हो और उनको 
ऐसा कोई फ्रेमवर्क ना क्रिएट करके दे जिसमें कंप्लायंस की इंटेंसिटी बढ़े और जो भी सरकार के जो लीगल लॉफुल रिक्वायरमेंट्स होते हैं नेशनल सिक्योरिटी के तहत या लॉ एंड ऑर्डर के तहत या पैंडमिक या इमरजेंसी के तहत उसको भी काफ़ी क्लियरली डिफाइन किया जाए तो ये जो नया बिल आया है और हमने आज पार्लियामेंट में इंट्रोड्यूस किया है बहुत कंसल्टेशन के बाद बहुत लोगों के साथ मिलकर हमने डिज़ाइन किया है बहुत ही स्पष्ट रूप से ये लोगों के डिजिटल राइट्स डिजिटल डेटा प्रोटेक्शन के उनके अधिकार को स्ट्रेंथन करता है दूस और जो मैं अंग्रेजी में कहता हूँ कि सीमिंगली कॉन्ट्रडिक्टी ऑब्जेक्ट हमारे इनोवेशन इकोनॉमी को भी ये एक तरह से रफ्तार या इंकरेज करता है और तीसरे जो सरकार के जो लेजिटमेट रीजन्स टू एक्सेस पर्सनल डेटा हैं इमरजेंसी रिक्वायरमेंट में जैसे मैंने कहा टेररिज्म के इवेंट में वगैरह उसको भी हम डिफाइन करके ले आए हैं तो ये बहुत ही एक सिंपल बिल है बहुत ग्लोबल मॉडर्न बिल है और मुझे लगता है कि ये बिल जल्द से जल्द पारित हो तो अच्छा है क्योंकि इसका जो एक बहुत बड़ा इम्पैक्ट ये होगा कि आज के दिन में जो हमारे नागरिकों की पर्सनल डेटा को लेकर मिसयूज़ एक्सप्लोइटेशन होता हो रहा है या होता हो रहा है या हो रहा है उस पर एक एकदम कड़ा ब्रेक लग जाएगा और उस मिसयूज़ उस एक्सप्लोइटेशन उस एक तरह का जो बिजनेस मॉडल काफ़ी सारे बिग टेक प्लेटफॉर्म ने और बड़े प्लेटफॉर्म ने बिल्ड किए हैं और उस पर एक बहुत बड़ा रोक हो जाएगा तो मैं मुझे ये लगता है कि ऑपोजिशन इस बिल के बारे में चर्चा करें उनके कोई भी सुझाव हों तो सरकार हमेशा ओपन है उनके सुझावों को सुनने के लिए लेकिन मैं थोड़ा आश्चर्यचकित हूँ मैं काफ़ी सरप्राइज हूँ कि आज इंट्रोडक्शन के स्टेज में ही वो अपोज कर रहे हैं और मैं उनको याद दिला दूँ कि वो जो आज पुटस्वामी जजमेंट के बारे में बात कर रहे थे कि यू के सरकार के दौरान उन्होंने प्रिवेसी एज अ फंडामेंटल राइट को कड़े शक्ति से विरोध किया था और मैं एमपी था उन दिनों में और मैं पिटिशनर था उस केस में प्रिवेसी एज अ फंडामेंटल राइट भाजपा के रिप्रेजेंटेटिव्स ने एजिटेट करके हम हमने इस राइट को आ, के लिए फाइट किया है तो हम जानते हैं कि प्रिवेसी एक फंडामेंटल राइट है और उसको रहना चाहिए और ये बिल जो आया है उस राइट को काफ़ी प्रोटेक्ट करता है Well that's all we have for you in this bulletin. Thank you for watching. Duniya mein kuch My name is Captain Raghu Raman and I have been fortunate to have had a career that has spanned three different domains. Whether it was the authoritarian style of leadership in the armed forces or the mostly incentive driven environment of the corporates or the process driven style of the government I found that there were some principles of leadership that are present in all the environments and these valuable lessons of leadership can be learned from literally thousands of leaders who are all around us and we will meet them all on wisdom of leaders for you we're going to ask a bunch of you some special questions and every correct answer is going to reveal what our surprise is uh, i don't know uh satya nadella jeff is a bill gates probably nehru place saket saket mumbai technical guru ji tech guru ji technical guru ji technical guru ji चलिए शुरू करते हैं दी एन डी टीवी न्यूज नेटवर्क दट इन्फॉर्म इंस्पायर एंड इलूमिनेट वॉच एवरी साइड ऑफ द स्टोरी हियर ऑन एन डी टीवी बिकॉज द ओनली साइड हियर ऑन इज योर्स
That was fast, right? But tech is evolving even quicker than our abilities to adapt. And that's how I like to roll. Technology is all you have, but what you need is everything else. My name is Gaurav and now I am coming to NDTV Network. Every day, every day. Now you are all you have. Go beyond the now. When there's too much talking but very little being said, too many voices but hardly any being heard, you turn to a show that puts you front and center. A show that headlines the stories of the people, by the people, for the people. From breaking news to in-depth analysis, Covering the latest developments across politics, business and technology. Bringing you stories that shape our nation and the world. Twenty-three years of the big fight. This show is not just an ordinary debate show, but it is a responsibility in service of our viewers. TV for news you can trust. No sensationalism, no ugly debates, no agenda. We strive to be transparent and unbiased in our reporting so you can get news that you can rely on. In a world filled with noise, we bring you news that you can rely on with accuracy and integrity. Because at NDTV, trust is everything. A debate has many facets, perhaps no one. Hello and welcome, you're watching NDTV. Coming up ahead, we'll get to the latest that's happening in uh, Parliament. Also, Rahul Gandhi's defamation case, uh, his plea against the defamation conviction being heard by the Supreme Court. All those details coming up. Let's take a look at the headlines. 250 shanties bulldozed in Haryana's new where violence had broken out. The shanties are bulldozed amid heavy police presence. The, Supreme, the uh, police in NU says the shanties were built illegally on government land as investigations continue into the NU violence. The Supreme Court is hearing Rahul Gandhi's plea in the defamation case against him. His lawyer argues Rahul Gandhi is not a criminal, has lost two parliament sessions. The lawyer for the complainant says there is a lot of evidence in this case. The Prime Minister hits out at the Opposition Alliance, says it's not India, but Ghamandia's as Prime Minister's fresh attack. Former US President Donald Trump pleads not guilty to four felony counts in the election case. And chess maestro Vishwanath Anandan speaks to NDTV on uh, his teen prodigy Gukesh D's achievements. The Haryana government uh, yesterday evening raised shanties of immigrants who were living in Taru, that's about 20 kilometers away from violence hit Nu for encroaching on government land. The bulldozer move, however, is also being seen as action against alleged rioters as both the district administration and the chief minister earlier alleged immigrants were involved in the clashes. Uh, sources say Haryana chief minister Manohar Lal Khattar ordered the demolition. The clashes had broken out between two groups in Haryana's Muslim-dominated Nu district on the uh, 31st of July during a Vishwa Hindu Parishad's uh, Bridge Mandal Yatra. Six p 
people died in the violence and clashes that had broken out. Uh, now, what is being claimed uh, by the authorities that illegal immigrants from Bangladesh were living, who were already living in Assam, had allegedly set up these shanties. Uh, more than 250 shanties were built in about one acre of land, and they were reportedly living here for the last four years. The bulldozer action took place amid heavy police presence and paramilitary deployment in anticipation of disturbances as the area still uh, remains tense. Officers from several government departments were also at the spot. So this action taking place after the violence in Nu, in which six people died. NDTV's Saurabh Shukla sent us this report. Uh, Nu, uh, SP of Nu, uh, he's saying that uh, this is an action and it was uh, long pending. Uh, they have uh, bulldozed almost 250 shanties in Tawdu of, uh, of Nu district. Uh, Tawdu is near to Sona and uh, there is mixed population of Hindus and of Muslims as well. Uh, according to administration, they have uh, demolished these shanties because uh, uh, the people have illegally occupied uh, government's land. And uh, they were uh, given warnings also, but they have not moved. Uh, but uh, most of them and uh, who live in these shanties are, uh, are from minority community. And uh, 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 I've spoken, I've categorically asked uh, SP that uh, uh, these people were involved in the violence which occurred uh, in Nu on 31st or not. So uh, SP said that uh, they are still investigating their role. They may have some role in uh, the violence which erupted on uh, 31st, but uh, uh, they are still investigating the matter. I've asked them that uh, you have uh, d d uh, bulldozed these shanties. Uh, uh, are these people being uh, uh, named in FIR? Are these people officially accused on that? He said that we are investigating their role. But absolutely, uh, we know that uh, two days back when uh, CM of Haryana, Manohar Lal, held a press conference in Chandigarh, he said that uh, action will be taken and bulldozer action will be taken who are responsible for the violence uh, and uh, against the righteous as well. And then uh, the, their houses will be raised and, uh, uh, and they will be penalized and uh, recovery done from these, rec recovery will be done from these right ears only. So 250 shanties were demolished, bulldozed uh, yesterday evening in Tavdu of uh, Mewad. And remember, uh, Tavdu is the same place where uh, uh, day before yesterday, uh, uh, miscurrents tried to uh, uh, to torch two mosques, but later administration to control and pacify the whole situation there. So as if now things are peaceful in Nu and in Gurugram as well, but uh, uh, definitely uh, we can say some bulldozer action up, uh, after the violence in Nu and in Gurugram. All right, but authorities not saying whether these people were involved in that violence that broke out. We also spoke to the STM of Taru about this action against the shanties. The land was HSBP and here people had been arrested for कोई सर कार्रवाई दौरान कोई किसी किसी प्रकार का विरोध स्थानीय लोगों से झेलना पड़ा या कुछ इस तरह किसी बात नहीं इसमें किसी भी प्रकार का कोई भी विरोध नहीं हुआ और ये सारी कार्रवाई शांतिपूर्वक ढंग से पूरी की गई now, the police is also investigating social media posts uh, that were uh, there before uh, the violence that took place on the 31st of July. Remember, there has been a lot of criticism of the administration that they did not anticipate the violence as lots of threats and uh, counter threats had already been made on social media and there was tension in the area, especially after uh, Kao Vigilante Monu Maneser had claimed that he would be there at the Yatra. Uh, and now uh, those social media posts are uh, under the scan. An FIR also has been registered against another cow vigilante, Bittu Bajrangi. Uh, he's a self-proclaimed cow vigilante known uh, for uh, divisive diatribes and his uh, viral video uh, where he was seen in uh, saffron with a song of, uh, with threatening lyrics playing in the background. There was a video of his that was put out ahead of the Yatra which had a th with, with a song playing with threatening lyrics, so a case now against him. Uh, however, today uh, being Friday, however, Muslims in Gurugram have been urged to offer Friday prayers at home and not come out uh, for uh, for prayers uh, in any public area or to the mosques. Uh, this amid the ongoing communal clashes as mosques were uh, targeted uh, by during these communal clashes. So imams are appealing for Friday prayers at home. Sort of sent us this report. 
Right now we are standing outside Jama Masjid of Sadar, Old Gurugram. Very sensitive mosque. Today is Juma and uh, Friday prayers will be offered. Before that, administration has deployed additional forces outside the mosque of Gurugram, Nuh, Palwal and several other sensitive places. But the shops in and around Jama Masjids are totally closed from last four days. You can see the shut shutters, locks are there and forces are there. The cops are sitting right outside these shops and these shops are not going to be open for a few more days because people who work in these shops or they who own these shops, they have migrated to their hometowns or to their relatives. They think that they are not safe here because there are several shops which were attacked, vandalized, looted, burnt by these right ears on Monday and Tuesday after the violence of uh, uh, of new new so so far according to the administration they are giving full protection to the namazis who will come to offer friday prayers but uh, several uh, groups muslim groups they have urged people not to come to the mosque for to offer prayers they have advised people muslims of gurgram to offer prayer in their respective houses in groups they have also advised that people should not gather in in uh, huge numbers section 144 is imposed curfew is imposed in nu but the big question is that trust which takes years and years to build that trust is not there how administration is going to make sure that these sh shops should get open and then they are fully protected these people, these shopkeepers are still not able to trust local administration, cops and the system. They think that they are not safe here. So it will take some time but normalcy will come back. But people have been advised on Gurugram not to come to the mosque, offer namaz in their respective houses. In Gurugram, with Sanjay Kaushik, Saurabh Shukla for NDTV. My name is Haji Ahmed Khan. Hai. Uh, Khadim Sahib, today will be namaz in this masjid. Mein. नहीं नहीं होगी मैं नमाज आ, इसकी वजह क्या है खादिम साहब वजह तो तुम सब जानते हो क्या हाल हो रहा है किस वजह से नहीं हो रहा है बाकी ये अखबार में भी आ गया है कि नमाज नहीं होगी अच्छा तो आप लोगों से क्या अपील कर रहे हैं जो मुसलमान भाई हैं उनसे क्या अपने घरों में नमाज पढ़ो अच्छा अपने घरों में नमाज पढ़ो मस्जिद में आज इस जुमा में इस शुक्रवार में आने की जरूरत नहीं खादिम साहब प्रशासन ने तो ऐसा नहीं कहा ये लोग आप लोग अपने आप कह रहे हैं ये बात खादिम साहब अखबार में अखबार में लिखा है पंजाब केसरी में है अमर उजाला में है कि भाई जुमा की नमाज अपने घरों में पढ़ो तो ये हालात ऐसे हो गए हैं इस हालात की वजह से किसी को छेड़छाड़ हो जाए इसलिए हमारे बड़ों ने भी और प्रशासन ने भी सब कह दिया नमाज पढ़ो अपने घरों में जुमा में भीड़ मत करो well, moving on to news of Parliament now, and it's day 12 of uh, Parliament of this monsoon session, and the opposition has uh, sources are saying on the Manipur debate. Remember, yesterday there was a truce over the Manipur debate with the uh, opposition offering a middle path and the government accepting it for a discussion on Manipur. However, uh, the opposition uh, sources now say that allotting the last day of the session uh, means the government is not serious on discussing Manipur, want discussion on uh, coming Tuesday. Day. Also, the no confidence motion is not an excuse for the Home Minister, and Home Minister cannot avoid the Manipur debate. And even as the opposition has sought the Prime Minister's statement on Manipur, a Union Minister Piyush Goyal demanded a discussion on atrocities against women in Rajasthan. Well, let's go across to Megha now for more. And Megha, take us through what's happening in Parliament. Uh, Rajya Sabha was adjourned in Lok Sabha. Tell us what's happening. 
Well, at this moment, uh, you know, the Rajya Sabha, of course, has been adjourned for the day. Uh, and, you know, second half is anyways kept for private members' bills, so not much work was expected on, on a Friday. But uh, all the important, uh, uh, you know, activities, which includes now, of course, the Delhi Ordinance Bill to be uh, brought in into the upper house and uh, there to be discussed in uh, voted a place where the government on their own doesn't have the numbers, but they have gotten the friendly parties to announce uh, their support for the government. So on Monday, we will have the Delhi Ordinance Bill in uh, Rajya Sabha. What's important uh, today, uh, you know, Gargi, is uh, the offer that was made yesterday by the from the side of the opposition to the uh, government to the government to the leader of the house in the up in the uh, in Rajya Sabha saying that they wanted a middle path uh, they've offered a middle path to the government and they wanted a discussion on Manipur to go on uninterrupted and they really wanted a discussion before the session gets over so they had uh, you know made an offer to get the discussion going under rule 167 now uh, the government of course got back to their offer by saying all right we we agree for a discussion on the rule that that you are asking for this particular rule does entail voting by the end of the discussion but uh, but the date given uh, from the side of the government was 11th of august which actually is the last day for the monsoon session now the opposition has responded to it so there's a whole lot of back and forth which is happening on on this date uh, that has to be decided for a discussion in manipur the opposition now says that uh, if by giving the last day of the session uh, allotting that day for a discussion on Manipur, a, a, a subject on which every single day this house has been adjourned, just shows the kind of priority you are attaching to Manipur, that the government's not serious about Manipur. Uh, the government, of course, has their own reasoning and logic. They're saying on Monday in Rajya Sabha, you have the Delhi Ordinance Bill, then Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday are three days where the no confidence motion is happening in uh, the discussion debate is happening in the lower house. So perhaps you will not have the key ministers free for a discussion in the upper house. And then, Friday, and then Friday is the only day left, you know, for the monsoon session because it gets over after that. So that's the only day they can allot. But uh, the uh, opposition now says, well, uh, you, uh, you know, the discussion on no confidence motion in the lower house cannot really be an excuse for you to stay away. It, can, it cannot be that you have uh, the Home Minister uh, busy on all three days in the lower house and he cannot come to the upper house to be a part of a debate and a discussion on the issue of Manipur. And of course they are expecting that the Home Minister will make a statement. But uh, will the government agree to it? Because now the opposition says Tuesday is the day we want you to discuss because they do understand that after that, you know, perhaps Mr. Amit Shah is going to get busy and on Thursday you'll have the Prime Minister speak. So uh, they have identified Tuesday as the day. Will the government accept? that that we are um, we don't know at this moment that that no decision has been made on that but the opposition has now sent a message again to the leader of the house in the in Rajya Sabha to say either it's Tuesday or it's no other day because they are not going to agree to Friday so this sort of a deadlock which uh, you know both sides have been attempting to sort of solve and have have a situation where actually they can get going with a with a discussion on Manipur uh, they are unable to arrive at a solution they are unable to now decide for a date because by the time the opposition got around, uh, you know, sort of uh, thawing the stand that they had and, and climb, a bit of a climb down uh, from the position that they were holding right from day one, it came in a little too late. Only one week is now left. So where is the time, as the government says? Well, well we'll have to see, you know, what finally gets decided on this because uh, till this minute, there's no clarity whether the whether there will be a possibility of a discussion in the upper house in Rajya Sabha. But quickly, I want to add here, Gargi, that as far as Lok Sabha is concerned, you will have the Home Minister intervene perhaps on Wednesday next week and in, make an intervention in the no-confidence motion when the discussion is on and he will be speaking on Manipur and uh, on Thursday when the Prime Minister is replying to the motion. In all likelihood, one of the topics that he'll touch upon will be Manipur. So you will have a full-fledged uh, proper statement both from Home Minister and from the Prime Minister in the lower house uh, on the issue of Manipur next week. All right, thanks so much, Omega, for joining us with that. So what seemed to be, you know, solution to the impasse, now again a disagreement between uh, by the opposition and the government. Thanks so much for joining us with the latest there. Uh, meanwhile, uh, today in the Supreme Court is hearing a plea by Congress leader Rahul Gandhi challenging the Gujarat High Court's verdict uh, that declined to put on hold his conviction in the defamation case over his Modi surname remark. Uh, Purnesh Modi, a former minister in the Gujarat government, had filed a criminal defamation case in 2019 
2019 against Rahul Gandhi over his How Come All Thieves Have Modi as the common surname remark made during an election rally for which uh, Rahul Gandhi has been convicted uh, for two years. Now, the Supreme Court today during the argument said an exceptional case needed to stay uh, for stay of conviction. Uh, advocate uh, Abhishek uh, Manu Singhvi, who was uh, appearing for Rahul Gandhi, said no one named by Rahul in his speech has sued. Uh, no other case where a two-year sentence has been given. Remember, two years has meant that uh, Rahul Gandhi has been uh, disqualified uh, as a member of parliament. Uh, uh, Abhishek Manu Singhvi also saying a person being silenced for eight years. Rahul is not a criminal. Thirteen cases cited, but no conviction in even one of them. Also, a last chance for acquittal is what uh, Rahul Gandhi has told the Supreme Court in this hearing. He said this is his last chance for an acquittal. The hearing is still underway. We'll uh, slip into a short break. On the other side, uh, the Prime Minister's uh, latest jibe at the India Alliance. The Am It's undeniable. We're facing the crisis of the generation climate change. And it's happening, not in some far off distant land or some millions of years away. It's happening now. And it affects everything we know and love. Information around climate change can often feel too distant, too jargony, too scary, too anxiety filled, too technical or too political. I'm here to change that. The Climate Explainers part of NDTV's six-month-long campaign, building a blueprint for climate action. The climate clock is ticking, but we're just in time. My name is Captain Raghu Raman, and I have been fortunate to have had a career that has spanned three different domains. Whether it was the authoritarian style of leadership in the armed forces or the mostly incentive-driven environment of the corporates or the process-driven style of the government, I found that there were some principles of leadership that are present in all the environments. And these valuable lessons of leadership can be learned from literally thousands of leaders who are all around us. And we will meet them all on Wisdom of Leaders. for you. We're going to ask a bunch of you some special questions and every correct answer is going to reveal what our surprise is. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Satya Nadella. Jeff Bezos. Bill Gates probably. Nehru Place. Saket. Saket. Mumbai. Technical Guruji. Tech Guruji. Technical Guruji. Technical Guruji. The NDTV News Network that informs, inspires, and illuminates. Watch every side of the story here on NDTV because the only side we're on is yours. It was fast, right? But tech is evolving even quicker than our abilities to adapt. And that's how I like to roll. Technology to aap sabhi ke paas hai. But what you need is everything else. Mera naam hai Gaurav aur ab mein aagaya hoon NDTV Network pe. Har roz, har hafte. Ab aapke aur paas. Go beyond the now. When there's too much talking but very little being said. Too many voices but hardly any being heard. You turn to a show that puts you front and center. A show that headlines the stories of the people, by the people, for the people. From breaking news to in-depth analysis, 
covering the latest developments across politics, business and technology. Bringing you stories that shape our nation and the world. Twenty-three years of the big fight. This show is not just an ordinary debate show, but it is a responsibility in service of our viewers. TV for news you can trust. No sensationalism, no ugly debates, no agenda. We strive to be transparent and unbiased in our reporting so you can get news that you can rely on. In a world filled with noise, we bring you news that you can rely on with accuracy and integrity. Because at NDTV, trust is everything. A debate has many facets. Perhaps no one right answer. Left, right and center. Conversations that get to the core of the debate. Welcome back. Prime Minister Narendra Modi suggested a new strategy to tackle opposition alliance as he met with allies from Bihar on Thursday, not calling them India, but Ghamandia, the Hindi word for arrogant. In recent weeks, Prime Minister Modi has frequently attacked the opposition bloc for calling itself India, accusing the parties, particularly the Congress, of attempting a rebrand to whitewash their past record as the former UPA, United Progressive Alliance. The Prime Minister reportedly said they changed their name from UPA to India to hide how they schemed against the poor. Earlier, we spoke to Akhilesh for more details. So last night, the PM Modi had a meeting with the ND MPs from Bihar. And this is a part of the series of meetings which have been taking place uh, during this uh, monsoon session, where he has been meeting all the ND MPs uh, across the country. And this was the uh, third or uh, fourth meeting uh, with, uh, with the Bihar MPs uh, of, of NDA. And uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi made it very clear that this uh, alliance which has been formed by the opposition parties, it is basically uh, the need was arise because uh, uh, there were allegations, there were tents uh, on the UPA, that's why there were, was a need to change the name to uh, uh, India. But Prime Minister says that instead of calling it India, it should be called Mamandia because it's a combination of the people who are arrogant, who are dynastic, and the PM says they are also tainted with the corruption charges. He also talked about the caste politics in Bihar. He says that we should not do uh, caste politics, but we should take all the sections of the society with us. And he also attacked uh, Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar, said that he, uh, on three occasions the BJP made him CM. On the last occasion, he had less number of seats than the BJP, but still uh, BJP had made him a uh, Chief Minister. And this is the strength of the NDA, because NDA gives stability. He also mentioned about the Akali Dal. As he told uh, the MPs that you know, Akali Dal was part of the NDA, but Akali Dal left NDA because of its own self-interest. And that's why he says that you know, we should be together. He also advised the MPs that when they go among the people to seek votes, they should mention that all the work has been done by the NDA government, not by the BGP or by them themselves. So it's a very much focus of the Prime Minister on the NDA and on the alliance and telling, telling the people that, you know, that we are, when we are together, we give stability, we give progress to the country. He mentioned about Ratal Bihari Vajpayee that how he had run a, a coalition government for six years and the Modi government at the center has been, you know, doing, expanding his work. He says that we have uplifted 12 crore people uh, from the poverty line. And he also advised the MPs that, you know, that they should maintain, mention, uh, maintain a restriction uh, in speaking. He says that, you know, uh, people should not uh, speak out of turn. He gave example of Sushma Swaraj. Uh, uh, he said that uh, Sushma was a very big orator, but she spoke only when she was asked to speak. So he also asked MPs to uh, be active on social media. He uh, advised them to uh, post at least 20 to 25 videos on social media every day. So in a, in a sense, you know, Prime Minister Modi has been meeting with all these MPs to give them tips uh, for the upcoming Lok Sabha election. 
There was more violence in Manipur three months after violence first broke out and which has led to massive displacement and deaths and tension in the state. Now mobs ransacked at least two security posts in Manipur's Bishnupur district and looted a large cache of arms and ammunition. A Manipur police said in a statement they looted arms included automatic rifles and ammunition. An official statement of the police late on Thursday night said that an unruly mob had stormed uh, the police outpost uh, of Manipur Armed Police uh, Second battalion and took away a huge uh, amount of arms and ammunition. The mob comprising of men and women also attempted to snatch arms and ammunition uh, from another police station and the Singha Jamai uh, police station in the same district, but security forces repelled them. Uh, one uh, personnel of the Manipur police has also uh, died uh, after injuries. This is after he was shot by a sniper rifle in the head while a village volunteer was left injured in a fresh gun battle which took place in the Imphal West District. Ratnadeep gets us more details. That's right. In fact, uh, uh, you know, as you rightly pointed out that it has been more than 90 days, more than three months that Manipur has been witnessing the spell of violence since May 3rd. And in fact, yesterday we did report from uh, with visuals from Ground Zero how a mob of 600 people actually from Bishnupur district were walking towards Churachandpur district, uh, where uh, the you know the Kuki Jomi groups had planned to uh, organize a mass burial of uh, their victims who have died in the uh, violence. And uh, there has been a uh, you know the land chosen was contentious, and therefore a mob was running uh, walking towards Churachandpur protesting, and the security forces had to disperse that mob using tear gas shells, firing uh, in air in that incident about 25 people got injuries many of them uh, were minor injuries were well, uh, you know given fast aid and about a dozen are admitted in hospital but uh, all of them are stable but uh, uh, last night police came out with a uh, press statement saying that uh, many of uh, its outposts uh, particularly in Bishnupur district has been looted uh, uh, you know, huge cache of uh, automatic weapon arms uh, and this includes uh, uh, very modern uh, uh, weapons uh, uh, and uh, their uh, live ammunitions have been looted uh, there were similar uh, attempts were also made at the second uh, india uh, uh, second uh, battalion and the uh, 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 second battalion manipur rifles and the seventh battalion manipur rifles these are all par, uh, you know state uh, paramilitary forces and uh, at the hengang police station and sinjimai police station now hengang and sinjimai hengang is on, in the outskirts of the city but sinjimai police station is in, in very much inside uh, you know the imphal uh, uh, city and uh, there were attempts made in these four places also to loot arms and ammunition, but uh, was foiled by the security forces. So therefore, there is a renewed attempt uh, to loot uh, arms and ammunition, which has been a major challenge for the security forces. Remember, right from the beginning of uh, the uh, uh, you know the spell of violence, uh, uh, that uh, Manipur police, police stations, armories, outposts have been looted, thousands of uh, ammunition uh, uh, and hundreds of uh, automatic weapons have been looted. In fact, there was a drive taken out, uh, taken by police uh, and the uh, security forces to recover. Uh, they have been able to recover a lot of uh, arms and ammunition, and also one police personnel have succumbed to his injuries uh, in uh, that he sustained in the gun battle. Two civilians are injured. So there are reports in the last 24 hours of gun battle between miscreants on both sides, as well as mis miscreants militants and suspected militants with the security forces in uh, several areas, fringe areas between the valley and the hill region. Right, so fresh violence and tension there in Manipur. With that, we'll slip into a short break. More coming up on the other side. Stay with us. It's undeniable. We're facing the crisis of the generation, climate change. And it's happening, not in some far off distant land or some millions of years away, it's happening now. And it affects everything we know and love. Information around climate change can often feel too distant, too jargony, too scary, too anxiety filled, too technical or too political. I'm here to change that, the Climate Explainers part of NDTV's six-month-long campaign, building a blueprint for climate action. The climate clock is ticking, but we're just in time. My name is Captain Raghu Raman, and I've been fortunate to have had a career that has spanned three different domains. 
Whether it was the authoritarian style of leadership in the armed forces or the mostly incentive-driven environment of the corporates or the process-driven style of the government, I found that there were some principles of leadership that are present in all the environments. And these valuable lessons of leadership can be learned from literally thousands of leaders who are all around us. And we will meet them all on Wisdom of Leaders. We have a surprise for you. We're going to ask a bunch of you some special questions and every correct answer is going to reveal what our surprise is. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Satya Nadella. Jeff Rizas. Bill Gates probably. Nehru Place. Sake. Sake. Mumbai. Technical Guruji. Tech Guruji. Technical Guruji. Technical Guruji. चलिए शुरू करते हैं The NTTV News Network that informs, inspires and illuminates. Watch every side of the story here on NTTV because the only side we're on is yours. It was fast, right? But tech is evolving even quicker than our abilities to adapt. And that's how I like to roll. Technology to aap sabhi ke paas hai. But what you need is everything else. Mera naam hai Gaurav. Aur ab mein aagaya hu NDTV Network pe. Har roz, har af pe. Ab aapke aur paas. Go beyond the now. When there's too much talking but very little being said. Too many voices but hardly any being heard. You turn to a show that puts you front and center. A show that headlines the stories of the people, by the people, for the people. From breaking news to in-depth analysis, Covering the latest developments across politics, business and technology. Bringing you stories that shape our nation and the world. Twenty-three years of the big fight. This show is not just an ordinary day. Welcome back. A survey by the government body, Archaeological Survey of India at the landmark Gyanwapi Mosque in Varanasi restarted today at 7.30 in the morning. This after the Allahabad High Court dismissed a petition by the mosque committee which said the order for the survey passed by the Varanasi District Court on July 24th should be stayed. Uh, the mosque committee has approached the Supreme Court now in the matter and the plea is likely to be heard in the top court today. Uh, currently, the SI uh, team has taken a break. Uh, in its order, the Allahabad High Court court said a scientific survey is necessary in the interest of justice and will aid a just decision from the trial court. The court also said there is no substance in the argument that the structure would be damaged during the survey. The mosque committee had argued that the structure is over a thousand years old and any digging could destabilize it, leading to its collapse. In other news, an army jawan who went missing on Saturday has been found in Jammu and Kashmir. He was found on Thursday. Police say the rifleman Javed Ahmed will now be interrogated after his medical checkup to try and ascertain the circumstances behind his disappearance. The police had launched a massive search operation to find the 25-year-old. It was suspected that terrorists may have been behind the abduction of the soldier. His family had appealed the captors to release him safely. Well, the uh, soldier has been found safely, but the mystery still remains. And he is being interrogated by the police and other security ag agencies. And police have made it clear that it will be a joint interrogation of the uh, soldier who has been found after five days of he, he was he was reportedly missing. So clearly, he is being treated as a suspect. Uh, so 
uh, from day one, police was big circumspect about what the, about the circumstances which led to the missing of this soldier. Family was suspecting that militants may be behind this, and they had even to put up the video appeal uh, to the captors, uh, appealing them to release him safely. Because in the past, several soldiers who were on, off duty, who had come home on leave, were kidnapped, and some of them were unfortunately killed. And 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 for five days, nobody knew where this man was. So uh, we are waiting for the more information from the police where this man was. This, this soldier was. He was posted in Ladakh. He was on leave at his home in Kulgam. Uh, on July 29, in the evening, he had gone to buy some stuff in from the market in preparation to go back to join back his duties in Ladakh. So he went missing, and where he was all these days, and if he was a, it was a involuntary disappearance or the voluntary, you know, disappearance. Where if if he was in some, how uh, involved in his own disappearance, all these things are being, you know, looked into by the police. But since last night, after his medical checkup was done, so he's being questioned by the police and other security agencies to know all that. What has happened over the last five days during which he was missing? But finally, the soldier has been, you know, found safely. But it's very unclear who had abducted him, if at all he was, you know, kidnapped by some men. News now from Kolkata. And there were protests this morning in Kolkata's Behala area after a, a, a young man and his father were injured in a road accident. A father and son duo were injured. Uh, they were hit by a truck as they were on their way to school. Angry protests then erupted in the area after the accident and vehicles were also damaged in this protest. All right, let's get you uh, the new breaking news coming in on the Rahul Gandhi uh, defamation case. And the Supreme Court has uh, pronounced its order. It's pronouncing, in fact, its order in the defamation case, saying the maximum uh, sentence by the trial court has been given uh, for Rahul Gandhi's remarks are not in good taste, especially for a person in public life. And he should have been more careful, exercised a degree of restraint in making these remarks. Ramifications of disqualification of an MP are wide, especially uh, and electorate which he represents. Uh, the trial uh, judge has awarded the maximum sentence. Uh, well, let's go across to Sunil, in fact, to find out more. Sunil, tell us more about uh, the, what, what is the final order of the court. Well, the final order of the court, uh, Justice Gawai, who uh, really conferred with his uh, other two judges, uh, brother judges, before coming back, taking a short break, after listening to both arguments from uh, Mr. Uh, Jait Malani, as well as uh, uh, Mr. Singhvi, who was arguing for Rahul Gandhi, has decided to stay the sentence. Uh, this is a big relief for Rahul Gandhi. This actually allows him uh, to contest the next election, uh, as well as uh, the uh, till, of course, uh, you know the matter is heard uh, in the uh, sessions uh, court uh, in Surat once again. So it is in that context uh, that Rahul Gandhi has got that much-needed relief. This was his last opportunity, uh, and it's in that context uh, that now Rahul Gandhi uh, is all set. Uh, and, uh, you know, now the pressure will be on the Speaker Gargi for him uh, to participate uh, in the uh, no-confidence motion because uh, uh, that, uh, with his uh, sentence being stayed, it actually means that Rahul Gandhi uh, re gets restored as a member of Parliament. Uh, he is technically eligible uh, to once again represent uh, the people uh, of uh, Wynad. Uh, they, this, of course, after the court uh, admonished uh, and made uh, certain caustic remarks against Rahul Gandhi saying that uh, people in public office needs to exercise restraint, uh, needs to be more cautious, uh, that uh, those remarks were not in good taste. Uh, but uh, the much need, uh, needed relief uh, for the Congress party, for Rahul Gandhi, uh, and as you have seen both legally as well as politically, they have been fighting on this issue. Uh, they have been able uh, to get that much needed relief. Uh, and it, this is a big thumbs up uh, for Rahul Gandhi and the Congress party at this present juncture, because this was a make or break uh, for his political career. If this sentence had not been stayed, uh, Gargi, uh, he would have been ineligible uh, to contest not only the next Lok Sabha elections, but the Lok Sabha elections if it, uh, whenever it was held next in five years' time, because he was technically disqualified 
for eight years. So the sentence has been stayed by the Supreme Court. All right, that is the big breaking news coming in. A huge relief for Rahul Gandhi and for the Congress party. And uh, now Rahul Gandhi's sentence, his uh, conviction has been stayed. He was convicted for two years in this criminal defamation case. So Sunil, bringing us those details, also joining us now is uh, Arvind uh, for more. And Arvind, tell us more about what happened in the Supreme Court. Huge relief for Rahul Gandhi. Uh, he had been disqualified as a member of parliament, had to vacate his home as well. And it also seemed that he perhaps would not have been able to, you know, contest this upcoming uh, general elections, but now uh, the conviction has been stayed. Yeah, Gargi, in a huge relief for uh, Congress leader Rahul Gandhi today, the Supreme Court has stayed the conviction that was awarded by the uh, uh, Surat Court in connection with the criminal defamation case, defamation case after the Surat Court awarded him with the sentence of two years, which is the maximum sentence in a criminal defamation case, which has never been awarded in any criminal defamation case in the history of India. Uh, Rahul Gandhi cited this as a ground to move uh, the higher courts challenging the conviction in this particular case. The Gujarat High Court also, after receiving the judgment for almost over 60 days, refused to stay the conviction, citing uh, the criminal antecedents of Rahul Gandhi and also said a person uh, with, si with, with such a high stature should have a moral turpitude and that reason was also cited, uh, moral turpitude reason was also cited as a ground while rejecting his plea for stay of conviction and that's where Rahul Gandhi moved Supreme Court challenge the High Court order also. So today, uh, Supreme Court, after hearing both the sides, uh, has stayed the conviction that has been awarded by the Surat Court. So the conviction has been stayed on two grounds, Gargi. One, the Supreme Court has taken note of the fact, uh, fact that uh, the Surat Court, the trial court in this particular case, has awarded the maximum sentence in this particular case, which is the two years under criminal defamation case. So, and that's why Supreme Court has observed that without giving any reasoning for uh, for awarding the maximum sentence in this particular case, uh, Supreme Court has noted on that particular fact, and that's why Supreme Court has stayed uh, the conviction uh, in this particular case, saying that if at all if the sentencing was at least a day lesser than two years, then Rahul Gandhi uh, would not have incurred uh, a disqualification under Section 8 of the Representative of People Act, and that has been noted down by the Supreme Court, and that's why Supreme Court has proceeded to uh, stay the uh, conviction, and Supreme Court has also allowed the trial uh, uh, proceedings to go on because Rahul Gandhi has challenged the Surat Court order, uh, the judgment or the conviction uh, before the uh, before the division, uh, uh, Sessions Court, sorry, and that is being adjudicated by the Sessions Court, so Supreme Court has asked the Sessions Court to go ahead with the with the, uh, with the the appeal uh, proceedings, but also Supreme Court has also given some uh, caution for Rahul Gandhi. One, uh, Supreme Court has said this particular utterances from Rahul Gandhi was not in good taste. That has also been uh, noted by Supreme Court, but Supreme Court has proceeded uh, to grant liberty or grant uh, relief in this particular case to Rahul Gandhi, noting the fact that this particular conviction will not just affect him, but will also affect the electorate of Vayanad Parliament constituency, and that's why Supreme Court has decided, proceeded uh, to stay the conviction. That means that Supreme Court has stayed the conviction, which means the disqualification that Rahul Gandhi incurred uh, uh, from the Lok Sabha membership will also be restored. For that, we have to wait for the notification from the Lok Sabha Secretary, but in a huge relief for Rahul Gandhi, the Supreme Court has stayed the conviction in the criminal defamation case. All right. So, Arvind, you're saying that, uh, you know, uh, when the conviction had happened, uh, it had been said that he automatically loses his uh, member of uh, parliament status. So, right now, again, uh, he will uh, be reinstated. But for that, the speaker has to give out the notification. So, we don't know if he's, we're going to see him in parliament anytime uh, soon or it could happen in this monsoon session. Gargi, at the end of the day, though there was a legal argument saying that the moment uh, someone is convicted and sentenced for at least two years, that particular person will incur, uh, that particular legislator will incur a disqualification under Section 8 of the RP Act. There, they say that the disqualification uh, is automatic. If that's the legal argument, so in this particular case also, because Supreme Court has stayed the conviction, that also means automatically uh, his Lok Sabha membership or the disqualification stands uh, revoked and then he his Lok Sabha membership will be restored. But we have a case, uh, a, a case in the in the in the in the in the, uh, in the last few months. I go uh, in the last few months ago, uh, if if I'm right, uh, Mohammed Faisal and NCP MP uh, from Lakshadweep, 
he was also disqualified in a criminal case and then uh, for, for getting convicted and sentenced in a criminal case. But even after the Supreme Court stayed his uh, conviction, uh, the Lok Sabha Secretary did take some time. In fact, almost a month was taken to uh, for the Lok Sabha Secretary to issue a notification restoring his Lok Sabha membership. So uh, that was the case uh, in, in Mohammed Faisal's uh, instance and Mohammed Faisal had to move uh, Supreme Court saying that even after the Supreme Court has con uh, stayed his conviction, the Lok Sabha uh, Secretariat has not had restored his membership. But even before Supreme Court was to take up the matter a day before, uh, so uh, the Lok Sabha Secretariat issued a, a notification restoring his membership. So in this particular case, we are not sure whether the Lok Sabha Secretariat will take uh, such a long time. Uh, we have to wait and watch how the uh, how the things uh, pan out. But here with Supreme Court saying the conviction uh, that there are no grounds for the Lok Sabha Secretariat also to uh, to, uh, to 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 take longer time uh, to to restore his membership because he attracted disqualification automatically because he was he stand he stood convicted and sentenced for uh, at least two years which automatically incurs uh, disqualification under section eight of the RP Act. So in this particular case, with the with the said conviction uh, has been uh, stayed, so automatically his uh, his um, disqualification also. Uh, uh, also, it, it, it has to be revoked. Oh, we have to wait and watch how the Lok Sabha Secretary takes things forward. All right, that will be something, uh, you know, uh, to watch out for. Uh, let's go back to uh, Sunil for more on that. So, Sunil, that will be interesting to see how soon uh, or, or not uh, his uh, Lok Sabha membership is, uh, is returned to him. That's uh, right, uh, Gargi. In fact, now the pressure will be on the speaker who's come under great amount of scrutiny. Uh, the Speaker of the Lok Sabha, Mr. Om Birla, as uh, Arvind was pointing out, uh, took uh, nearly 17 to 20 days, even after the legal uh, uh, luminaries and the law ministry had very given, uh, you know, you know, consistent uh, 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 views that uh, Mr. Mohammed Faisal, the Lakshadweep MP, after his sentence was stayed, that he should be uh, restored as a member of Parliament. But even then, the Speaker took, as I said over 15 days to take a decision, even after there was a very clear law ministry directive to that. And of course, after he approached the Supreme Court, immediately uh, Mr. Om Miller uh, uh, restored his uh, uh, membership as a member of parliament, and he's participating in parliament today. This time around, because there's been precedent, uh, there will be pressure on the speaker to immediately restore and allow the Wynard MP to represent the people uh, for whom he has been elected, as the Supreme Court pointed out. And then, of course, uh, the most important issue uh, is uh, to uh, uh, participate in that no conference motion. Uh, the, you, as you have heard uh, politically, the, the Congress has been saying this has been an attempt uh, to silence Rahul Gandhi. Uh, this uh, decision from the Supreme Court, it has taken uh, a good amount, uh, and, and we are talking from March, so we have April, May, June, July, uh, and in August, he's finally been given uh, that uh, much amounted uh, reprieve. Uh, a relief from the Supreme Court. His stay, has, his uh, conviction has been stayed. Uh, that sentence has been stayed, uh, as and so this allows him uh, technically uh, to continue uh, as a member of Parliament to contest the next elections and to continue in public life, but not after a serious amount of restraint and caution being uh, observed by the S uh, Supreme Court in its order, saying that he's the people in public life uh, need to express, uh, uh, you know express uh, restraint, and also making that his remarks are not in good taste. So it's in that backdrop. Uh, and of course, of course, the uh, Supreme Court, as you know, observes saying that the trial court has not explained after lengthy uh, arguments and big pages of, uh, and 126 pages, as you said, of a judgment, not going into the specifics of why he convicted him for two years, a maximum sentence. And it's in that backdrop now uh, that uh, this is a big political boost for the Congress party, for Rahul Gandhi, uh, and no less than his mother, uh, will be very, very happy because they've had uh, some real tense moments for the Congress party, uh, for the Gandhi family in the last few days, uh, because this would have meant, and in, you know, his political career as a, as, a, as a member of parliament, as a legislator, uh, coming to an end, because effectively uh, he would have been out uh, of, uh, uh, you know, contesting an election uh, for eight years. So this... Uh, uh, relief coming from the Supreme Court is a big plus. 
All right, uh, Sunil, thanks so much for joining us with that. And for more reactions, we're now joined by Ashwini Dubey, advocate of the Supreme Court. And uh, Ashwini Dubey, your reaction to this, Rahul Gandhi had to come, oh, you know, it, it, it took the Supreme Court to finally uh, put a stay on Rahul Gandhi's conviction. The Supreme Court also remarking about how a two-year uh, term had been given to him, convicted for two years, saying even if it had been a day less, he would not have lost his uh, member of uh, a member of parliament ship. Yes, yes, uh, very rightly you have pointed out the Supreme Court says that the sentence for an offence punishable under Section 499 of IPC is maximum of two years of sentence and fine. That is why the Honorable Supreme Court says that the trial court has passed an order awarded the maximum sentence of two years. So accept the admonition to the petitioner by the that no other reason has been granted by the trial court imposing the maximum. So court says that since the punishment is of two years, and that is why the provisions of Section 8, Subsection 3 of the Representation of People at Gargi, you remember, where the person who has been guilty for more than two years or two, two years punishment or two years, he ceased to become the member of the House or his so disqualified, he becomes disqualified. And that is the Supreme right. Court said Actually, this is not the... Right, at the time of conviction also, many, you know, legal experts had remarked about this, how uh, for uh, this defamation case, for something that was said you're, during an election rally, when we know politicians say many, you know, all kinds of things, something that was said during an election rally, for him to be, uh, you know, cr a criminal conviction of two years, that had seemed excessive, and this had been remarked by many legal experts at the time uh, that the trial court had given him this conviction. Uh, that that remark, see, but ultimately the legal test has to be justified by virtue of an order passed by the judge itself. Because the, the criminal procedure code and Indian penal code, criminal jurisprudence says that it is the court who has to decide in any offence whether that offence is punishable with the maximum punishment or not. And that is why the discretion is of the court. But yes, very rightly you have said that in a case where maximum punishment is two years, so granting two years punishment and that too in an election rally, that is something which should not have right. been done. But yes, the court has also observed today that this was the, the statement was not in good taste. That was well, th that, that may be, and the yeah, Supreme Court also saying not in good taste. Thank you so much for joining us. We're just going to listen into what the lawyer in the case is saying. अब राहुल गांधी की संसद सदस्यता बहाल हो बहाल हो बहाल हो गई है बहाल हो गई है आर्डर हो गया सुप्रीम आर्डर कर दिया स्टेक दे दिया है तो अब जो अपचारिक आदेश आता है लोकसभा की ओर से तो वो आदेश कब तक आ जाना चाहिए क्योंकि इस पर सुप्रीम कोर्ट का पहले का आदेश लक्षदीप के जो सांसद थे फैजल साहब � मानसून सत्र में आप राहुल गांधी जाएंगे संसद में बिल्कुल बिल्कुल जाएंगे आपको देखे जाएंगे इसी सत्र में देखे जाएंगे जब सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने स्टे दे दिया तो राहुल गांधी बिल्कुल देखे जाएंगे तनवीर भाई आइए ना मैं आपसे बात करना चाहूंगा तनवीर भाई मेरे साथ बातचीत करने के लिए राहुल गांधी all right, so the lawyer there reacting that yes, Rahul Gandhi will be reinstated, but how soon? And are we going to see him, uh, you know, back in the parliament in this monsoon session? We'll have to uh, wait and see. But that, that the big breaking news uh, we're bringing you right now: the Supreme Court uh, giving huge relief. Uh, his de the defamation conviction of Rahul Gandhi has been put on hold by the Supreme Court. Uh, we're also joined now by Piyush Singh, advocate of, in, of the Supreme Court. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Your reaction uh, to this and to the observations made by the Supreme Court, the fact that he was given this two-year conviction by the trial court. See, I would say this is a very welcome move with respect to two uh, aspects. One is usually you will not see many convictions in our country happening on defamation, especially when we would emphasize on the right to free speech. And in case there is a conviction for a defamation case, especially for any matter where a conviction is up to two years, it's 99% cases you will see the session court has given a stay on the conviction. Here was a very rare case, I would say, for whatever reasons where the session court refused the stay on conviction and then even the Gujarat High Court uh, refused the stay. So I think this is a very uh, welcome move and also the observations came. Uh, should technically also be very important observations for the high courts of the country or for the district of the, or of the country to exercise their uh, discretion in matters where the punishment is only two years or three years. 
All right, thank you so much for joining us uh, with that. Well, that's the big breaking news we're bringing you right now. This huge relief for Rahul Gandhi, for the Congress uh, party as well, with the Supreme Court staying Rahul Gandhi's conviction, his criminal uh, conviction and two-year sentence that he had been given uh, by a trial court in the defamation case. Uh, Rahul, uh, though the Supreme Court did say that Rahul Gandhi should have been careful with his words. This is uh, for his using uh, the, that term where he said that uh, why are all criminals uh, having the same surname. Uh, the Supreme Court saying that he should have been more careful with his words. However, they have uh, stayed uh, his, uh, his two-year conviction uh, in this criminal defamation case. We'll sip into a short break and get you more reactions on the other side. Stay with us. TV for news you can trust. No sensationalism, no ugly debates, no agenda. We strive to be transparent and unbiased in our reporting so you can get news that you can rely on. In a world filled with noise, we bring you news that you can rely on with accuracy and integrity. Because at NDTV, trust is everything. A debate has many facets. Perhaps no one right answer. Left, right and center. Conversations that get to the core of the debate. Undeniable, we're facing the crisis of the generation, climate change, and it's happening, not in some far off distant land or some millions of years away, it's happening now. And it affects everything we know and love. Information around climate change can often feel too distant, too jargony, too scary, too anxiety filled, too technical or too political. I'm here to change that. The Climate Explainers, part of NDTV's six-month-long campaign, building a blueprint for climate action. The climate clock is ticking, but we're just in time. My name is Captain Raghu Raman, and I've been fortunate to have had a career that has spanned three different domains. Whether it was the authoritarian style of leadership in the armed forces or the mostly incentive-driven environment of the corporates or the process-driven style of the government, I found that there were some principles of leadership that are present in all the environments. And these valuable lessons of leadership can be learned from literally thousands of leaders who are all around us. And we will meet them all on Wisdom of Leaders. for you. We're going to ask a bunch of you some special questions and every correct answer is going to reveal what our surprise is. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Satya Nadella. Jeff Bezos. Bill Gates probably. Nehru Place. Sake. Sake. Mumbai. Technical Guruji. Tech Guruji. Technical Guruji. Technical Guruji. The NDTV News Network that informs, inspires, and illuminates. Watch every side of the story here on NDTV because the only side we're on is yours. It was fast, right? But tech is evolving even quicker than our abilities to adapt. And that's how I like to roll. Technology to aap sabhi ke paas hai. But what you need is everything else. Mera naam hai Gaurav. Aur ab mein aagaya hoon NDTV Network pe. Har roz, har hafte. Ab aapke aur paas. Go 
go beyond the now. When there's too much talking with very little being said, too many voices with hardly any being heard, you turn to a show that puts you front and center. A show that headlines the stories of the people, by the people, for the people. Breaking news to in-depth analysis. Covering the latest developments across politics, business and technology. Bringing you stories that shape our nation and the world. Twenty-three years of the big fight. This show is not just an ordinary debate show, but it is a responsibility in service. Good afternoon, I'm Sneha Koshi and the big breaking news that we are following, this seems to be a big, big relief for Rahul Gandhi who was disqualified as a MP from Wynad after he was convicted in a 2019 defamation case. Now, the Supreme Court has stayed that conviction. It's coming as a huge relief for Rahul Gandhi for several reasons. We'll tell you what really the court said, but we must remind our viewers that the monsoon session of the parliament is underway, which would mean that Rahul Gandhi is going to get back um, his position as a member of the parliament. He's a member of parliament from the Lok Sabha. But would this mean that he will be able to attend the monsoon session this time itself. That is something that will have to be seen. How is all of this going to unfold? But the Supreme Court, in a big relief for Rahul Gandhi and the Congress, has gone ahead and stayed the conviction that Rahul Gandhi had received from, the, from a trial court earlier in the 2019 defamation case. Now, what has the court said? The stay order comes, of course, with a huge word of caution as well. Supreme Court has said that Rahul Gandhi should have been more careful with his words and that the comments made by Rahul Gandhi was in bad taste. These something that the Supreme Court has said. However, the Supreme Court said that there's been no reason that has been specified by the trial court on why should why was Rahul Gandhi given the maximum sentence possible under uh, this particular allegation or accusation that was made against him in the 2019 Modi surname defamation case. Now, the Supreme Court also made some important observation that it's not only the right of Rahul Gandhi to continue in public life, but also the right of his constituency from where he was elected and eventually disqualified after the conviction in the Modi surname case. I'm being joined by my colleague Sunil Prabhu. Sunil, this is a huge relief that is coming for Rahul Gandhi and the Congress at this point. There's a word of caution by the Supreme Court in this particular case, but how is Congress reacting to this particular thing at this point? There are tweets out by top Congress leaders as expected in this. Well, this is a big, huge relief. This was a make or break uh, position for the Congress party uh, and for Rahul Gandhi personally. If uh, this uh, sentence had not been stayed, uh, it would have been an end uh, to his political career unless uh, he got an acquittal uh, from the Surat court, which you are well aware would have taken a long time. So uh, the, the fact of the matter is that uh, Rahul Gandhi, uh, and this was his last door, this was his last opportunity. Uh, and, uh, you know, in passing, I must tell our viewers, uh, there was some uh, caustic remarks and, you know, uh, very subtly put by Justice Gawai about the role uh, of, uh, you know, Gujarat, uh, 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 the trial court as well as the high court. Uh, and as you are well aware, it took 66 days uh, for the uh, Gujarat high court to take a decision on this matter. Having said that, it's in that backdrop that uh, Rahul Gandhi uh, has got that much required relief. He can now uh, be restored as a member of parliament and... and uh, uh, he, uh, as I've explained earlier, uh, there's a clear case of the Lakshadweep member of parliament who took and made a petition to the, uh, uh, to the speaker who took his own sweet time to take a decision and, uh, and, uh, and allow him to restore. It's only when he went 
uh, to the Supreme Court that immediately uh, the, uh, the uh, 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 no less than the uh, speaker immediately restored the member of parliament, the Lakshadweep member of parliament uh, on the uh, uh, as an MP. Uh, those are facts of the case. That is, these are facts that you can see. In this case, there will be, and now that a precedent has been created, there has been clear uh, rules, uh, uh, guidelines that have been followed. Uh, Rahul Gandhi, uh, in my opinion, uh, should be able to participate in that no confidence motion next week uh, if the speaker uh, does uh, go ahead and uh, restore his membership so that he can uh, not only represent the people of Wynad, uh, but also the Congress party for which he's an important leader uh, to speak on an important issue of Manipur as well as a host of other issues of acts of emission and commission that they have uh, put against the government uh, in, in terms of the uh, no confidence against the Council of Ministers. Uh, so that, of course, is going to be the next battle. Uh, but for the Congress party, uh, for the Gandhi family, right. uh, this is a big relief. Uh, this is a big, big uh, plus. As I said, uh, it was a make or break for them. Uh, and uh, now that, uh, uh, you know, once his, uh, uh, he becomes a, a member of parliament, hopefully he will get his house back, which he had vacated. He was right. even contemplating of finding a place. So uh, this is definitely a huge success story. And as expected, uh, from K.C. Venugopal to Randeep to uh, all the leader of opposition to Mr. Karge, right. uh, all are very, very excited and very, very happy and elated uh, with this uh, staying of the sentence. Right. In fact, uh, Sunil, we are being joined right now by L. Hanumantaya. He's the MP. He's a Congress MP. Um, Mr. Hanumantaya, thank you for talking to NDTV. Um, an important and a big relief for Rahul Gandhi and the Congress. But what does this really mean uh, for the Congress, for Rahul Gandhi, with respect to the ongoing monsoon session in the parliament? Will Rahul Gandhi be able to attend the session? The Secretariat of the Parliament must immediately take the uh, judgment copy and reinstate Rahulji as the Member of Parliament inside the House. So that Rahul Gandhi will not be denied in participation, even for an hour, it should not be denied. And I hope he will participate in the no-confidence motion as well as the NCD bill which is passed today, of course. But he will participate in the no-confidence motion and he should participate in the no-confidence motion and he has to express his opinion. It is a big victory not only for Congress, for the justice which has been hastily taken by the lower courts. I am sorry to say this, but I am 100% sure we, the Congress party, was 100% sure that we will get justice in the Supreme Court. I am happy that the Supreme Court has given justice, restored the membership of Rahulji in the parliament. And now my demand is, I urge upon the parliament secretariat and the speaker of the parliament to immediately restore Rahulji as the member of parliament without any delay uh, to any extent, so that he can participate every moment of the parliament deliberation. Right. In fact, uh, uh, Mr. Hanumantaya, one of the procedural uh, uh, details that Rahul Gandhi would have to follow after this verdict to, for, his, uh, for him being reinstated as an MP is to write to the uh, Parliament Secretariat, giving the citing officially the reason by the Supreme Court. Would we have an idea when is the Rahul Gandhi expected to uh, write to the Secretariat? Well, right, as well as the advocates will forward the judgment copy of the Supreme Court to the Parliament Secretariat immediately. Right. There, is, there cannot be any delay in that. But the Secretariat has to take a decision as they have done it in his uh, uh, membership removal. The urgent decision taken by the Secretariat without any delay. This also should be taken in the same spirit that they should install immediately Rahul Ji's membership. Right. Uh, Mr. Hanumantaya, if I could just break down the Supreme Court's verdict that has come out. There are two important aspects to this and would like to see what Congress's reaction to this is. Rahul Gandhi had submitted a rejoinder before the top court saying that he is not going to apologize. If he had to apologize, he would have apologized before. And that he's being arm-twisted into apologizing. He's also told the court that um, this is his last chance of getting um, 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 uh, a bail or attending the parliament as such before the session finishes. Now... The question being, he's not apologized, but the 
top court did make some very cautious statements, cautioning Rahul Gandhi, also saying that the statements or the words used by Rahul Gandhi was not in good taste. And the, and the top court also says that this should have been avoided, should not have been said. He should have been more careful to say, to use the words precisely. Would Congress also maintain the same line? No, what Rahul Gandhi ji has said in his public meeting, it is spontaneous and the spur of the moment. It was not intentional that to defame anybody or derogate any community in that manner. That is what Rahul Gandhi ji has said long back. But it was taken up by the lower courts very seriously and the parliament has removed the membership. That now, it what is to be, I mean, the freedom of expression which is given to a member of this country, the citizen of this country, will be followed automatically without any prejudice. So that is what the Supreme Court has also said in this judgment. It should now be avoided, but it is over. But further, I think Rahul J will be uh, definitely go by the rules of the land, the judgment of the land. Right. Um, you know, one of uh, the other aspect of the Supreme Court's verdict, of course, is about the fact that the trial court did not specify the reason for this maximum sentence in this uh, in this conviction given out to Rahul Gandhi. And secondly, Supreme Court also maintained about how it's not just the right of Rahul Gandhi, but also his constituency or the elect or those who have elected him to power. So it's not really, as BJP would argue, not really a clean shit to Rahul Gandhi, but so many other reasons, including him being an elected MP from a particular constituency that is that is now resulting in him in his conviction being stayed so would you see this as a clean shit for Rahul Gandhi it is not only to the Rahul Gandhi it is to any MP across the country all MPs has to go by this you cannot just say it is only Rahul Gandhi it is as the Supreme Court observes it is the right of all the people who have elected him from why not constituency and it can be for any MP from any constituency across the country that it is the right of the people who have elected a member that should not be taken very lightly by the lower court and by the secretariat of the parliament also to disqualify them without considering the gravity of the case and the gravity of the situation that should not be done that is what the supreme court has warned all the machinery, not only to the Rahul Gandhi, it is the warning to the machinery of the country how it should run. Right. Mr. Hanumate, but is there a sense somewhere within the party or for Rahul Gandhi as well and for other politicians as well that one has to be cautious with the words that have been used or are used as public leaders and elected representatives in various rallies at various platforms, something that the Supreme Court has also reinstated. But um, we're wondering what really is the Congress stand on this? But I must uh, tell, it, tell in this occasion, Rahulji's case has been taken up by the BJP government <coughs> on Vendetta. It is not a... It is not a very special remark made by him. Lot of leaders across the country have made these kind of comments everywhere. But all those people have not been uh, taken on the same line. But how can you treat this particular case specially and make the capital punishment to a small... If at all you consider it is a mistake, for a small mistake, how can you make a capital punishment? And that is the reason the Supreme Court has taken this into consideration and given justice to Rahul Ji. And this is not only justice to Rahul Ji, it is for all the people's representatives across the country that the punishment should not be improportionate to the mistakes what, if at all it has happened. That is that caution also given by the Supreme Court according to me. Right. Mr. Hanumanthi, are you saying this was an act of vendetta against Rahul Gandhi? But with the monsoon session that is currently underway, uh, procedurally, he should be able to attend the parliament session, uh, which is underway currently. But uh, how is the Congress looking at this? We want Rahul Gandhi to attend the session immediately, without any delay of an hour or a minute. 
But has but has Rahul Gandhi or his team or the party given that request to Secretariat if you want it to be immediately implemented? No, no. Speaker with the copy of the judgment. Right, and that was KC Venugopal uh, on his remarks after Rahul Gandhi's conviction has been stayed. So, Congress here making certain uh, points, one being it's a case of vendetta against Rahul Gandhi. He has been targeted in this particular case. Also talking about how elected representatives must not be taken lightly. Action against them must not be as part of vendetta. And also Congress expecting that uh, uh, he will be able to attend this parliament session. I'm being joined right now by uh, K.V. Thomas. He's a senior Congress leader. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Thomas. Um, Mr. Thomas, my first question to you would be, how has there been any written application by Rahul Gandhi or his team for the Lok Sabha Secretariat to reinstate him as the Member of Parliament yet? Or when is it expected? How soon or how late? When you will see, then necessary steps will be taken. But one thing is, this shows the strength of Indian democracy. How judiciary is independent. How Right. I'm very sorry, Mr. Thomas. We'll have to interrupt you. Sachin Pilot is speaking, uh, is joining us right now. Is joining us right now. Mr. Sachin Pilot, thank you for talking to NDTV. Uh, how would you react to what the Supreme Court has said? It's not a clear chit, but it's a stay on his conviction. Some important points being raised by the Supreme Court as well. Uh, first of all, let me welcome the Honorable Supreme Court uh, verdict today. It has, I think... Uh, restored the faith that people have in our judiciary. And the fact that uh, we were not able to get justice from the lower courts and high courts, the court has today stood tall. And uh, on merit alone, given a verdict of staying the high court's order, now what rest, what remains is the Honorable Speaker should reinstate the membership of Mr. Gandhi to the House as quickly as he had disqualified him from the membership of the House. So that's important. And I think um, the court has also very clearly said that you can't, uh, give someone maximum punishment for a criminal defamation case um, without proving why it merits such a uh, conviction. So it's a welcome step, uh, not just the Congress party, but all those who believe that the courts have an important role to play in our democratic system today are quite happy and pleased. I welcome the uh, verdict of the Honorable Supreme Court. Right. Mr. Pilot, there are two aspects to what the Supreme Court has said. On one hand, it, uh, it's made it very clear that the trial court has not given any reason for a maximum sentence in this conviction for Rahul Gandhi. Mm -hmm. Secondly, the Supreme Court has also mentioned uh, it's not about just the right of Rahul Gandhi, but also the constituency that, is rep that he represents, the electorate. But also the other aspect, Mr. Pilot, where he says Rahul Gandhi should have been more cautious, his remarks were not in good taste. How would Congress look at this? There are two ways. One is that every member of parliament is an elected representative of more than two million people. When he or she speaks something, he or she is giving the voice of the people that he or she represents. So the court is absolutely right that you can't snatch away the rights of a person to put forth his views politically. Second point that the court has made, I think, is something that's a statement which is very generic also because... Every politician must follow a certain decency of discourse, and that is applicable to both the opposition and the and the government. Because you must use words and language that uh, can set an example for the next generation. Why must we use language that uh, is not appreciated and that is not that is unparliamentary? So I think what what is mentioned is that we all have to you know adhere to certain standards in in, in our speeches and our rhetoric and our public discourse. So that's a it's a general advice which I think we all welcome with full humility. But the more important part is that the court has said that there was no reason to disqualify and give a maximum prison in prison uh, conviction on a criminal defamation case. It's never happened in more than 130 years of its uh, existence of the law. So that show, clearly shows the mirror to all those who felt that through the back door they can somehow uh, Congress party. 
Right. Uh, Mr. Pa uh, Pilot, how do you see this now go forward? He should be able to attend the parliament session procedurally, but uh, he, there are certain procedures to be followed. He has to give, the, give the written uh, application before the Lok Sabha Secretariat. Do we know by when are these procedures likely to be followed from the part of Rahul Gandhi or his team or the Congress? I'm not in a position to answer that question, but I think it's uh, now uh, all the steps will follow once the verdict is out, once the written judgment is put uh, in place in front of the Speaker. But I just hope that the Parliament of India, the Lok Sabha and the Speaker, will act uh, just as quickly uh, in reinstating his membership as they acted in disqualifying him in, in, in about 24 hours' time. So that's, uh, that's something that we are keenly watching, and I hope. And I think also the Speaker is bound by certain rules and regulations. It's not about his wins and fancies. So he will have to adhere to what the Supreme Court has said. And more importantly, we have a no-conference motion in Parliament. Uh, I'm sure Mr. Gandhi will be able to be in Parliament when that happens. And we have elections coming up soon. So this is not just a mere staying of a conviction. This is really uh, giving strength to all those people who believe in true democratic values that we, uh, we hold for dear in India. Mr. Pilot, um, uh, Congress has been alleging that this is vendetta. This is pure vendetta politics by the BJP. Uh, but is there also a larger message in whatever has happened, particularly in what the Supreme Court has said, to politicians across board, beyond just political vendetta? Or is Congress looking at this as a case of pure target? Look, I am not a legal expert. From what I understand, a defamation uh, case can't be filed by a, uh, a Greek community. It has to be individual-based. So I didn't see uh, Mr. Nira Modi or some other gentleman saying that, you know, we have been aggrieved. It was some other gentleman belonging to a political party, putting a, you know, defamation case, etc. So it's all quite murky. I don't want to go into the details of the lower court uh, proceedings, etc. But generally speaking, um, it has never happened before in independent India that a defamation case is taken to a criminal defamation case and then a maximum imprisonment and conviction and eviction from the House and the, and the residence of the Member of Parliament. So it, I think it shows that there is, uh, you know, there is resilience in our judicial process. And uh, we all believe, I certainly believe, that in public discourse, we must have a decorum and decency of debate that, uh, that is uh, you know, incumbent upon all of us to follow, not just one party or one, one individual. Right. Um, thank you very much, uh, Sachin Pilot, for your patience and for joining us at this. An important decision for the Congress and the Rahul Gandhi. Procedurally, he should be able to attend the Parliament um, session, which is underway currently. Important aspects of the Supreme Court's verdict. One, uh, in terms of the stay order, the big relief for Rahul Gandhi and the Congress and the impact that it will have in the parliament proceedings that are underway right now, there's been 12 days of daily log jams that have been happening within the parliament. So all of that being a huge challenge, but this is the time when uh, Rahul Gandhi is likely to enter the parliament. When will that happen is the big question and procedurally will, that, will all the details be followed. But let's listen to what the complainant in this particular case, Purnesh Modi, has had to say. May I just suggest one thing? Can we do it in a bit decent way? Yes, yes. Thoda aage chaliye. Thoda aage chaliye. One by one, every we will give bite to everyone. Please, one by one. Order hai. Us par kya 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 कांग्रेस के तत्कालीन अध्यक्ष श्रीमान राहुल गांधी ने कर्नाटक से बेंगलोर से 100 किलोमीटर दूर कोलार में एक जनसभा में ओबीसी समाज का बहुत बड़ा घटक मोदी नामदारी मोदी सरनेमदारी मोदी कास्ट मोदी समाज मोदी कम्युनिटी इन सभी का अपमान किया था उस समय हमने सूरत में ट्रायल कोर्ट में 2013 में ही हमने याचिका फाइल की थी बाद में 2023 में ट्रायल कोर्ट में सभी कानूनी प्रक्रिया के बाद श्रीमान राहुल गांधी को दो साल की सजा दी गई बाद में श्रीमान श्री राहुल गांधी ने उस सजा के सामने सूरत के सेशन कोर्ट में कन्वेक्शन स्टे के लिए 
याचिका दी गई थी वहां भी उनकी कन्विक्शन स्टे नहीं हुआ जो फैसला था हमारे पक्ष में आया बाद में कन्वेक्शन स्टे के लिए माननीय गुजरात की बड़ी अलाद अदालत हाईकोर्ट में भी कन्वेक्शन स्टे के लिए उन्होंने याचिका फाइल की थी गुजरात हाईकोर्ट ने भी कन्वेक्शन स्टे नहीं किया फैसला हमारी और आया बाद में नामदार सुप्रीम कोर्ट में कन्वेक्शन स्टे के लिए श्रीमान गाहुल ने याचिका फाइल की थी आज सुप्रीम कोर्ट में श्रीमान राहुल गांधी का कन्वेक्शन स्टे किया गया है इस कानूनी प्रक्रिया में हम इस सम्मानीय फैसले का स्वागत करते हैं और आने वाले दिन में जब अब सेशंस कोर्ट में ये मुकदमा हम चलने वाला है वह हमारी ओर से समाज की ओर से कानूनी जंग जो है वो लड़ी जाएगी आज का जो भी कानूनी प्रक्रिया में जो भी सब जुडिस बैटर था उस पर जो बात हुई है इसके बारे में हमारा एडवोकेट Right, and that was a complainant in uh, the Modi surname defamation case. Speaking, Rahul Gandhi has got a big relief. Several senior Congress leaders have been tweeting and responding. Uh, they're saying that they are expecting Rahul Gandhi to attend the Parliament with immediate effect. And uh, Priyanka Gandhi has tweeted. She has also welcomed. the top court's verdict let's just see what priyanka has priyanka gandhi vadra has said three things cannot be long hidden the sun the moon and the truth quoting gautam buddha that's the tweet by priyanka gandhi there was another tweet by congress themselves on satyamev jayante um saying truth shall prevail congress leaders have said that uh, rahul gandhi was targeted for political vendetta and supreme court's verdict is a big welcome in this particular case the parliament session is uh, going on the monsoon session is going on and it, it it remains to be seen when would rahul gandhi return to parliament as an mp for now let's just quickly take a break on the other side we'll keep bringing you all the updates Yeah. ND TV for news you can trust. No sensationalism, no ugly debates, no agenda. We strive to be transparent and unbiased in our reporting so you can get news that you can rely on. In a world filled with noise, we bring you news that you can rely on. with accuracy and integrity because at NDTV trust is everything a debate has many facets perhaps no one right answer left right and center conversations that get to the core of the debate facing the crisis of the generation climate change and it's happening not in some far off distant land or some millions of years away it's happening now and it affects everything we know and love information around climate change can often feel too distant too jargony too scary too anxiety filled too technical or too political i'm here to change that the climate explainers part of ndtv's 6 month long campaign building a blueprint for climate action the climate clock is ticking but we're just in time 
My name is Captain Raghu Raman, and I have been fortunate to have had a career that has spanned three different domains. Whether it was the authoritarian style of leadership in the armed forces or the mostly incentive-driven environment of the corporates or the process-driven style of the government, I found that there were some principles of leadership that are present in all the environments. And these valuable lessons of leadership can be learned from literally thousands of leaders who are all around us. And we will meet them all. We have a surprise for you. We're going to ask a bunch of you some special questions and every correct answer is going to reveal what our surprise is. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Satya Nadella. Jeff Rizas. Bill Gates probably. Nehru Place. Saket. Saket. Mumbai. Technical Guruji. Tech Guruji. Technical Guruji. Technical Guruji. चलिए शुरू करते हैं एन डी टीवी न्यूज नेटवर्क दट इंफॉर्म इंस्पायर एंड इलूमिनेट्स वॉच एवरी साइड ऑफ द स्टोरी हियर ऑन एन डी टीवी बिकॉज द ओनली साइड हियर ऑन इज योर्स It was fast, right? But tech is evolving even quicker than our abilities to adapt, and that's how I like to roll. Technology तो आप सभी के पास है, but what you need is everything else. मेरा नाम है गौरव और अब मैं आ गया हूँ NDTV Network पे हर रोज हर हफ्ते अब आपके और पास. Go beyond the now. When there's too much talking but very little being said, too many voices but hardly any being heard. You turn to a show that puts you front and center. A show that headlines the stories of the people, by the people, for the people. From breaking news to in-depth analysis, Covering the latest developments across politics, business, and technology, bringing you stories that shape our nation and the world. Twenty-three years of the big fight. This show is not just an ordinary debate show, but it is a responsibility in service of our viewers. TV for news you can trust. No sensationalism, no ugly debates, no agenda. We strive to be transparent and unbiased in our reporting so you can get news that you can rely on. In a world filled with noise, we bring you news that you can rely on. With accuracy and integrity, because at NDTV, trust is everything. A debate has many facets. Perhaps no one right answer. Left, right, and center. Conversations that get to the core of the debate. Welcome back. The big breaking is a big relief for Rahul Gandhi and the Congress. The Supreme Court has stayed the conviction of Rahul Gandhi in the Modi surname defamation case of 2019. What does this mean? Rahul Gandhi was disqualified as an MP, as a Lok Sabha MP after after this conviction he is now set to come back to the parliament let's listen to what congress's adhiranjan uh, choudhury is reacting usi mein rahul gandhi ji khud sirkat kare aur 
हिंदुस्तान की आम लोग ये सुने कि कैसे किस तरीके से राहुल गांधी जी के खिलाफ आज सत्तारूढ़ पार्टी ने निष्ठुर तरीके से साजिश रच रही है सारे दुनिया को यह उजागर होना चाहिए इसलिए सदन के अंदर बात रखे स्पीकर साहब से मिली अब चिट्ठी भी लिखूंगा और बीच में आके आप लोगों को सामने भी ये अवगत कराना चाहते हैं आप सबको कि राहुल गांधी जी की सदस्यता पद दोबारा उनको वापस दिया जाए इसके लिए हम अपना गुहार लगा रहे हैं सरकार और सदन सब मिलके ये सोचे कि राहुल गांधी जी की ये वापस ही जल्द से जल्द हो ये सदन की दीवारों में ये लिखा रहते कि हमारे संविधान में भी ये हम ये लिख लिख ये लिखा रहते कि सत्य में वो जयते आज राहुल गांधी जी की ये राहत साबित कर दे रहे हैं ये प्रतीत हो रहे हैं कि आज सत्य की जय दोबारा हुआ है राहुल गांधी जी ये सत्य का प्रतीक है राहुल गांधी जी की यह जीत सत्य की जीत है और ये राहुल गांधी जी अगले तारीख ये साजिश के खिलाफ और ये सत्तारूढ़ पार्टी के खिलाफ आधी बनकर उतरेंगे और हिंदुस्तान में एक नया दिशा दिखाते हुए ये सरकार को ये सरकार को सत्ता से हटाने की हर संभव पहल शुरू किए जाएंगे राहुल गांधी जी आ रहे हैं मोदी जी आपको सावधानी बरतना चाहिए हाँ मुलाकात करके आ रहे हैं आपके पास उनका ये कहना है कि जो कोर्ट से कोर्ट से जो पेपर वगैरह है वो सारे जजमेंट आने दीजिए मैं जरूर कार्रवाई करेंगे और हम भी ये कहे कि देखिए ज्यादा देर ना करना नजदीकी तो है सुप्रीम कोर्ट ये कागजात जल्द से जल्द जरूर आ जाएंगे क्योंकि हमारी तरफ से भी तत्परता रहेगी लेकिन इसमें सरकार की तरफ से टालने की बहुत सारे कोशिश किए जा सकते हैं तो इसमें इसके लिए हम स्पीकर साहब से एक गुजारिश किए हैं हमारी पार्टी की तरफ से कि जल्द से जल्द अगर सारे कागजात आपके हवाले जब आ जाएंगे आप इस पर निर्णय लेने में थोड़ा दिलचस्पी दिखाएंगे यही हमारा आपसे मांग है उम्मीद भी एक, एक मिनट मैं बोलना चाहूंगा सो फार आई एम नाइदर हियर नॉर देयर ऑल ऑफ यू नो हेलो लेकिन ये All right, that's Congress party, the Congress MPs, who are right now in a celebratory mode uh, in the Parliament. In fact, uh, many of these MPs have met the Speaker. Congress has said that they've met the Speaker and they have come out. Why have they met the Speaker? Because now, technically, Rahul Gandhi is set to come back to the Parliament. There are certain procedures which are which will be followed, including. submitting the application before the lok sabha secretariat i'm being joined by my colleague sunil prabhu right now sunil you have congress mps who have already gone and met the lok sabha speaker that would be the first move towards getting rahul gandhi back but of course a lot of formalities that need to be go, uh, need, need to be pushed through now it's interesting that congress is still maintaining uh, that uh, this has been entirely Rahul Gandhi being targeted as part of vendetta politics but how is all of this going to have an impact in the ongoing parliament's monsoon session sonil well this is a big uh, boost to the opposition in particular to the congress party uh, rahul gandhi's uh, you know uh, sentence being stayed uh, this will definitely uh, and uh, really paves the way for his restoration as a member of parliament as you rightly said there's an application process uh there is a precedent which has been followed in the case of uh, you know just a few months ago mohammad faisal the lakshwada lakshwadeep mp who had to move the supreme court uh, and uh, yeah, even after this uh, you know uh, so, uh, the speaker 
I got a clear uh, directive from the law ministry uh, that uh, he, uh, his membership should be restored, but he was uh, uh, refusing to take a decision on that, and he took over 17 days. In this case, there will be pressure that in the ongoing session that uh, the people of Vaina, uh, their representative who has now been, whose sus who suspension has been st uh, stayed, uh, should be given an opportunity uh, to represent them as well as, of course, the Congress party in that no-conference motion. So, uh, And as uh, no less than the AICC General Secretary in charge of organization, Mr. K.C. Venugopal said, the whole world and the whole country will be watching at the speaker on how fast he moves. He moved in breakneck speed, less than 24 hours, uh, to uh, reject Rahul, uh, to uh, disqualify Rahul Gandhi. How long will he take to restore his membership? Uh, that's going to be the focus, and that's going to be uh, really something uh, that every uh, Democratic watcher will look at in the next few days uh, and see uh, how exactly the Lok Sabha Secretariat, and in particular the Lok Sabha, so Lok Sabha Speaker, uh, takes uh, once a certified copy uh, is uh, given uh, to the Lok Sabha Speaker and the Secretariat uh, for the restoration uh, of Rahul Gandhi as a member of Parliament in Vainad. Right. Sunil Prabhu, thank you very much for those details. It will also be interesting to see what the reactions would be coming from Vainad, his constituency. Well, we have a lot more for you, but for now, let's just take a quick break. It's undeniable. We're facing the crisis of the generation, climate change. And it's happening, not in some far off distant land or some millions of years away, it's happening now. And it affects everything we know and love. Information around climate change can often feel too distant, too jargony, too scary, too anxiety filled, too technical or too political. I'm here to change that, the Climate Explainers part of NDTV's six-month-long campaign, building a blueprint for climate action. The climate clock is ticking, but we're just in time. My name is Captain Raghu Raman, and I've been fortunate to have had a career that has spanned three different domains. Whether it was the authoritarian style of leadership in the armed forces or the mostly incentive-driven environment of the corporates or the process-driven style of the government, I found that there were some principles of leadership that are present in all the environments. And these valuable lessons of leadership can be learned from literally thousands of leaders who are all around us. And we will meet them all on Wisdom of Leaders. for you. We're going to ask a bunch of you some special questions and every correct answer is going to reveal what our surprise is. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Satya Nadella. Jeff Bezos. Bill Gates probably. Nehru Place. Sake. Sake. Mumbai. Technical Guruji. Tech Guruji. Technical Guruji. Technical Guruji. The NDTV News Network that informs, inspires, and illuminates. Watch every side of the story here on NDTV because the only side we're on is yours. was fast, right? But tech is evolving even quicker than our abilities to adapt. And that's how I like to roll. Technology to aap sabhi ke paas hai. But what you need is everything else. Mera naam hai Gaurav aur ab mein aagaya hu NDTV Network pe. Har roz, har hafte. Ab aapke aur paas. Go beyond the now. When there's too much talking but very little being said. Too many voices but hardly any being heard. You turn to a show that puts you front and center. A show that headlines the stories of the people, by the people, for the people.
From breaking news to in-depth analysis. Covering the latest developments across politics, business and technology. Bringing you stories that shape our nation and the world. Twenty-three years of the big fight. This show is not just an ordinary debate show, but it is a responsibility in service of our viewers. NDTV for news you can trust. No sensationalism, no ugly debates, no agenda. We strive to be transparent and unbiased in our reporting so you can get news that you can rely on. world filled with noise, we bring you news that you can rely on with accuracy and integrity because at NDTV, trust is everything. A debate has many facets, perhaps no one right answer. Left, right and center, conversations that get to the core of the debate. facing the crisis of the generation. Welcome back. And it's a big relief for the Congress, as well as Rahul Gandhi. His conviction in the Modi surname defamation case has been stayed by the Supreme Court. There are some important observations by the Supreme Court. One, in terms of the, the comments made or the remarks made being very distasteful and Rahul Gandhi should have been more careful. But also the fact that the Supreme Court has said uh, he should have been, um, uh, that uh, there's no reason mentioned by the trial court on why the maximum sentence was given. Also about the fact uh, of how the electorate or the constituency is very important. I'm being joined right now by Deshratan Nigam, who's a political analyst. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us. How would you react to what's happened in the Supreme Court, the, the various facets of the Supreme Court's judgment, and, of course, how Congress is now expecting Rahul back very soon in Parliament, which is a procedural thing to happen? Sneha, in fact, uh, Supreme Court has only stayed for the time being the conviction, the sentence was already stayed at the time of granting bail to Rahul Gandhi in the trial court. However, the only conviction now has been stated, which be means that his membership to the parliament will be restored and be able to take part in the parliamentary discourse. And if the interim stay continues till 2024 general elections, then he'll be able to contest the elections. If the matter is decided before and the Supreme Court in its final judgment may you know, retain the judgment of the trial court, then it will be difficult for Rahul Gandhi to contest the elections. And if, and however, from the discourse going on in the uh, Supreme Court, it is clear whether it is a case of maximum punishment of two years or not, which brings, in, brings the bar to contest the elections. Therefore, issue is whether the maximum punishment should have been given to him at this particular stage or not. The entire judgment which has been assailed of the trial court will also be gone into by the appropriate sessions right. court where it has been challenged. Right. Mr. Deshatan Nigam, I, I'm, I'm sorry I have to interrupt you. We also are being joined right now by P. Chidambaram, senior Congress leader. Thank you for talking to NDTV, sir. Two aspects to what I have to ask you. One, in terms of the uh, Supreme Court saying that... Um, uh, there is no reason given by the trial court for the maximum punishment, but also the fact that the comments made by Rahul Gandhi uh, are distasteful and he's supposed to be more careful. How do you see this? Please make a distinction between the actual order of the Supreme Court and the advice given by the Supreme Court. We respect the advice of the Supreme Court, and I'm sure everyone concerned will take it in the right spirit. Let's focus on the order. The order stays with conviction in this case. 
The sentence has already been stayed. The conviction has now been stayed. Something which the appellate court and the High Court of Gujarat failed to do, the Supreme Court has done, and we are naturally very happy, and we respectfully thank the Supreme Court for upholding justice in this case. Right. Mr. Chidambaram, how do you see this now impact the parliament session? Procedurally, Rahul Gandhi should be back. Nothing stops him from being back as an MP as soon as possible, considering this has been stayed. But how is Congress looking at this? Remember the speed with which they disqualified him? Remember the speed with which they asked him to vacate the House? And I'm sure the Honorable Speaker will do the right thing and practice or follow the same speed in restoring his membership. So it can be done today, in which event the House is there up to 6 p.m. and Mr. Gandhi can attend the House before 6 p.m. But assuming it's done during the course of the day, certainly it should be done during the course of the day, and Mr. Gandhi should be able to take his place in the Lok Sabha on Monday. Right. Uh, Mr. Chidambaram, the BJP is now claiming that, listen, there's no reason for celebration because this is not a clean shit. The conviction has been stayed. How is Congress responding to this? What kind of uh, logical, legal mind has the BJP has, I don't know. The sentence has been stayed. The conviction has been stayed. The appeal is pending in the appellate court in Gujarat. So why should we not celebrate? Let the BJP celebrate that despite the sentence being stayed and the conviction being stayed, and despite the fact that the restoration of the membership is imminent, let them celebrate if they want to celebrate. We'll take it as they are celebrating the return of Mr. Rahul Gandhi to the Lok Sabha. Right. Thank you very much, Mr. Chidambaram, for joining us. It's a big win or a big relief for Rahul Gandhi and the Congress. Thank you for your time. We'll keep continuing with all the latest update in news and particularly about Rahul Gandhi's stay on his conviction. But for a quick break now. My name is Captain Raghu Raman, and I have been fortunate to have had a career that has spanned three different domains. Whether it was the authoritarian style of leadership in the armed forces or the mostly incentive-driven environment of the corporates or the process-driven style of the government, I found that there were some principles of leadership that are present in all the environments. And these valuable lessons of leadership can be learned from literally thousands of leaders who are all around us. And we will meet them all on Wisdom of Leaders. We have a surprise for you. We're going to ask a bunch of you some special questions and every correct answer is going to reveal what our surprise is. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Satya Nadella. Jeff Bezos. Bill Gates probably. Nehru Place. Sake. Sake. Mumbai. Technical Guruji. Tech Guruji. Technical Guruji. Technical Guruji. Chaliye shuru karte hai. The NDTV News Network that informs, inspires, and illuminates. Watch every side of the story here on NDTV because the only side we're on is yours. was fast, right? But tech is evolving even quicker than our abilities to adapt. And that's how I like to roll. Technology to aap sabhi ke paas hai. But what you need is everything else. Mera naam hai Gaurav aur ab mein aagaya hu NDTV Network pe. Har roz, har hafte. Ab aapke aur paas.
go beyond the now. When there's too much talking but very little being said, too many voices but hardly any being heard, you turn to a show that puts you front and center. A show that headlines the stories of the people, by the people, for the people. From breaking news to in-depth analysis. Covering the latest developments across politics, business and technology. Bringing you stories that shape our nation and the world. Twenty-three years of the big fight. This show is not just an ordinary debate show, but it is a responsibility in service of our viewers. TV for news you can trust. No sensationalism, no 